Masquerade of the Guilty, Chapter 4, Act 5, Deluge of Wrathful Waters. This is the day you get out of prison. Finally, 45 days was long enough, and you proceed to complete the paperwork for your release as arranged. We're getting out of jail, fam. We're getting out of jail. Let's go. I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Let's go. Let's go get out of jail. Even though we can just teleport out of jail anytime we want to, let's go get our release papers. Some time has passed since the incident in the Fortress of Maripine and your sentence here is almost finished. <gasps> 45 days, dude. Yeah, I, <laughs> rest after breakfast. Oh, this is the life. I'm ready to get out of jail, Paimon. Aren't you excited? Wait a sec. Isn't something important supposed to happen today? We're getting out. Oh, today's our big day. We're supposed to leave the Fortress of Maripine. Come on, we've got to go complete the release procedures now. Let's go. What are we waiting on? We've been in here for 45 days just for eating cake. Chapter four, act five, masquerade of the guilty. Oh boy, here we go. Please sign here. This document will be effective immediately upon signing and you two may exit the fortress of Maripede via the regular channels. Where's the pen at? It's been so long since we've been to the surface. Let's hurry up and- I mean, it's funny. I think it's funny how we could just teleport in and out of the jail. Oh, you know, whenever we want to. <laughs> Now what? No. Now what? Uh, what's happening? I don't know. Let's just get the hell out of here and leave these people alone. Are you okay? I'm fine, thanks. But I wonder what that tremor was just now. Don't know. Not my problem. I'm getting out. Let's go ask the Duke. No! Oh, we gotta go talk to Riceley. Okay. Hi, Risley. Ah, good to see you two. Is there something you wish to see me about? Yeah, what was with that earthquake just now? Uh, we don't care. I don't care. Let us just walk out the door. Ah, that. The tremor didn't originate from the seafloor. In fact, it seems it came from the surface. Okay. Over the years of earthquake? serving as the warden here, I have developed a sense for distinguishing between what occurs on the surface and what occurs underwater. Besides, the seal that Monsieur Neuvillette set in place won't fail so easily. Good. And he was such a giga chad during that. That made him so much hotter when he did that. Oh my god. So the fortress is okay? If you recall our last incident, if there really were a problem, there would be crowds of inmates in a panic right now. That's true. Huh. You've got a point. Okay, seems we need to get back up to the surface and ask about what happened. Uh, by the way... Do you know what day it is today? Hmm, I believe today is this month's pipe cleaning day. No, it's happy release day, okay? Happy release day for us. We're getting out of jail. Also today, in case you're wondering, it's Chi Chi's birthday as well. So happy birthday, Chi Chi. But pff, who cares about your stupid pipe cleaning? Wait, seriously? Actually, today is the day we say goodbye to the fortress. Yes, we're getting out of here. Ah, <laughs> yes. Have you completed your release papers? I tried to, but an earthquake happened. Yep. Uh, it's you two. See, Dream. Yes, you little cutie patootie, but you are a master manipulator. Master manipulator. That's right. Today is our last day in prison. But now that Paimon says that, it doesn't feel like we were confined here. It's actually been pretty nice. A lot of people have helped us out. Oh, yeah. Paimon feels fond of this place now. Yeah, what happened to the brainless bro? No, not the brainless bros. What are their names again? Bombastic? Bomb bombshell? What? Broken? I can't remember their names. Bombshell bros, right? Well, then be sure to come back and visit. I'll miss you. We'll miss you too. Even though you're a little schemer. If you've signed the release papers, then you're free to go. The guards will escort you out. Okay. You're not going to see us off? Yeah. <laughs> I knew you'd ask. All right, sure. Let's go. I like Riceley's character. Well, you actually agreed. Uh, no worries, you must be busy. Paimon was just joking. Ah, so you do have a polite side, I see. <laughs> Straight up calling Paimon out. <laughs> After being down here for so long, I imagine you must feel like you're lacking companionship. Shall I come along too? Yeah, Siegeween. No, that's all right. Oh, we're going to tell her no. Why are we telling her no? No, that's all right. It's not like we'll never visit again. That's true. Paimon really likes the cafeteria here. 
The chefs sure do know how to make good grub. Can we still get free meals? I hope you won't be here as convicts the next time I see you. No, 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 no. We'll do our best to stay out of trouble. Just don't eat somebody's cake. Well, it seems our work in the Fortress of Meridian is finished. That's the end of another chapter in our journey. And since Nervla was the one who asked us to come here, we should probably go report to him now. Next up, the Palais Marmonia. Let's go see Daddy Hydro. You're going to see Monsieur Nervilet? We are. <laughs> Please pass on our kind regards. Will do. I love her outfit. Her outfit is so freaking cute. Dude, I wonder when she's going to be coming around on banners. I'm sure just your regards will do, no? But I have a feeling they're going to make her a four-star character. Hmm. I believe it would be the polite thing to do. You're right. I've heard the Palais has been terribly busy these days. Tell him that I hope he hasn't been overwhelmed by the recent string of troubles. Will do. Will do. We're on the way. The Palais Marmonia sure is buzzing with activity today. It is. What's everybody doing in here? Halt. Huh? Look. Oh, wait. It's you two. <laughs> I need to apologize. Monsieur Nervalet did say you'd be welcome at any time. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Sadine, I need to apologize to you, okay? When I first met you during Nervalet's story quest, you said something. I can't remember exactly what you said, but then I said, if you don't stop, I'm going to punt you. And then I found out, like, your story, like, what happened with, you know the the melusines back in the day and and nouvellet and it made me cry and i got upset and i just want to say i'm so sorry i'm so sorry i didn't mean to treat you that way oh man that story quest was so good i i felt so bad i felt so bad after nouvellet story quest that i said that to sadine so excuse me would you mind helping me take a look at this report i'll be right there Sorry, I've got my hands full here, but you can see yourselves in. Thank you. It's so good to see you again. I'm sorry again. What can I do? I feel like I, I need to, like, bake you some cupcakes or something. Everyone's so busy. Seems a lot has been happening. Yeah, lots. Too much. My brain can't handle all this stuff. What's up, Daddy Hydro? How are you doing, Dragon? Hello. You've come at the right time, but you'll have to wait for just a moment, as there are some urgent matters I must tend to first. I love his voice. In the meantime, please, have a seat. If you'd like to have something to drink, Ooh. let the Melusine outside know. Ooh! That's all right. We just ate. I, I wouldn't mind a beer. Very well, then. Let's take a break over there while we wait for him to finish his work. Sounds good. We'll take a nap on one of his couches over there. <laughs> oh, what are you scoffing about? What are you scoffing? All right. I should wrap things up for now. Okay. Are you done with your work? Yes. Sorry to keep you waiting. No, totally fine, Daddy Hydro. I will wait forever if you need me to. Today should be the day you were released from the Fortress of Meripede. And it appears that you have managed to complete all the release paperwork. We did! We're out of jail! For some cake. I, I still can't believe we got locked up 45 days for eating cake. What is that? That's right. And we came here to see you right away. You and Paimon tell Nublet everything that happens since the primordial sea and says, as well as your dream regarding mm, child. A massive whale. Yeah, enormous. Giant. It's like a big blue whale or something. Do you have any idea what that might be? Judging from your description, that cannot have occurred in any ordinary waters, but rather something like the primordial sea. So are we saying that child is, like, swimming around in the primordial sea? A whale of that size and shape cannot usually be found in the waters of Tevat. Therefore, we can only assume that child is presently immersed in primordial seawater. That's bad. He's not from Fontaine, he's from Shnaznaya, so he won't dissolve. Most people wouldn't be capable of entering in the first place. I'm not completely sure how he could have gotten there myself. How's he not drowning? There's something we'd like to ask you about. Yes? What is it? What was that tremor we felt earlier? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. Paimon felt it too. Did he not feel it? We asked the Duke and he said it wasn't from underwater, so we figured you might know something about it. 
It turns out that I have just received a report about this particular matter. In fact, that's exactly what I was busy with a moment ago. Okay, what'd you find out? The source of the tremor was here on the surface near Poisson. After the shaking stopped, the water levels in the Poisson area rose at an alarming rate. Wait, isn't Poisson where the Spina di Rosula is at? Where like Navia and her whole gang is, right? The water levels rose? Oh no! What about all the people there? Fortunately, the water levels only rose for a short period of time and have already returned to normal now. However, I still have a bad feeling about the whole phenomenon. Yeah, me too. If the change in water levels is connected with the leaking primordial seawater, then the situation in Poisson may be much worse than it appears. Okay, okay, what do we do? What do we do? Navia should be in Poisson, right? Yes! We need to go check on her! Yes, yeah, Spina di Rosula's headquarters. That's I would what I said. Like that's, to go okay, there that's as what I thought. As possible, but I'm afraid I can't leave just yet. Why? We must immediately formulate disaster prevention plans for the surrounding coastal areas to avoid potential catastrophes. I feel like Nuvolet needs a vacation. He needs to go take like a week and spend it on the beach. I'll have to ask you two to go to Poisson first. I'll meet you there to check on the situation once I finish things here. Sounds like a plan. There's no time to lose. Let's get going. Let's go. Please be careful. Will do, don't worry. Oh no. What happened here? What happened? Where's Navia? Where's Navia? Where's Navia? All the buildings here just seem pretty rough. What happened to the kid? What happened to the mom? What happened to them? What where is everybody? There's nobody around. Were they all dissolved? No. Oh no, no way. Nadia should be around here, right? We need to make sure she's still. Uh, I know means we need to check on her. No, 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 no. We haven't seen a single soul all the way here. Oh, this is getting scary. Okay, maybe they got out. Maybe they got out on time. Maybe they possibly got out on time. <laughs> what ever do now? Oh no, what happened? Bro! Look! There's someone on the roof over there! Just stay put! We're coming up! Watch your balance! Okay. Uh, Alright! Just hurry! Okay, 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 calm down. Everything's fine, everything's fine. Nobody panic. Nobody panic. We still don't know. I'm not young anymore. How will I survive on my own? No! 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 No, 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 no! I don't believe it. No, I'm in denial. <laughs> no! My Desiree! No! 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 I refuse. I don't want to play anymore. Oh, he looks pretty sad. <sighs> my leg. I don't want to play. I don't want to do. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do this act. How could this have happened? It hurts. Is she going to dissolve right in front of us? I swear to God. Just hang in there. Help is on the way. You can hold my hand if it makes you feel better. so sad no 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 where's Davia where is she where is she where is she I've been saying for the longest time I've been saying for the longest time that they need to kill off a character in Genshin Impact I swear to god it better not be Navia I swear to god it better not be Navia it better not be Navia if that's the case I'm gonna I I I I I I I I might just have a panic attack I don't know Oh, good. She's, over there. She's okay. Great. Hey, Navia, are you okay? <sighs> Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. You're here. Yes, we are. We heard there was a situation in Poisson, so we came as quickly as we could. Yes. As you can see, the water level suddenly rose. It caused quite the disturbance, in fact.
Demoiselle, there was a wounded resident next to a building southeast of here. We've already transported him to safety, but we've run out of medical supplies. Man, they're in some bad shape. He's wounded? How badly? He fell, so it's probably a broken leg. He's pretty shaken up. When the water level rose, he desperately climbed up to the roof. Once the water receded and he saw the ground, he became terrified and eventually... Fell? Just fell? He jumped down then. Find oh, the jumped. leader of Squad 1 and tell him to take the wounded resident to see a doctor. He should know where to go. Tell him to send, send him over to see Dween. Understood. I'll take over his search and rescue mission in the meantime. All right. You'll be in charge. Yes. Go do your duty. I'm sorry. Where were we? I don't know where we were. What is going on down here? What happened? Are you okay? Is everybody okay? Where's everybody at? Oh, I'm so upset about like that that dad. No, don't tell me. No, they have to. It has to be like they snuck away. They got out somehow, and he just doesn't know. I. Uh, this situation in Poisson. Ah, uh, right. Allow me to explain. Yes, please. You're gorgeous. A little earlier, we suddenly heard a loud noise. At first, everyone thought that something might have exploded on an aquabus. But before we knew it, water started pouring out from everywhere. The rushing water seemed a little odd, almost like the unique color of primordial seawater. Some people didn't realize the danger and thought it was just ordinary water leaking from somewhere. Okay. Everyone on the street who happened to be close to the water didn't have a chance to escape. As the water levels rose, they suddenly disappeared. No! They were all dissolved. No, man, no! No, 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 I don't believe you. I don't believe you, I don't believe you. I don't believe you, I'm gonna deny it. Okay, I'm in denial, all right, no way, nope. I'm in the first stage of grief. Uh-uh, there's no way, it's not possible. I don't know, I don't, I don't believe you, no. That's so sad. Those who realized what was happening started to flee in a panic, desperately trying to get to higher ground. Many were injured in the stampede and some, some people fell from significant heights. Uh, the Rosula initiated rescue operations uh, as quickly as possible, but there have been a lot of casualties. Fortunately, the water began to recede after some time and the chaos came to an end. The water that flooded the area contained primordial seawater, so the lower levels of Poisson are still hazardous. To ensure everyone's safety, I've asked the people there to leave as soon as possible. No one knows if this could happen again. All we can do for now is try our best to help evacuate the residents. We still haven't completed the head count, but we'll have some numbers soon. I don't even want to know the numbers. I don't even want to know. I don't want names. I don't want ages. I don't even want to know the numbers. No, I don't even want to know because I feel like that would just make me even more sad. How awful. And all of this just came out of nowhere. It's the prophecy. The prophecy is happening, right? The prophecy is happening. And I feel like the only person that's doing something about it is Nouvellet. Farina is sitting back eating cake, right? I feel like she's just like, me, I, Fosselor, will enjoy my cake today, you know, and not really doing much of anything. I feel that she's not doing much, but she's cursed. We don't know what that is. I feel like Daddy Hydro is the only one that's trying to like, who put a stop to this. It was quite frightening indeed. I only wish that everything that just happened was a bad dream. Is there any way we can help, Navia? Yeah, we're here to help. You can put us to work. What can we do? Thank you for being so willing to help in a moment of crisis like this. You don't know how much it means to me. I really can't express how grateful I am. Man, this music is hitting hard. Wait, we're missing some people, aren't we? No, no, please, no. No, 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 they can't be, they can't be. I forgot about them. Oh, what were their names? Oh my God, I'm losing, I'm losing it. Um, What were their, uh, what were their names again? Don't say that, Navia. That's what friends are for. 
Oh, Malice and Silver. Malice and Silver. That's who. Oh my God. No, 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 no. Her eyes are shaking. I don't like it. I don't like it. Man, Navi's been through a lot. Demoiselle, we've got a situation here. Oh God, she didn't tell us. She's a no way. Uh, I'll be right there. So, <sighs> I need to go for now. Navia, no, no. Oh, I, can I give her a hug? And off she goes. Oh she man. It might be a while before she can take a break. Melis and Silver, don't tell me. <laughs> tell me they come along later. Traveler looks so sad. That's like the saddest we've ever seen him. Navia walks around talking with many people organizing. Okay, her decisions are clear and unreasonable. And reasonable, okay. her face. Damn. We wounded are being tended to, and we finished a preliminary headcount. More support has just arrived, so I suppose I finally have a moment to focus on my own matters. Of course, we should remain ready for anything and continue doing our best to rescue others. I'll be sure to have everyone at the Spina di Rosula ready to render assistance. Man, she's had it rough. She's had it rough. Her dad died for her, like, and now her two, basically her two best friends, Melis and Silver, are gone too. Dude, and she had to sit there and, like, just watch them dissolve, I guess. Oh, bro, like. Traveler, Paimon, <laughs> would you two accompany me to my father's grave for a moment? Yes, whatever you need, Navia. Huh? Right now? I understand. Yes, we can go. Yeah. Don't you question her. Are you seriously going to question her, Paimon? Don't be rude. Like, don't be rude. We are here to support our friend. And you want to be like, you really want to go right now? If that's what she wants to do, that's what she wants to do. Are you kidding me? Thank you. That just made me so angry at Paimon. That made me so angry. All right, we're here. Not a lot of people here, huh? No, no. Well, given the time of day and the whole situation in Poisson, Paimon doesn't think there'd be a ton of people here visiting graves. Right. That's how things are now. The living are so exhausted that they've no strength to spare any words for the dead. Um, Navia? I just want to listen to her. There's no need to push yourself so hard. That's exactly. Oh, she's crying again. She's crying again. No, 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 no. Man, she's had it so hard. She's had it so rough. She's had it so freaking rough, man. Can we give her a hug? Navia, what's wrong? Sorry. I... I just... You just want... What? Spit it out. Malus and Silver, they won't ever come back here again. No, man! No! 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 I refuse! 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 Okay? Damn it. Well, now I'm, now I'm upset. I just want to hug her so bad. What should I do, Papa? Huh? What happened to them? Paimon, use your freaking brain. I know you're smarter than this. I know you're smarter than this. Get there faster. How is it that we get there before you do a lot of the times like that? Navia, I'm so sorry for your loss. <sighs> Dude, they were so cool. Everyone agreed on the rescue plan, but still, I was the one who initiated it. They were helping evacuate the residents, but they couldn't leave in time. And... And they were caught in the seawater. <laughs> I'm biting my cheek right now. I'm biting my cheek. I'm biting my cheek. What, what should we do? I've known them for so long. And I know they weren't afraid, but, but I could at least hold a funeral for my father, and I know where he rests. But as for Malus and Silver, they're just Dude. Gone. I just can't. 
Dude, she's lost everything. No! Everything looks so clean after it rains. Even the gravestones. I didn't expect that you'd enjoy a glass of red wine in front of Master Callus's grave. They're just rubbing it in now. I can understand. Besides, the scenery here isn't half bad. See, it's not just me. I always want to bring something when I visit Papa. Perhaps we might even have a picnic. He wouldn't be angry, would he? Ah, how could Master ever be upset with you, Demoiselle? See, and they were so supportive of her, and she'd lost that. Yet the cemetery is the home of those who have passed, is it not? Everyone ends up here sooner or later, no matter who you are. Buying yourself a plot in advance, are you? <laughs> no need yet. But when I do, I hope you'll let me be buried beside Master Callus, Demoiselle. Oh, that's what he wanted, and she can't give him that. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Hey, stop joking around. I'm quite serious. That way, it will save us both the trip to see each other whenever you visit your father's grave. And she can't give it to him. That makes sense. In that case, could I be buried on his other side? And she can't give you that either! After all, besides you, Demoiselle, the two of us could certainly be considered Master's closest companions, no? Personally, I believe we fill those shoes just fine. Dude, this music, man. It's so beautiful, but it's so sad. <laughs> Why are you bringing this up all of a sudden? Seriously. All right, all right. I'll remember your requests. No. But I'd really prefer not to talk about this stuff. And what do you mean by saving me a trip? I'd make the journey even if I had to visit you two somewhere else. I'd I'm not going to be able to... Let them rest in peace here. <sighs> but here I am breaking that promise. All right, I'm getting teary-eyed. All right, I'm wiping my face. It counts as crying. Fudge, dude. No way. I'm sorry for letting you see me in a mess like this. Don't be sorry. I don't usually cry, really. No, don't be sorry. Don't ever apologize for showing emotions, ever. That goes for all of you out there too. Don't you ever apologize for being emotional, ever. Doesn't know how to help you feel better. But well, she understands how you feel. I had always thought I could make my wishes come true. But now that I think about it, that never solely relied on me. Many things can only be accomplished with someone else's help. Luce and Silver have helped me so much. But by contrast, I could do nothing for them. I'm so sorry. <sighs> uh, pulling on my heartstrings. You can spend as much time as you need here, Navia. Yes. I'll stay with you. Yes, as long as you want to. I will set up a, a tent if we have to. I'm here for you. God. Thank you. Right now, you don't know how much that means. <sighs> By the way, you can have a look at this. It's a list of victims from the incident that took place here. No, I don't want to see the list. I don't want to see it because we're going to see ages. We're going to see names and all that stuff and how many. I don't want to. I don't want. I don't know. I don't. Obana, Khan, Burnett, Giverny, Francine, Karina, Daisy Ray, Joanville. Julianne, Esan, as well as Malus and Silver. So, everyone else is safe. But still... No one is safe right now. It's okay. I know what you're thinking. And you're right. We lost Malus and Silver. But we were able to save more than we anticipated. 
salutes in chat from Melos and Silver. Two of the best boys in the game who just got just a horrible death. Way less than what they deserved. Man, I'm so sad because they were awesome. The overall outcome indicates that the cost was worth it. No one's sacrifice is truly necessary. Right. Don't think that way, Navia. One person might be saved at the expense of another, sure, but that isn't something we should ever consider a trade. Exactly. Malus and Silver were not the price for saving anyone. They're heroes. Yeah, they are. We need to erect a monument for them or something. You're right. Give them a statue. Thank you, Paimon. What you said just now was... Pretty amazing, actually. I'll remember your words. Oh, uh, really? Paimon does come through every once in a while. Every every now and then, Paimon does something that makes you love her. I mean, you can't help it. Seems you've become more eloquent in the time since we last met. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! What are you doing out here? What are you doing here? Arlequino, father, daddy. You are so hot. You are so hot. What is she doing out here? Uh, the knave? What are you doing here? Gosh, she is beautiful, man. She is so gorgeous. Uh, is everything going well on your side? Yes, my people are carrying out the mission according to your request. What mission? All the residents of Poisson have been evacuated, and we're preparing to relocate them to higher ground. Look at the knave coming through! Look at the knave! With the pog move! As for these supplies, we have everything taken care of. There is no need to worry. Let's go! See what it means? See what I mean? You, there are some harbingers that are, like, amazing. Like Arlequino, like the knave, right? Just helping people out, rescuing people, doing all that stuff, wanting to jump in and help. But then there are other harbingers that are like just so messed up in the head. You know, Dottore, for instance. Thank you very much. Wait, do you two know each other? We just met recently. Right, Miss Navia? She seems so kind in the scene. Hmm. Usually, I would call this a coincidental encounter. That doesn't quite fit this time. Besides, it never even crossed my mind that a Fatui Harbinger would come looking for me. And in a good way, right? In a good way, for good things. Thanks to the Knave, Spina di Rosula received generous support from the Fatui, which allowed us to complete the rescue and evacuation work so quickly. Do you see what I mean? Now see what I mean? Mutual aid is essential to fostering positive developments. We were already in the area in any case, so it was nothing. Love her so much. I'm in love with her. That said, I must say that you're a lot sharper than you let on. I'm sure you understand what I mean. I mean, but if she she could be under the guise of being like, scratch my, you know, I scratched your back. Now you have to scratch mine type thing. I helped you. Now, what are you going to do to help me? Like, I could possibly see her doing that. But still, great thing that she did. She hasn't asked for anything in return yet. I apologize yet. for all the ways in which I tested you previously. We've never worked with a Fatui before, and it's extremely important for us to know who we're working with. My subordinates have reported that Fatui soldiers have been observing water levels and taking head counts in various locations. I hear that they've also prepared a large amount of emergency supplies. I'm quite surprised. This is nothing to brag about, nor do I intend to. It is simply the way of powerful organizations to act forcefully, whether they are doing good or ill. You've witnessed that firsthand, in any case. Mm -hmm. As I've told this traveler before, I know of the prophecy, mm -hmm. and I intend to prevent the impending disaster. See, she wants to help. She wants to. She wants to stop the 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 the, the prophecy from happening. You know what I mean? And she was pressuring Farina, like, why aren't you doing enough? And Farina's like, I am doing enough. And it doesn't seem like enough. Does that make sense? Lending your organization a hand was a natural first step in accomplishing that. As such, 
Do not be troubled by this token of our sincerity. Perhaps one day, you'll also be able to help me in the same way. See what I mean? See, I told you. Without your help, there would have been many more casualties. I won't forget your kindness. Furthermore, I sincerely regret what happened to Malus and Silver. I only wish that my people could have arrived a little earlier to prevent this from happening. Now, see, that was a very nice thing for her to say. That was very, very nice for her to say to Navia right there. Don't say that. You and your subordinates did everything you could. Very nice for Arlequino to say that. As Paimon said, Malus and Silver didn't choose to sacrifice themselves for any specific person. And they weren't the price paid for other salvation. They chose to become heroes themselves. I've never liked hearing people put it that way. It's like trying to relieve pain by saying some noble-sounding words. But right now, there's nothing more suitable. They really did become heroes. You're right. I'm sorry for your loss, Miss Navia. That's very kind of Arlequina to say that. Water is life to Fontaine's people, and it also spells disaster. It's no wonder that people always say that prophecies represent fate. Fortunately, I've never been one for such opinions. So, you're one who will try to change fate then? Of course. That is why I'm going to Hotel Bouffe de Terre. I still have some things to take care of, and the children need my attention. House of the Hearth, can I become one of her children, please? I'm gonna join the House of the Hearth. By the way, Traveler, Paimon, one more thing. Anything, anything, anything you want. Look at her vision back here on the, like, at the bottom of her neck, top of her back, back here. Dude, I can't wait. I can't wait for her to come on a banner. All right, then we'll just, uh, huh? This isn't right. Paimon thought you would ask us to walk with you for a moment so you could tell us something in private. That is a clever and useful conversation technique, which I do like to use when necessary. But there's no need today. It would not hurt to have Miss Navia listening in. Okay, sounds good. Traveler, I'm sure you remember that I said we could work together when we had the chance. Yes, when is that going to be? Because I would love to. You and I both know that there may be issues with the Primordial Sea. Previously, it was the Fortress of Meripede Sluicegate, and this mm -hmm. time it was the water levels in Poisson. Right. These are both signals. So the time for jolly cooperation has come. Jolly cooperation. Indeed. Allow me to share the latest intel I've received from the House of the Hearth's intelligence network with you. I'm telling you right now, I think down the line, Traveler is gonna become a harbinger. I think down the line, he is going to choose to become a harbinger. He is going to find out what Cerita's end goal is. He's going to agree with Cerita's end goal. Cerita is going to make him into a harbinger. And then we are going to be in a battle for the ages. Tell me. During some recent investigations, a child claimed to have discovered some ruins near Poisson. A child. The ruins date back to ancient times and seem to be worth investigating in many ways. Who's this child? What ruins? Judging by the dating of the ruins, they may be related to the prophecy and the coming crisis. The situation is becoming more urgent, so any pertinent information will prove extremely precious. Then let's go, let's go. My people initially came to prepare for ruin exploration. Unexpectedly, this disaster struck. Ah. And at present, we're all busy prioritizing the rescue effort. Okay. So that's why the Fatui were already in Poisson. Because they wanted to investigate the ruins. I gotcha. I wanted to take the children along, but unfortunately, Linny, Lynette, and Fremenet have all been dispatched to higher ground to assist affected residents. So you want us to come with? Linny told me that outside of the house, the person they trust most is you. That's right. We can be trusted. I, like I said, I have a feeling at some point, Traveler's going to become a harbinger. Which is why I want to give you this task. Are you sure this will be okay? And can you trust an outsider like me? Are you sure this will be okay? She could trust us. The House of the Hearths members see each other as family. But Linny, Lynette, and Fremine said that they also see you as such. Even though you are not from the house. 
I'm sure you already understand how earnest they consider their friendship with you to be. Oh, that just warms my heart. Lenny, Lynette, and Femine look at us as family. I love those three. I love those three. Oh, that somehow makes Paimon feel kind of happy. The intel I just shared about the ruins could fetch a high price. Oh, but since the children consider you family, it's only natural that I freely share it with you. Oh, that's so nice. We gotta make sure to hug those three whenever we see them again. Got it. So all we gotta do is go to some ruins, right? We can handle that. Yeah, we can go with. I would love to. I want to find out too. Excuse me, but may I tag along? Yes, you can come along. Maybe it'll distract you. You wish to join, Miss Navia? But are you sure you're up to exploring some ruins? You need to rest. Well. I'm sad, yes, but I can't just go back and plop myself into a chair by the roadside and do nothing. See, I would do the same thing. If I'm Navia, like, and something tragic happens to me, like in my life, I'm one of those people that's like, I, I want to stay busy. Like, give me something to do so I'm not just moping around. Like, I want to keep my mind off of things. Like, let's go. Like, I don't care what it is. There's no point in being depressed while we still have a disaster on our hands. As my father's successor, I must live up to the hopes he had in me. Besides, I'm also doing this for myself. I need something, a distraction, to keep my mind off Malus and Silver. Oh my god, oh my god, I'm gonna, no, I'm gonna get teary-eyed again. Navia's strong. But she needs company right now. We can be that company if she goes to explore the ruins with us. Since you put it that way, I have no objections. What do you say, Traveler? We'll go to the ruins together. All right. The ruins are to the south of Poisson. Let's go. Here's the map. Let's go. Okay, the three of us will handle it. Come on, let's pack up and get going. All right, I'm excited. Let's go. Oh, sadness. Oh, my heart. Oh, my heart hurts. So, are these the ruins the knave was talking about? Oh, Oof. Talk about old. They look a little terrifying. They seem to be pretty ancient, all right. Let's go in and have a look. I don't, I don't know if I want to now after seeing them. Just be careful. No problem. Are you going to join us? Ooh, do we get... They should have let us play as Arlecchino and Navia in this. If we're going into a domain, we need Navia and Arlecchino as like trial characters in this. This place has also been contaminated by primordial seawater. So Navia can't come in. She's from, um, she's from Fontaine. Yeah. And a lot of it, too. A Fontanian would most likely dissolve the moment they fell in. You should go back to safety, Navia. Right. You can't go down if there's primordial seawater. It's too dangerous, and it won't be any help for you to just stay here. Right. You don't need to be dissolving either. So what are we going to do with her? Uh, don't get by my wrong. We're not saying you're useless. It's just that... We don't want you to get hurt. We don't want you to dissolve. No, you're right. I can't do anything in this situation. I'll leave this to you. From the look of things here, maybe there's no way back. Oh, that's right, because we fell. Why can't she just wait for us here? things. Maybe the only way left is forward. Oh, then how are you going to get through? In that case, do you want to wait for us here? Mm, uh, the water levels here are unstable, and there's a chance the water will rise. So staying here wouldn't be safe either. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a bad feeling. I'll go together with you. Perhaps we'll find the exit just up ahead. Seems like there isn't any other option. I have a really, really bad feeling. All right. Come with us for now, then, but please be careful. Bad feelings. There's all kinds of stuff going on on the YouTube channel. Go and subscribe. There's something wrong with this bridge. Run for it. No. No, 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 no. Run, 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 run. What are we doing? Go, go, go. Yes. Faster, faster, faster. I swear to God. Catch her, catch her, catch her. No, grab her. Jump back! Jump in! Navia! Go get her, Traveler! 
No, 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 Oh dear God! Thank God she's alive. She's alive. Thank God she's alive. Oh man! Don't scare me like that, game. <clears throat> Demoiselle. Wait, maybe she's not alive. Maybe she's not. Maybe she's dead. Oh no, no, because I heard Melissa's voice or Silver's. Huh? She's like in the spirit world. Demoiselle, what are you doing here by yourself? Oh, this is not. Oh no. Here till dark. If I hadn't come to get you. Maybe she just wants some time to herself, Malus. Is she dead? Is this like purgatory? She's in the ghost realm or something. Hmm? Oh, uh, was I... Was I sleeping? Yes, it would appear so. Uh, I must be tired. That's quite possible. However, you were the one that suggested we go out for a walk. What is going on? Oh, Right. I nearly forgot. <sighs> it must have slipped my mind when I dozed off. I haven't had a nap today yet. Uh, have I? What is going on? This is a familiar feeling, yet something's a little strange. I think she might be dead. No. Uh, no. Is something the matter, Demoiselle? Oh, uh, no. No, I'm fine. You're not fine. I was just trying to recall why we came out for a walk. Do you remember Mr. Giverny? He'd requested our help before with foreign merchants who had a debt dispute with him, and we'd resolved the matter not long ago. We were headed to see how things were going with him at the moment. Ah, oh, right. Yes. <laughs> I remember now. Oh, Miss Navia. Ah, Mr. Malus, and Mr. Silver, too. <laughs> it's good to see all of you. Wait, what is going on? What if you get dissolved in water and you don't actually die? What if that's the case? What if just because you get dissolved, you, you're not, you, you're not f gone? You know what I mean? Uh, how have you been? They just end up in this other, like, dimension type thing. I've been great. Thanks to your help, those bothersome merchants finally realized that I wasn't the one they were looking for. Why, I wasn't even the guarantor for that person. They were knocking at my door day and night. Even my neighbor, Obuna, was getting fed up with them. Sometimes, force is required to calm someone down and get them to listen to what you have to say. <laughs> That's right. Oh, by the way, Burnett, what was it that you wanted to give to Miss Navia again? Oh, oh, yes. One moment, I have it right here. I'm just so confused as to what is actually going on right now. Miss Navia, these are some flower seeds that I prepared. Please take them. They're a very good variety, and they'll become very big and beautiful once they bloom. I don't know what we would have done without your help, so this is a little token of our appreciation. I hope you won't refuse. Ah, did you cultivate them yourself? Thank you so much. I'll certainly take them. Malus, we do still have some empty flower pots at home, right? I just... Uh, <laughs> Why, we can have as many pots as you'd like, Demoiselle. Uh, all right, like, I can't tell what's actually going on. Is she, like, imagining this in her mind? Like, is this, like, a, like a life-flashing-before-her-eyes moment before she falls into the water? Is this, like, did she die in the primordial seawater, dissolved, and ended up in, like she's dead and this is like their spirits or something or like she dissolved and ended up in a different dimension you know of Tevat type thing where everybody that dissolves is still alive we just think in this Tevat that they're dead perfect in that case we'll swap out some of the decorative plans for some of mrs burnett's flowers very well wait something seems to be off here uh, Navia, yes, something really is off. Excuse me, madam. If I'm not mistaken, your name is Burnett, correct? 
That's right. Is something wrong? You're supposed to be dead. Uh, no, it's nothing. This is the first time we've ever met, but your name seemed familiar to me. I must have heard it when I was discussing things with your husband previously. I've heard this name before. Sometime recently, I'm sure of it. And why are there so few people around here? Where did everyone go? Maybe they did dissolve. I don't know what. I, Navia, I, I... We must mind the time, demoiselle. We still have important things to attend to today. Huh? Uh, we do? Like what? Well, now, did you forget? Yeah, d tell us. Miss Navia, here you are. I've been looking for you. Please, come to the Opera House. Your trial is about to begin. Wait. What? Her trial. Which trial? Are we talking about her on trial? Or are we talking about the trial for her dad's killer thing that she jumped in on? Or is it... My trial? Wait. Well, why would I need to go to the opera house? Yes, she's right, demoiselle. It's just about time now, so we should get going. What? Oh. Uh, all right, then. What trial? What trial? Look, it's Navia. She's here. But is she like the attorney? What is she doing? And her two attendants are with her. <sighs> Goodness. Everyone's finally here. There sure are a lot of people here to see the trial. And they all seem to be oddly excited about something. I even know some of these people. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien. Wait! Essen. Why are so many people here? And why do I have no recollection of this case? Maybe she's imagining this, that she's being put on trial for not protecting the people that died from the primordial seawater, like, catastrophe that happened. Like, what if this is just all in her head? Like, she's dreaming this up, right? And she thinks she should be put on trial for not being able to save or protect the people of Spina de, de, de Rosula over in Poisson. And as for the judge, uh, huh? Where's Monsieur Nervillette? Has to be. Please sit in the defendant's seat. Don't worry, Silver and I shall accompany you. This has to be all in her head. All right, but are you sure you can stand behind me? Typically, it wouldn't be allowed, but today is an exception. Where's Nuvi? Where's Nuvi at? Hey, what kind of place do they think this is? Come on, do they have any idea what they're doing? Seriously. <sighs> Enough with the whispering! <sighs> Could someone please tell me where Monsieur Nervillette is and why I'm standing trial? My dear Miss Navia, have you not yet realized what you've done? In that case, allow me to explain. Yes, please do. As all here know, you are Master Callus's successor, the head of the Spina di Rasula, someone held in high regard by every soul in Poisson. After you took over the Spina, you treated all of us just like the late Master Callus had. If anyone in need reached out to you for help, you responded. All right, yeah, we know that, yeah, yeah. Not only you, but your butler, your subordinates, nearly everyone in the Spina di Rasula fought for the well-being of those in Poisson. And then she's like, and then he's gonna be like, but you failed to protect the people of Spina di Rasula in the Poisson when the Primordial Sea one it came about, and now you're gonna have to go to jail. Forever. That's what he's gonna, he's gonna get all angry, right? It's gonna be like law and order. <laughs> Wait a moment. Aren't you just proving that I'm a good person? Yes, correct. Absolutely right. Okay, that's not what I- And that is why you stand accused. You have helped so many people get through so many difficulties. You are one with us. We are inseparable. 
So she's on trial for being a good person? That doesn't make any sense. We are one big family. All of us who are from Poisson, inextricably linked. And with you being so important, we couldn't possibly do without you. Therefore, this fair and honorable court shall declare you guilty, and you shall stay here. You will be together with us forever. Forever. Why? This is, I'm so, she, this has to be in her brain, just all in her mind. Huh? What are you saying? She must be just be making this up. Uh, uh, in everything her head. Everything you have said is correct. I have indeed done a lot for my hometown, and I would be willing to be with you all, but what is the purpose of having me stand here like this? What is there to discuss? Ah, oh, well, if that's what you think, then I have no further comments. <gasps> How wonderful, Miss Navia! <laughs> I'm confusion. <laughs> Oh, that was a very evil laugh. Dude, that was a creepy one. That was a good one. I know all these people. Why are they laughing? I don't know. I seem to remember now. Yes, I get it. This trial is... Wait just a moment. This isn't right. Ooh, they're angry. Uh, Malus? Yeah, what's going on, fellas? What was that, Mr. Malus? Our conclusion is very clear and unanimous. Let the court judge her now. She's guilty. Um, Stay here, Being a Navia. good person? You're one of us. One of us. One of us. Join us. Yes. Demoiselle, don't admit guilt. This trial means to keep you here forever. I wish to exercise my right to defend our lady. Mr. Swanville, you only know of Navia's goodness, but nothing of her utterly independent mind. So what, they're going to try and prove, she, prove she's not a good person? To make her not guilty? She was born a free and independent spirit. She has never been tied down by anything. Indeed, even the death of Master Callus couldn't stop her. Her actions cannot serve as proof that she identifies herself as part of any group. She merely acted as an individual, extending her hand to help others. Please do not mistake her actions as being otherwise. Really? As an individual, you say? Don't forget, we are all Fontanians here. Yeah. This is the nation of justice, the nation of Hydro. Even if Miss Navia only voluntarily rendered her assistance, that doesn't change the fact that her beautiful soul must return to everyone. Water accepts all, blends with all. It will surely accept her kindness. Is it me, or does this guy here, Joinville, is it? Joinville? You sound like Voldemort from Harry Potter. You know what I'm saying? Where he's got like that kind of raspy, whispery kind of voice. Listen to it again. When Next time he talks, listen. Listen, you'll hear Voldemort. Everything is measured here in the nation of Hydro. And in the end, everyone shall meld together. Thus, when a unanimous opinion emerges, that opinion represents justice. You hear it? I hear it. Now I speak for everyone. Our opinion is consistent. Navia should stay. We and Navia are one. And you would call this justice? Preposterous. You are merely jealous that Demoiselle still has a chance to exist as an individual. Have you forgotten how much you all once longed to become individuals, to become independent? Do you mean to defy our justice? Oh, this is getting creepy. This is getting creepy and dark, and I'm all for it. If your justice is flawed, then why should we acknowledge it? As you said, we can also have our own justice. Silver and I shall defend Demoiselle. And that is how we will enforce justice. Ugh, my head, it hurts. Demoiselle. This is craziness. Silver, it hurts. My head is spinning. All I can see is stars swirling in front of me. Is she like starting to come out of her like whatever this is? I remember now. 
everything that seemed odd from the very beginning. Yeah, Nuvlet not being there. Uh huh. Karina, Desiree, Joyville, Jolien, Essen, and Mr. Javerny and Mrs. Burnett, who we met earlier, died. They got dissolved. Even Malus and Silver. I don't want to admit it, but but they're all dead. Yes, but are you dead? So what are you like in the spirit realm? What is going on? Don't be afraid and don't admit guilt. We will protect you to the very end. Absurd. Who are you to say that she cannot be judged? We are the majority and in the nation of trials, the majority is absolute justice. We are the will of all. Don't let them escape. We shall keep Navia here with us. Mr. Malus and Mr. Silver. Must you be so stubborn? Man, this is getting good. Oh my God, I'm so like enthralled in this right now. How could the two of you possibly hope to stand against the collective? Do not resist. This judgment is fair and just. Navia belongs to us. What was that, Voldemort? What was that little glitch thing that you just did? What, 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 was, what was that? Is it me or did that look like an ocean it almost? Like I caught it for a split second, but I couldn't really tell what that was. After all that happened, she should not it be is. left alone in Poisson. It is! It is! It's you! It's you! It's an ocean! -ed. It's an ocean! -ed. It's an ocean! -ed. That's right! When they dissolve, they turn to oceans. Right, right, right! We learned that from the court case from um the other day. The um no, not the other day, like a few weeks back with the, 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 the guy who was like capturing women and and and, and 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 dissolving them, and then they turn into these oceans! I get it. What are you saying? I get it. I get it. I get it. No more excuses. She says we're jealous. Jealous. <laughs> How could she possibly be an independent individual? And they're angry. What's with these people? Who's jealous of her? She belongs to us. Miss Navia. She... She's going through the same thing that the guy that um, kidnapped all the women and dissolved them is going uh, went through. Remember? Because he's like, I need to confront them. And I was like, I don't think that's a good idea. And he did. And it turned out that they weren't. It wasn't. It was uh, the, the, the women that he had, he had dissolved. And then they, like, I guess, murdered him or drowned him or something. Silence. Ooh, Nuvolette's in the house. Daddy Hydro showing up. Uh, that's. Oh, and they're gone. Yeah. Yeah, you better learn your place. Uh, Monsieur Nervillette. Such commotion is prohibited in the court. The accusations you just presented are nonsense and cannot constitute a proper trial. The court will adjourn for the rest of the day. In this, I shall hear no objections from any unauthorized party. Our thanks, Monsieur Nervillette. Please leave with me, Miss Navia, while there is still time. But... Go on now, demoiselle. This is your only chance to leave this place. What, can't bear to leave us behind or something? Malus. <laughs> My apologies. I couldn't resist making one little joke once I realized that this shall be our last goodbye. Oh, that's so sad. Man, they keep doing this. They, they are rubbing salt in the wound. Completely rubbing salt in the wound. So they know that they're dead. Malus. Silver. Ugh. Quickly, you must come now. Nuvlet, we're on the way. Goodbye. Then what's that? Oh, that's so sad, man. Oh, my heart. Oh, my heart. It hurts. It hurts. Stings even more. Farewell. Oh, dude. What is this game, man? Uh, no, wait. Just a second. <sighs> hey, Navia? So what happened? Why does Traveler look so sad? You're awake. Good. Oh, no, let's hear. <sighs> hey, what's going on? I must have been dreaming. Malus and Silver were still alive, and they were... They were defending me at some insane trial. It looks like you're all right. Did all the sad feelings cause you to have a nightmare? I'm on could give you a hug. The ruins you were exploring suffered a cave-in. When I arrived, I found you falling toward the water. 
Did you save her? You were just about to be dissolved within, but I... You what? Did you turn into your dragon form? Hmm? What is it? I think I saw two Oceanids protecting you. It was only no. for a moment, perhaps even a fraction of a second, but they gave me the chance to retrieve you. Malus and Silver coming in clutch. Were it not for their intervention, Dude. I would not have been able to rescue you before your consciousness dissipated. <sighs> Wait, did you say Oceanids? You mean like what happened with Vache? Some people that are dissolved become Oceanids. Perhaps those two Oceanids were the people you saw in your dream. Oh, Malus and Silver. <sighs> Oh no, she's gonna cry again. I always told them that they didn't have to protect me. <laughs> to think that they'd keep doing so even after death. Dude! <sighs> Please come with me. Where are we going, Daddy Hydro? Where are we going? Nevelette, are you okay? Hmm? Oh, I am quite all right. Perhaps there's something we could chat about? What do you want to talk about? Why do you look so stiff all of a sudden? Oh, Paimon knows. You're the type who feels awkward when there's nothing to talk about, right? I merely thought that we should give Navia some time to herself. Yeah, probably a good idea. Huh? Why didn't you just say so then? Don't you think it's even more awkward to call us over like this and then have nothing to talk about? Hmm. I suppose so. Oh yeah, by the way, Sejuine says hello. Ah, oh, Sejuine. I hope all is well with her these days. Her work in the Fortress of Meropede has not been too much for her, has it? No, 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 she's doing good. No way, don't worry. She's doing fine down there. She's an amazing head nurse. I see. Well, that is good. I have always worried that Sejuine would need a lot of time to understand the world of humanity, just as I have. Mm -hmm. Even though Seedreen made him do that, he hopes that you haven't been overwhelmed by all that's happened lately. Good old Risley. Thank you. Cake I have indeed man. been busy lately, and I also hope that everything is going well in the Fortress of Meropede. It's something. Uh, he still doesn't know what to talk about. Uh, let's chat about something else then. You're the expert here, Paimon. What should we talk about? So, never let. Uh, you're probably quite the swimmer, huh? Really, Paimon? Really? Really? He's the Hydro Dragon. The Dragon of Water. What do you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, of course. Why don't you just ask him his favorite food? Uh, this isn't going anywhere. Uh, let's try something else. Um... How did you find these ruins? Did That's what you should have started with. That's the, those are the questions you should have started with. Yes, in fact. I had arranged to meet you in Poisson, but when I arrived, I discovered that the Fatui were helping the residents evacuate. They had even transported a large quantity of supplies to the area. Amid my astonishment, I ran into the nave, and we had a chat. She informed me that she had asked you to investigate the ancient ruins here. Okay. Yeah. We originally planned to meet up with you, but Wait. we thought you might still be busy with all those official Wait. documents. We didn't Wait. think exploring the ruins would take very long, and who would have thought you'd wrap things up so quickly? Wait a second. Who is protecting Farina right now? Who is protecting Farina right now? Because if you're here, Navia's here, I'm here, Farina's by herself. I hope Navia can get back on her feet. Yes. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like. I don't like. I don't like that Farina's in Fontaine by I'm herself. I'm sorry to have kept you all waiting like that. I'm feeling much better now. Good. I'm glad you're feeling better, Navia. I guess we should get going again. Will you come with us, Monsieur Nervillette? Yes, if you wouldn't mind my company. No, join us. Join us. Oh, right. Another one joins the party. Let's keep going then. Join us. Looks like we've reached the end. Yep, what's here? This is the place. There should not be any other hidden spaces in the vicinity. The path sure had some twists and turns, but <laughs> it turns out that this place isn't actually that big. Twists and turns? Is that what you call it, Navia? With boulders coming out our face and, you know, stairs collapsing underneath of us? Yeah. Twists and turns, that's what you call it. 
There seems to be something on the wall. What's on the wall? What's on the wall? Horse! Wait! Plates. It seems like they were put here as an offering. Uh, could we take them down and have a look? I see Farina over here. I see Farina over here. On on this one over here. Uh, perhaps we should just leave them be for now. Hmm. There are four locations in total, but only three stone slates. The slate that should be in the first empty spot is missing. Where'd it go? And the surrounding walls also show signs of damage. There's something written below. Let Paimon see. Uh, reason dictates that this nation be destroyed. I shall record the history of its future here in its past. What? Uh, say what? I will record its future here in its past? Is this like Back to the Future? It feels like someone left these slates and these words here for a purpose. But does he mean that Fontaine should be destroyed? That's what it sounds like to me. That would fit the circumstances dictated by the prophecy, yes. Indeed, the slate's contents correspond to it. Take the second slate, for example. There's a person kneeling here. She seems so dedicated. And there's a whole bunch of other people behind her doing the same. She's facing this... Uh... What is this? Some kind of island in the sky? Celestia! And is that Lady Farina in the third image? Did the Hydro Archon fall into the water? What is going on? And... Is that a ring of people around her? Paimon doesn't quite get it. Are they all in the water? Hold on, hold on, hold on. So is this like showing like the prophecy type thing? So basically, is it saying that people need to worship Celestia or they're going to kill Farina? See what I mean? See what I mean? The fourth image. I know this one. Is that this exactly matches the content of the prophecy. Yeah, Farina sitting on the throne, flooded water. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Yeah, they do seem to match. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... More information should be hidden in these slates, but I fear I cannot easily uncover it. Most likely due to us missing the first slate. I am very sorry. So it seems to me that it's kind of telling you you have a choice, right? Either the people worship Celestia or the people need to throw Farina into the primordial sea and kill her. Because if you don't, she's going to be, they're going to flood Fontaine and she's gonna be left alone. That's kind of you know what I mean? That's kind of how I'm looking at this as you have a choice You can either worship Celestia Or kill Farina throw her in this into the primordial sea or she's gonna be left there by herself Don't blame yourself. Monsieur Nervalet Deciphering ancient stone slates isn't one of your duties. That's kind of like how I kind of See it, but I, I that's probably so wrong Ooh, Paimon's getting the chills just looking at these slates this says that it's the history of the future, right? That means the prophecy's sure to come true. Uh, I really hope it doesn't mean that. Still, Paimon feels like these images are kind of weird when you look at them together. Huh. Hmm. Hmm, everybody's just groaning. I get what you mean, Paimon. The issue is the order of the third and fourth images, right? That's right. If the images are in chronological order, shouldn't the fourth, the waters drowning Fontaine, come before the third, where the Hydro Archon herself falls into the water? No, I don't think so. And yet the order is reversed here. I see it as a choice. The second image is also quite concerning. What sin are the people in the images confessing to? Do you know what I mean? Like, I, okay, I almost feel like, all right, I'm, I'm cooking for a second. Let me cook, all right? I'm cooking, okay? I'm going to burn down the kitchen for a second, all right? Pay attention. 
So what if Celestia is pissed off? Like they're mad because the people are worshiping Farina, right? Like we remember in Act One when we first got to Fontaine, the people are like, Farina is amazing, Farina is great, yay, Farina, we love the drama, we love the 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 you know, whatever, whatever's going on. Like we love whatever, right? And Celestia is pissed because the people of Fontaine aren't worshiping, worshiping Celestia. They're worshiping Farina. And so Celestia is like, here's what we're going to do, fam. You either start worshiping me or I'm going to kill you all. You have to get rid of Farina. You have to drown Farina, throw her in the water. If you don't, I'm going to drown all of you. That's kind of like what I'm kind of seeing. I'm cooking, okay? The second image is also quite concerning. What sin are the people in the images confessing to? If we go by timing, Lady Farina only emerges in the third image. That means that the person in the second image might be the previous Hydro Archon. What? Egeria, then. I had never met her, but her appearance here does match the records. Okay, ob now, obviously, I'm completely way off. The previous Archon kneeling before the floating island in the skies. As if confessing a sin. Did she herself commit that sin? And if not, why would she be in such a posture? Also, I'm still wondering why these ancient stone slates are here at all. Judging from their contents, could this place be the origin of the prophecy? <laughs> Does that mean that someone, or some people, once saw these slates? Maybe. But who would have created these slates and left these words here? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It seems that any further clues will have to come from Farina. Oh, let's go have a chat with that psychopath. In that case, there's no time to lose. There's nothing else to be gained here, so let's head back first. Yeah, we better get somewhere safe for now. Traveler's thinking. Honestly, who created these slates doesn't matter now. The real question is whether things will truly play out as the prophecy foretells or not. I guess we'll have to find out. Leave the ruin? Thank God. Man, this ruin this ruin was fun though, I will admit. That's what the Sarita. I'm going to check on what's happening with the Spina. You know how it is. There's some things you just need to be there for yourself. Okay, Navia. I love you. You still have energy for that? Paimon's already beat! Just head back to the Fluff Sandra and have a rest then. Thanks for keeping me company all this time. Anytime. You call us. Here, I'll give you my number so you can text me anytime you want to. Oh, that's right. I'll depart as well. Thanks for your hard work today. Rest well, everyone. Nuvalant, good to see you too, Giga Chan. Traveler, Stun we'll Muffin. talk to Farina tomorrow morning to ask about the stone slates. Okay, can we come with? I'm sure that you're concerned about this matter as well. Yes. If you have time, drop by my office. I will share the results of our discussion with you. See you tomorrow. Are you really going to talk to her about this directly? Will that be a problem? Ugh, Paimon's getting a little scared now that it's come to this. She has long been harboring secrets and will not give them up easily, which makes it all the more my duty to ensure that she understands the present situation. All right, we'll leave it in your hands then. You're probably the best person to talk to her anyway. I will be carefully considering my words tonight. Traveler, Paimon, our safe house at the Flivsandra is always open to you as ever. So please don't think you're an imposition. Thank you, Navia. Oh, you're right. so sweet. I'll be on my way then. Uh, you are so sweet. You are so sweet. I wish I could just hug her face off, like seriously. Navi and Nuvalet both depart. You and Paimon head to the Spina de la Russa base at Flea of Sindra. Ah, we're finally back! Finally! Welcome back. We've got a special menu prepared for you two tonight. Yay! And there's good food too! Navi, uh, no. The food. Is the best. Food! You did great as well, Paimon. <laughs> Ooh, desserts! Oh my god. <sighs> Paimon's already starting to forget what happened today. Really, Paimon? How could you? How could you? What are you doing here? 
what are you doing here? Why are you here? The last time we saw you, you couldn't pay rent over in Mondstadt. What are you doing here? Oh my God. Oh my God. Dude, Mona's in town. Oh, wait. Mona, oh, 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 she can see the future. She can see, she can, um, she can do the whole, you know, the abracadabra, whatever you want to do, seeing the stars type thing. Oh, that voice. Is that who I think it is? Mona, how, how have you been doing over there in Mondstadt? You've been paying your rent on time? Huh? It's you two. What are you doing in Fontaine? What are you doing in Fontaine? I love Mona. Her story quest was really good. Mona? Man, you're looking good as as good as ever. Did the stars not tell you that we might meet here? Seriously, nobody just uses a scry glass whenever they've got time to just see who they'll meet on the road. Still, we didn't expect to see you here. Uh, wait, you're not a Fontanian, are you, Mona? Well, I have some business to attend to here, so I booked a hotel in the city. I was just out for a stroll when I bumped into you. Quite unexpectedly, if I might add. It's so good to see you, Mona. It's so good to see you. Okay, is it me? When we met her in her story quest, she was wearing her original outfit. Is this a different outfit from her original outfit? Yeah, it's the censored one. Yep. Why did you think I was from Fontaine, though? Is that because Magistus doesn't sound much like a mom's or surname? Uh, yeah, let's go, let's with, go that. with that. Yeah, let's go with that. Well, I used to have my own surname, which was, well, some other thing. Either way, the old hag told me when she took me as her disciple that the first step to being a great astrologist's pupil was to change that name. So what is your own surname? There was nothing for it, really. She really is amazing at astrology, so I changed my name to what it is now according to her wishes. To my surprise, however, Magistus is not the name of some ancient house or clan. Okay. Uh, it isn't? Nope. Although it is used by us in place of surnames, it generally just means great. Ooh, I like that. Wow! Imagine including a boast in your name. Wait, are you gonna have to put that into your genealogy as well? I reckon so. In any case, I'd give my disciple a name like this as well, if I were to take one. And may I ask what your master's name is? Astromancer Barbaloth Trismegistus. Barbaloth Trismegistus. That is a lot to say. Whoa, that's a long one. Does it also mean great or something? My name means Mona the Great Astrologist. As for the old hag, hers is, in plain speech, the thrice as great scholar of the stars. Just take it as a title specific to astrologists. Okay. Thrice as great? That's so petty. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> That's just how she is. She used to call herself Magistus, actually, but once she took me in, she changed her name to Trismagistus. Trismagistus, that's hilarious. Love Mona. Talk about excessive. <laughs> Magistus is thus the calling card of our school, so to speak, which makes it about the same as a surname. It's all right if you don't get it. You can look into it further should you need to study astrology more deeply. How about a triple strength traveler? <laughs> or a triple appetite paimon? <laughs> that sounds terrible. Oh, no, it doesn't. What are you talking about? You're a bottomless pet. <sighs> Well, I was born in Mondstadt, yes. My parents migrated to Dorman Port, and I traveled with the old hag for a while, after which I settled down in Mondstadt City. Oh, that's a good thing then. At least we know you won't be dissolved by Fontaine's waters. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, speaking of that, I'm sure you're aware that a bunch of things have happened here in Fontaine, right? Mm hmm I know you're not a local, but I'd avoid getting too close to any water that looks strange all the same. There's something ominous about it. Well, the water, I mean. Yes, can you look into your stars and tell us what the future holds, please? Did you come to Fontaine because of the prophecy, Mona? That was the main reason, yes. Just a while back, the steam bird invited me to take part in a panel and speak about the circulation of the prophecies as an astrologist. 
Okay. The invitation was sent quite early on. I don't think anyone expected Fontaine to be in this much trouble. What do you make of that prophecy, Mona? Just tell us what you think as an astrologist. Your word would go a long way to make things more certain and less scary. But what if she's gonna be like, everyone dies? What I can tell you is that I'm an astrologist. And that this prophecy concerns the fate of Fontaine. Even that of all Tevat. Ascertaining this is akin to reading the fortune of the whole world. I want to hear it. I'm afraid that this is not something that just anyone can do. If I could do it, you would no longer call me an astrologist, but a visionary. But on the flip side, the prophecy is so huge and powerful that it must surely come from a powerful visionary. Its contents involve the fate of the world. Disregarding it would be a mistake. Okay. A visionary? Sounds really powerful and all, but does such a person really exist? Who would that be? Of course. The old hag could do it. And Trust me, I just bet there are others amongst those Hex and Zerical colleagues of hers who could do something similar. Okay. I need to ascertain the accuracy of the prophecy. Could you help me get in touch with your master? Huh? Uh, are you sure? Yes, 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 I'm sure. Hmm. The old hag. All right. I'll help as she, you. As you call her. It isn't often that I see you with such a serious look on your face. I'll tell you once I hear back from her. Sounds good, Mona. Yes, Mona. You're amazing as always. Yes, yeah, she is. I love Mona. Oh, well, She's hilarious. This is something only I can do after all. So yes, your praises are quite welcome. <laughs> That's the greatest of astrologists for you. Of all the people we know, you know the stars the best. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> That's the spirit. I love, I love her so much. She's so much freaking fun. Oh, sorry. I came to see what oh, hey. all the commotion was about. If there's anything you need, do not hesitate to inform the Spina di Rosula. Will do. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Guess we were getting a little too carried away there. Well, I'll go tend to my own business now. If I receive any news, I'll be sure to come find you two again. Sounds good, Mona. So good to see you. Love your hat. And there you she goes. Quick as rushing cutie. water. And here we are with the Spina guy giving us suspicious looks. Right, Paimon. Well, we are making a ruckus. Try to keep it down next time, Paimon. <laughs> Why are you yelling at me? All right, all right, thanks. Hmm, that's more like it. Jeez. Ungrateful little fairy. After the conversation, you decide to get a good night's sleep to replenish your energy. Ah, good morning. To be honest, Kaiba, I'm still feeling kind of sleepy. I feel that way every morning. <sighs> but it's time to get up, traveler. We agreed to go see Nivellet, so let's pack it up and get going. Let's go, because we got to go talk to Farina. Yes. Hi, Sadine. It's so good to see you. How are you? I still feel bad that, you know, what I said during Nouvellet Story Quest. I apologize again. Uh, is something wrong? Monsieur Nouvellet and Lady Farina, they, they seem to have gotten into a dispute. Please go see for yourself. Oh, that's bad. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What are they yelling about? Uh-oh. Like I said, I've already explained everything. Oh God, okay, okay, okay. And yet the problem has not been properly solved. There is little space for excuses between us. It is not my intention to offend you, but please tell me where you stand. You are the Hydro Archon Fosalor, are you not? Look at this. This is a list of the victims from the recent Poisson incident. <laughs> And like I said, it's just it's just kind of coming across as like, so? Do you know what I mean? She's, she's basically like just going, what do you want me to do? Y you mean they're all... Yeah, dead, dissolved, gone, poof. We did not arrive in time to avert this disaster. And I will not have it happen again. Ooh, Nouvellet is pissed off. <clears throat> I will say this once more. You must tell me everything you know. Yesterday, I found three stone slates in some ancient ruins near Poisson. Do you know anything about those? And the other thing that I don't get, right, is like, Farina is the Archon, right? But Nouvellet is doing so much more than what the Archon is actually doing. Do you know what I mean? And he's one of the Sovereign Sevens. 
and they're working together. It's just... Seriously? You're questioning me like this is a court case now. I don't know anything about that. But you found them in some ancient ruins, you say? Yeah. That's correct. Which is why I came to ask you some questions. There should have been four slates, but one of them was missing. Did she take the it? The other three featured different images that seemed to correlate to the prophecy. Wait, did Farina go in there and take it? <laughs> the prophecy? The second of these slates depicts the previous Hydro Archon Egeria kneeling before a floating island in the sky, as if confessing something. Do you know nothing of this either? I don't. I've never seen such slates. I feel like she's lying. I'll ask you again. Do you really have no information Dude. regarding the previous Archon? He is pissed off! My deciphering of the slates indicates that the Hydro Archon Egeria once had to confess to, or apologize for, a certain sin. What'd she do? If anyone would know about it, it should be you. All gods don't have the same secrets, you know. She was herself and I'm me. Is it really so strange that I know nothing? Well, no, that's okay. I see where she's coming from. Because she's not Egeria. So she could, she, it's possible that she couldn't know. She doesn't know. I understand your concerns, but I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to tell you. <sighs> Forgive me for saying this now, Lady Farina. But I have long known of your various secret investigations into certain matters. There are several indications that you have been investigating the prophecy on the sly. Ooh! This is not strange in itself, considering that you are the Hydro Archon. But it is strange that you should also claim to not know any of Egeria's secrets, as well as do nothing following your inquiries. You have never been as superficial as you have presented yourself to be, nor are you a fool. And yet, your behavior is very inconsistent. <laughs> oh, so you've been watching me all this time, have you? I didn't think you were that type. She's gone crazy. She just flipped the switch. She just went into psychopath mode. <laughs> you. Oh, man. He's pissed. Are we going to get a battle between the, the, the Hydro Dragon and Farina, the Archon? Oh, God. Well, since you know about my secret investigations, then you should know I'm actually working to take care of it. But are you, though? There's no point questioning or suspecting me. You're the Eudix, but you're still my subordinate. You should be following my lead. Dude! Just trust in me, your Archon, and do as I say. Never mind whether you can truly convince yourself to or not. It'll all turn out fine. You do understand where you got your power from, right? Like, you got your Archon powers from the Sovereign Dragon. Like, do you not understand that? you That's where you got your powers from. And you're trying to put the... That's all I have to say. We do not discuss this matter again. Dang, it's like they're married. Oh, <laughs> the opera's about to start. Toodles! What? What do you mean the opera? She, she's like, she's just like, what? Opera's about to start. Toodles! Fossilor, I, Fossilor, am going to go enjoy the opera. You three have fun. <sighs> wow. Can't believe she just straight up said that. She's like, Toodles! What? Oh, she's right. Oh, slow mo. So there's something up with her, and I cannot figure it out. Standing by the door, wonder what's up with her. She was smiling. Huh. She didn't seem in the mood to care if we were listening in or not. There is something up with her, and I don't know what it is. We learned that like she was cursed or something, but we still haven't gotten into that. There's something up. Uh, she seemed deeply troubled. She seemed to be deliberately hiding something. Yeah, there's something going on. I don't think she's lying, I though. I assume you've been that's, outside for a while now. See, that's the problem. I don't think... I don't think she's lying. But she's definitely hiding something. She's omitting something, but I don't think she's lying about some of the things um, that... 
Nouvelat was asking her. Do you know what I mean? Oh, you noticed. Seems Farina didn't even realize we were here. She was in a great panic, though I cannot discern the reason. Our discussion reached impasses time and again, a state of affairs that we cannot allow to continue. Why, why is the R&R smiley face showing up? <laughs> I haven't seen an r, &R in like weeks. Still, I do not understand. Dialogue is the basis for understanding, so why did she keep refusing to engage? I'm afraid questions alone might not suffice. We need to make her understand how dire the situation actually is. Everyone in her inner circle has noticed that she is hiding some secret. The issue is her attitude. I fear that she will not reveal anything unless absolutely forced to. But like I said, I just don't think she's, I don't think she's lying. I think she's just running away so she doesn't say, but I think she was being honest in her answers. We may have to create a situation in which she will have no choice but to speak. What are we going to do? Oh? Like what? Normally, people will only reveal the truth when standing trial. Perhaps we must have the mm. Hydro Archon experience just such a scenario. Are we going to put Farina on trial? Oh no, this is bad. No, 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 this is really bad. We can't do that. But Farina's seen so many trials and she's really good at dodging questions. How do we make sure that she won't just slip away at the first chance she gets? No way they're going to put her on trial. We will need to consider this thoroughly, join forces with various parties, and then do what we can. <sighs> If at all possible, I would prefer to recuse myself from this affair, but we must prevent the prophecy from coming to pass. This may be cruel to her, but all Fontaine is in crisis. The information a god possesses is too precious, and so we must take a chance on this. No way, no way. In that case, we will need help. Hmm. But who will lend us their aid to do such a thing? But what if we, if we if we if we put her on trial for something? Who's to say that she can't sit there and go, "I want a trial by combat," you know, Game of Thrones style, and have to fight Clorand? Are we insane? I, I, have we lost it? Like, have we like Lear's like? Uh, we've gone crazy. Like, uh, I think I know who to call. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Who are we call? Who are we calling? A few days later, on a boat somewhere in Quiet Poisson. Who are we calling? Who the hell are we calling? Well, that's everyone, huh? Who's everyone? Speaking of which, it was pretty smart of you to think of hiding here. Where are we hiding? We're sitting in a chair. Poisson was just involved in a disaster, so it's presently devoid of people. That naturally makes it the best choice. Lynette's here! Hey, how are you? And here you are, drinking tea like it's the most natural thing in the world, huh? I bet you I know who this is, Risley. That's what family should do. Or oh, maybe Sit not. Sit and enjoy a leisurely time together. Is Risley here too, Lenny? <laughs> Lenny's it's here. It's nice to enjoy tea here, you know? Care for a cup? I heard tea and I immediately thought of Risley. <clears throat> Lend me your ears, everyone. Navia's here too. <clears throat> or perhaps one of you might like to start us off. How about you, friend? Remine's here, everybody's here, everybody's here. Uh. Me? No, I don't think I can. Hmm. Then, how about you, good sir? Risley, right? Oh, Nuvlet's here too. I will cause the We're gonna gang up on to become as somber as it is in court. We're gonna gang up on Farina. Oh no! <laughs> well then, I guess we're lucky. We've got a local like me to organize things. Wonderful, the spotlight at last. I guess I'll be facilitating things from here. That was Clarence. a little long-winded, don't you think? How are you doing? It's so good to see you. God, I love her. Oh, <laughs> you might be right. Anyway, to cut to the chase, our friend here, the Traveler, has brought us together to discuss something. As for what that is, well, uh, let's start by saying that we'll be pooling our efforts together to create a series of traps. Traps? We're gonna trap Farina? Oh, how intriguing. Well, it's just an expression, really. One that I just learned from Clorand. And 
induced on the spot. So, let's invite her to explain in detail. A round of applause, please. What makes, what makes us think that we're going to be able to get Farina to talk and do stuff if, if Arlecchino can't even get her to do stuff? Do you know what I mean? Like, Arlecchino's the number four harbinger of the Fatui. She couldn't even get her, even putting pressure on her, she couldn't even get her to, like, speak up and do, do something. What makes us think that we're going to be able to? Huh? Didn't you say that you would be facilitating this? Oh, come now. Your work doesn't involve much public speaking, right? This is a good chance to practice. You might even pick up some fancy oratory tricks to impress your boss with in the future. <laughs> I see. And what does my boss say? Oh man, this is so good! <laughs> Love Clorian. He's glad that you consider him your boss. Do go on. He is glad? You talking in third person now? In that case, <clears throat> do any of you have experience hunting? Hunting? Are we gonna hunt down Farina? Not that I recall. Fremenet and I once used a wooden stick in a basket to catch wild rabbits when we were younger. As for Lynette, uh... Oh, right. You were sick that day, weren't you? Uh, I've also gone diving to catch some fish before. Does that count? Uh, I'm afraid not. You may or may not have heard, but Fontaine once played host to a group known as the Marichose Hunters. Marichose, that's what I use for Nouvellet's uh, artifacts. Though that was their name, they did not hunt animals, but rather various monsters left behind by the ancient dynasty of King Remus. King Remus? Today, Fontaine's monster population has already thinned greatly, so the hunters have blended back into society, taking up arms in other lines of work. They even left a unique methodology of hunting in their wake. A trap comprises of the following components, bait, a trigger, and a containment device. Sometimes a lethal implement will also be necessary to deal with the prey. So, if we were to build a trap together, right now, what would you choose to build it with? For me, I would prefer something basket-shaped. A cage. Pigeons and rabbits will see the bait and naturally enter the snare. A cage? How about a cage? If we're trying to trap Farina, just put a slice of cake in it. Our line of work requires a deft hand, and we're some of the best in the industry, so you can count on our techniques. You used some of those techniques while moving the people of Poisson, didn't you? My subordinates mentioned that you even performed some magic for the bawling children. Yes, and I even managed to gather some intelligence in the meantime. I'm quite the multitasker if I do say so myself. I love Lenny. I'm afraid I can't claim that as my strong suit. I prefer more stable methods, like placing bait in the water and waiting for the fish to come within reach. That's the kind of method I would count on. I love Fremenet too. <laughs> Calm and steady. Exactly the kind of person who would catch loads of fish. Mm-hmm. And I can be their assistant. With discretion, I'm sure. Hmm. I'd probably use some sort of mechanical animal. Papa once bought me some small clockwork squirrels, mice, and such. When placed in the forest, they can attract others of their kind. I remember that you liked those too, didn't you? I did. And that would be a good way to go about it. If they're realistic enough, animals of the same kind will follow them all the way to the trap. What about you, Monsieur Nevillette? I fear I do not have any related experience. Hmm. That makes sense. You usually solve problems directly, without the use of any such tricks. He tried. It didn't work. He tried. He got very, very assertive with Farina, and that did not work. But I do have one more question for you, monsieur. If we were to create a trap now, how would you design it? Hmm. I would like for it to be effective, but bring no harm to the prey. A more gentle trap would be ideal. Cake! Hmm. Kind, as always. However... Our intention doesn't necessarily change the containment device and the type of implement we need. If we wanted to kill the prey in one strike, we would need a powerful implement. However, that also goes for prey that must be captured and safely contained. Wait, why is that? 
Only a hunter who's a true expert at subduing their prey can snare it without harming it. The line that divides life and death is often exceedingly thin. Very true. Uh, so are we going hunting together? Huh. We hadn't thought of seeing ourselves as hunters. It kind of works, but maybe it's still not the best metaphor. I think I'm, I'm kind of on Paimon's side a little bit here. If our means of capturing and dealing with our prey is to put them on trial, then the hunting metaphor is actually quite accurate. We cannot put Farina on trial. We cannot put Farina on trial. But we shall require much more courage There's than any no hunter way. to judge a god, a being whose seat is an exalted throne. There's no way that they're going to put Farina on that, that can't be. No way. Oh, so that's what's going on. Sounds very interesting. Why not? She's the Archon! She's the Hydro Archon. She's the Archon. Can't put her on trial. What are you going to do if you find her guilty? You're going to throw in the Fortress of Maripide and let her sit there and rot? There's no way. Clarence's hunting metaphor was just that a metaphor. You will not call this a hunt because that is not what you should do at present, nor has the relationship between you and Farina reached such a dire stage. What you need is simply the secrets she is keeping. Attempting to take her secrets is an act of sacrilegious disrespect, but must be done to prevent Fontaine from sinking into the waters as foretold in the prophecy. There is neither hunter nor prey, but there must be a trap. That is what you will need. What trap? Tra trap or how, though? That's, that's how... Seriously, what are you going to do? You're going to get a cage? You're going to put a big old giant cake in it and be like, here you go, have fun. Do you know what I mean? And then get trap her in there and then throw her in in front of Nouvellet and the Oratrice and all that? <sighs> it's been a tough few days, hasn't it? I'd say. So much has been happening. We just got out of jail, too. That's the sad part. We couldn't even enjoy freedom for just a few minutes. Those meetings sure didn't make me hungry. <sighs> so long but everyone seemed pretty fired up huh Paimon thought they'd be at least a little frightened well Fremenay was now that Paimon thinks about it but everyone else just looked a little surprised do you feel more confident after the meetings Paimon because I don't uh well it's hard to say Paimon doesn't have any experience with this sort of thing but with you around Paimon sure will do great after all, you're the most reliable person in the world, aren't you? <laughs> uh, huh? Is something wrong? What's going on, Paimon? Uh, did you just pour some tea? Paimon what? didn't notice you doing that at all! No, I didn't pour no tea. Are you seeing things again? Uh, then what's that? What is that? Paimon's never seen that cup before! Who's here now? Who's here now? Don't be frightened. I'm just joining you two for tea. I merely refrained from saying anything till now. Who is this? Who is that? I don't recognize that voice. Is this the same voice that we heard in Sumeru? <gasps> Who's that voice? Uh, but there's no one here. Ah, have you forgotten me already? I don't know who you are. Wait, what? Wait. You are familiar. You're the voice we heard from the sky in Sumeru. Who is this voice? Who is this voice? <laughs> the voice from the sky, hmm? I fear that description is wrong. Though, not completely wrong. Who is this voice? Who is this voice? <sighs> You're feeling lost now. Just as you were feeling previously. Mm-hmm. I sensed that confusion and thus came to you. Guiding people is an irresistible hobby of mine, after all. Who are you and what do you... Guiding people? What? Who are you and what do you want with us? Mm, consider me a passerby. Just accepting a commission from my friend's disciple on a whim. Oh, you're the Tris... You're the Tris Magistus. Tris Magistus? Well, Fon uh, allow me to ask you what Fontaine's... Is this... Is this the old hag? the old hag right allow me to ask you will fontaine's prophecy come true the prophecy yes what has been prophesied will be fulfilled 
You may view such things as the history of the future. Okay, what has been prof prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view, <gasps> no, the history of the future. So you're saying that Fontaine is in big trouble. Why don't we just evacuate? What? Then is there any way we can stop it? I believe you have witnessed a failed attempt with your own eyes. Can everything in Tavat so easily be changed? There it is again, faint. Can there really be no exceptions? Oh, this ah, is so interesting. So you've caught on. Just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? Are the things that you shall see different from the fate that the gods perceive? But what can't the god, where can the gods not see? What is she talking about? It all sounds really impressive and important and stuff, but it also sounds kind of scary. Yeah, 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 yeah. The tea in the teacup is just about gone as well. I believe that you understand, right? Some things are insignificant, but others you must reach out to change. Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tavat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Ooh! Hmm, this was good tea, by the way. Thank you for your hospitality. Well, that'll be all for today. So basically what she is saying is that... The... the, the the end game has already been decided is kind of what she's saying. Like, she's like, the end game has already been decided. Like, I already know what's going to happen in the future. The future cannot be changed no matter what you try to do. Cause you, all you got to do is just keep doing what you're doing and everything, you know, whatever happens in the future happens. Like, does that make sense? Like, Oh man, but we don't really know what's supposed to happen. It's gone. And it almost feels like this is kind of telling us that, there's nothing that we can do to change, even when we find out what that is. Mage N, is this the clue you're leaving for us? Mage N? N. Like the letter N. The unexpected news leads to complicated feel. When you woke up, someone seems to be outside. Who's outside? Uh, what? I want to hear someone talking. So like, it's, like I said, it, it sounds like she's almost trying to say, you might know what fate lies for Fontaine and there's absolutely nothing you can do to change it. Uh, all right, all right, coming. You're getting more diligent, Paimon. Hey, it's you who's getting lazy, okay? Yeah, okay, whatever. Well, I see I've walked in on some lively banter. Mona! Mona! Hi! Have you been the how have you been these past few days? Fine, just fine. I went to take part in that Steambird panel. It turned out to be more interesting than I expected. Okay. Not all Fontanians are pessimistic about this. One journalist mentioned that sitting around and waiting for the end to come would be wrong, and that they should make their own rescue preparations. I agreed, so we had a brief chat with her. Yeah, I agree too. Uh, did she have pink hair by any chance? Was her name Charlotte? Why, yes, it was Charlotte. I assume you've heard of her, no? Mm -hmm. That daredevil journalist? Yeah, I love Charlotte. I'm in full support of her view. Prophecies are very important, but how can people allow their lives to be commandeered by just a few words? That's right! Paimon's glad to hear something sensible for once. <laughs> ah, yes. About what we had discussed before. I did try, but I'm afraid I couldn't reach the old hag. I'll try again tonight, but I wouldn't get your hopes up. So it wasn't the old hag? It wasn't the it wasn't Tris Magistus that was talking to us just now? It said Mage Inn. Who in the world could that be? Actually, someone already came over. Huh? Yeah. Do you know this person? You tell Mona about your mysterious guest. Goodness gracious. Are you serious? I believe she came to pass a message to us. She said that even the god's gaze has blind spots. Pretty bold if you ask Paimon. Most people would believe the gods to be all-knowing, right? I wonder where these blind spots are. The abyss? That could be one. The Hexen Circle members are certainly anything but ordinary. As for the mage named N, 
The old hag has mentioned her a few times. She said that N's sense of direction is incredible, and that she loves guiding those who are lost. We're always lost. But I've never met her, and if she were still alive, she'd be... <laughs> well, suffice it to say that the hag's at least a few hundred now, and N's been around for longer than that. Whoa, the Hex and Zirko sounds like a scary group. But they must really stay in shape to live so long. Yeah, yeah. Their abilities alone are pretty terrifying. If she came to see you personally, then the problem you're facing must truly be of great importance. Well, it's not like Paimon could understand anything she said. Yes, she was quite cryptic, but I suspect she means that there is still a way to turn things around. She didn't say when or what that would be, though, so... Perhaps it is something that you cannot know right now. Oh, man. True, her words were meant to, as a helpful hint, but when we realized their value and meaning, was that the best answer that my question could have gotten? No. Traveler, Paimon, are you two all right? No, we are not all right. We are not all right, Mona. Oh, we're fine. We're just a little down right now. It kind of feels like the end is coming, you know? Mm -hmm. I see. I feel that same sense of desperation, too. I guess you could consider me someone who has often witnessed fate. So far as I have seen, it cannot be swayed. But even so, I still hope for and believe in miracles. Astrology is eternal and rational, but fate may not be. It is cruel, but it can also be beautiful. I love Mona. Perhaps that's what N was trying to tell you. Not to lose heart, and to believe that what you are seeing playing out before you is not yet set in stone. I did originally think of steering clear of all this, but I couldn't. Even if this is all futile, I still wish to help everyone. If we don't struggle to the last, then how can we face the end when it comes? True. Huh. You do have a point. <laughs> There I go, talking about astrological principles again. <laughs> Sorry about that. The moment I start talking about work-related stuff. I oh, I need to get going. Don't worry about it, Mona. And thank you. I love you and adore you. You are hilarious. It was worth trying to comfort you, even if only a little. I believe that you'll help those who are struggling in the same way I did. Always. I suppose that might be why we always seem to meet by coincidence. True. We always do seem to run across her in I'm random also times. I'm kind of moved by what Mona said, but also kind of sad too. Yeah. Hey, traveler, Paimon suddenly feels like going outside for a walk. Let's go. Really? Okay. Let's walk around the city, shall we? There's a few spots we always like to walk by. Okay, let's go. Uh, huh? Our names are written in this newspaper. Uh, what's going on? Maybe we're fa we are a famous traveler, honorary knight of Favonius. Okay, Crime Stoppers in Leeway. We took down the Shogun, First Age of Boer, lead attorneys over here in Fontaine. Okay, we're famous. We are famous. Let Paimon see. The underwater stronghold, the Fortress of Meripede, has continued in its noble autonomy, but that does not mean that others cannot interact with it. My recent attempts to enter the fortress bore little fruit. Huh. Guess Charlotte still hasn't given up on that. No, she hasn't. Thus, did an Outlander friend become the focus of this report? A blonde adventurer with their white fairy legends trailing in their wake. It is said that this mysterious traveler once visited the underwater fortress. So while the fortress's interior remains a mystery behind closed doors, do not fear, for the tales of the traveler contain surprises in spades. Charlotte wrote a story on us. Journalist Charlotte's biggest scoop yet, The Traveler's Trail, World Walker. Huh, Charlotte took so many awesome photos of us and we never even noticed her. Well, she's sneaky. She hasn't been able to get a hold of anything at the fortress, so since we're easier to find, she's using us as the subject matter instead? That sure seems to be the case. Uh, seriously? Well, fine. Those headlines and photos do look cool, so Paimon will forgive her this time. I love Charlotte. Oh, Paimon's hungry. Should we go in and get something to eat? Let's go. You're always hungry, though. 
What was the world quest? Side quest? This is where we had like lunch with like Navia and stuff, right? In Act One. Hey, quick! Look, that's that's what? Who? That's the limited edition, only sixteen slices a day cake. Oh my God! It hasn't already sold out for the day. It was so delicious the last time we tried it. Despite the tense situation we were in, let's give it another go. But I'm sure it'll be great. Oh my God! We can't let anyone get ahead of us. Hurry up! Let's go get this One cake. One slice of cake, please. No, no, no! Is that a melusine? If that's a melusine, you can have the cake. <sighs> Someone showed up after all. If that's a melusine, you can have the cake. Oh, wait, you're the one from the Carnivormonia. <gasps> oh, it's Sedane! Yes, please take the cake. Oh, are you here to buy cake too? <laughs> it seems Monsieur Nervalette was right. You really can eat. Yes, she really can. Wait, did he really say something like that? That's right. Even he has his own preferences when it comes to food. As for me, I love the cake and coffee here. I, me and you are besties now, Sadine. Coffee and cake? Yes, please. Do you come here often? Mm -hmm. Usually every day. Every day? It's part of my daily schedule, apart from work. I shall have my cake and coffee. I love, I love it. Uh, then what if someone told you one day that this place would be closing soon? And you wouldn't get to eat cake here anymore. What would you think? I'd be sad. She's gonna be sad. You're gonna make you're gonna make her cry. We don't we don't make Melusines cry. But why would it close? Um. Well, Paimon doesn't know either. But maybe, maybe the waters will rise tomorrow. You know, like in the prophecy. Wow, Paimon, that a way to be subtle. That a way to be subtle. That a way to just bring down somebody's room. Sadine, Sadine was so excited for this cake, and now you're just like crushing her dreams. Oh, the prophecy. Um, to be honest, I haven't paid much attention to that. No, still, even if there'd be no more cake tomorrow, that wouldn't keep me from having some today. No, no, it's the same for eating in general. You might not be able to eat tomorrow, but if you can do so today, then you should carry on. That's what people call living, you know. Maybe that's why I'm, you know, have gained a little bit of weight here, like here recently. <laughs> Maybe that's why I've I've put on a little bit of pounds. Huh? Don't be sad. Excuse me. Could I have two more slices of cake to go? And you're you're gonna take all of our cake. You're gonna take all the cake. Well, Sadine, you can have all the cake. These two slices are for you. <gasps> Sinjuin said that this kind of expression you're making is what humans call being sad. Oh my god, and after I treated you so horribly at the beginning of Nouvellet's... Oh man, my heart. Oh my heart. Ugh. Oh, you know Sea Twin? I sure do. Mm -hmm. She was born before me, and she sometimes comes to the surface to teach us things about humans. Sea Twin is a hot mess. <laughs> She said that humans are creatures that are saddened easily, yes, and you can only lift their spirits by feeding them delicious food. So please try the cakes here. Dude, Siege Wayne is so legit. Cause I can tell you right now, I can tell you right now, if, if, if I had a significant other, right? And I was sad and they brought me food, that would, I'd be so happy. Siege Wayne is so spot on. I've got something else to do, so I'll be going now. You two try to stay in a good mood after eating, all right? <laughs> Bye. You're so cute. Thank you for the cake, Sadine. Seasween really does understand humans. Oh, there she goes. Oh, oh, that's it? That's, uh, I thought you were going to say hope to see you later. Okay. All right, let's dig in. I'm unsure this cake will be delicious. Same. I agree. You share a glance with Paimon and snarf down the cake. It's more delicious than last time. And the flavor gets even better with the sip of tea. It sure would be nice if we could come again tomorrow. Paimon, you were like, what is your deal? You're just like, well, world's going to end. World's, uh, sorry, world ends tomorrow. Okay, countdown. All right. Paimon, jeez. Sure would be nice if we could always eat delicious food here. Oh, Paimon is just like, well, world's gonna end tomorrow, sorry. Wow, if it isn't the Traveler and Paimon. Oh, have you seen the article I wrote about you? We did, Charlotte, you did such a great job. Ha, you got some nerve. You just used us to make some quick mora. Can 
we negotiate a profit split? Wow. Oh, you needn't worry about that. I heard that you were in Poisson some time back, so I sent you a letter to discuss just that. It appears you didn't receive it, though. Oh. Oh. It's all right, though. I've set aside the amount intended for you. I've even set the table with some food. Thanks, Charlotte. Really? Oh, you're the best. Oh, good lord. <laughs> you're almost a little too easy to win over, Paimon. If I were a journalist with ulterior motives, you'd be in trouble now, you know. Yep. Oh, Paimon knows you're not like that. We don't know. We don't know, though. That's the thing, Paimon. D d did we not learn anything from Sejuin? Like, have we not learned in our whole time at Tevat that you d you never know? You never know. Still, what brings you here all of a sudden? Were you looking for me? You never know. A friend of ours met you a while back. And when she mentioned it, we thought of coming to see you. Her name's Mona. Yes, she's awesome. Ah, so you know Miss Mona as well. She's a guest columnist for our paper. Really good one, too. She's so young and already such a brilliant astrologist. So she mentioned me? What did she say? Well... She said that you're a real daredevil of a journalist. <laughs> Paimon imitating Mona right there. <laughs> She said, you're a real daredevil of a journalist. Oh my God, Paimon, cracking me up. <laughs> nice. In which case, can this daredevil journalist dare to request an exclusive interview with the legendary traveler and Paimon? Sure, sure thing, of course. Uh -huh. So your article in the paper today doesn't count? Oh, of course it doesn't. That was more like live photography. What I'd like to do is dive deeper and ask you to talk about the things you've seen and experienced. You seriously want to interview me? It's going to be a long interview because we've been through a lot. Yeah, are we even qualified enough? Why not? If I say you're worth an interview, then you're worth it. But not right now, of course. I'll need a few days to prepare. I hate to tell Charlotte we don't have a few days. Oh, in that case, we'll just chat when you have the time then? Oh, so that's a yes? Ooh, splendid! I'll tell the editor-in-chief immediately. I'll have to apply for lighting, a venue, some props, and... I love Charlotte, dude. I love her. She's she's awesome. Ooh, so much to get done now. Talk to you later. Bye, Charlotte. Wait, Charlotte. Paimon still got a question for you. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. And what's that? Uh-oh. What are you going to ask her? If, just for example, Fontaine were to be flooded tomorrow, what would you do today? Good question, though. Huh. That's the prophecy you're talking about, isn't it? I mean, I do hear about it often, but I've never once thought that the day could be tomorrow. If you're seriously asking, then I might try and think of a way to leave Fontaine. Oh, but I'm still a journalist, first and foremost. That means I have a duty to be reporting from the scene. And secondly, I wouldn't forsake my homeland that easily. You know, this part of the quest is actually really good. It's kind of like trying to give you, like, IRL advice. You never, you know what I'm saying? Because you're like... We as people here on Earth have no clue what tomorrow holds. Like, we don't know if there is going to be a tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, this is kind of just telling you, go live your best life. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, live each day to the fullest. From what I've seen, most people don't know what they do should the worst come to pass. In truth, it might be better just to behave like normal rather than worry over such an end. So in all likelihood... I'd probably still be prepping at the office for that interview of ours. I know what you're thinking. That sounds a bit sad, but I've always believed that it's best to do what you enjoy. I agree, Charlotte. Just think about it. If this nation really were to be suddenly destroyed tomorrow, but I still successfully finish an exclusive interview with a truly unique person, then the story I would wind up writing would truly be timeless. And then do you know what I'd do? Well, I'd write that story, send it for printing, and use messenger pigeons to get copies out to the various nations as soon as possible. I'm not a dreamer, nor am I a workaholic, but I do love my job, and I'd be proud of leaving such an article behind. I guess you could say that I was born to be a journalist. Yeah, it sounds like it. Sounds like it. But anyway, that's my answer. And on that note, I'll get back to my preparations. So good to see you, Charlotte. Have fun. That's Have fun. So nice. All of a sudden, Paimon actually kind of envies her. Yeah, it's almost like she's saying I'm already doing what I love. So even if I continue to do what I what I'm doing, I'm still happy. If if tomorrow is going to be a flood, 
Anyway, let's go and take a look at the sea, shall we? Okay. Let's go. I love to get you so much. I do too. It's so good. Oh. Scenery can be a pretty soothing combo, huh? So pretty. Mm. Paimon is sad. Paimon's been thinking. About? Yes. If it wasn't Fontaine, but all of Tevat that would be destroyed tomorrow, where would we go and what would we do? I feel like Traveler would probably say something about a sister. Would want to see a sister. No, Paimon should ask, if you could choose, what would you like to do? He would want to see his sister. If I could choose, huh? It's just like Charlotte said, suddenly trying to consider what to do is pointless. We've always been moving to the next destination, so we haven't spent much time thinking about these kinds of things. We didn't have to either, with us always being on the road and whatnot. Until that moment comes, I think I'll keep journeying on. You mean, still traveling? Yes, cherishing every single moment that I have to look upon this world. Huh. Wait, isn't that what we've always been doing? No, you're, you're not wrong. The banter goes back and forth between the two of you as time slips by. As night falls, you return to your accommodations and end this busy day. The next few days are just as calm. Charlotte comes to find you and conducts the interview in the Spina di Rasula safe house at the Flu Syndra. Navia having finished her business in Poisson, even drops by to take a photo with the two of you. All goes well. Okay. Seems like everything's going okay so far. <sighs> Feels like you'll grow mold if you stay here long enough. <laughs> but it's still better than the Fortress of Meripede, that's for sure. It's not only damp there, but salty too. True, but we get free food. Oh, so the two of you are still here. Wonderful. Hi, Isadora. Oh, you're from the Palais Marmonia, aren't you? Yes, I'm Isadora. Hi. Monsieur Nervilat sent me to look for you two before. Ooh. I heard that afterward you went to the Fortress of Meropede. Uh, so you're under the impression that we might be wanted criminals. <laughs> Not at all. I'm well aware that you're friends of his. Actually, I'm here to pass along a message from him. Let's hear it. Did something happen? Yes, inside the Opera House. Oh, no. The Mari Chausse Phantom has declared the incident a small-scale riot. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? A riot? What happened? Well, that said, I don't personally think it was that serious. No, I don't want to tell us what happened. Lady Farina was watching a performance at the Opera House, and while she was resting during an intermission, some other audience members suddenly started harassing her. No. Are we talking about Lenny, Lynette, Fremine, and Navia harassing her? No. Loudly accusing her of doing nothing about the prophecy crisis. So that's how we trapped her? That's how we quote unquote trapped her? And before she could respond, others started to join in. What? The crowd continued to grow, and protests against the Hydro Archon started to break out. Do we not get to see a scene of this? So people have started to put the blame on Farina. Guess they finally found an outlet for the pressure they've been under due to the prophecy. I agree. People will naturally rely on gods, as is customary. But the moment people feel threatened, gods are also the first to be blamed. So what happened after that? Is Farina okay? Seeing that the situation was spiraling out of control and that further argument was pointless, she claimed that she'd gotten tired of this and left in a hurry. The Marichose Phantom had their hands full maintaining order and did not catch where Lady Farina had gone. Only when things had stabilized did we realize that she had gone missing. Oh, where did she go? So, you mean she's still missing? Where did she go? That's right. The Marichose has dispatched many people to search for her. <sighs> but we don't have any leads yet. Oh, no. Oh, for real? That said, I don't think there's much to worry about. She is a god, after all. Even if she were to fall into the hands of rioters, what could ordinary people do to her? Oh, my God. I understand the situation. Good. 
Ugh. Monsieur Nervilet sent me to tell you about the situation, but he didn't say anything else. Well, let's go see him. Don't worry. This is more than enough to go on. Thanks for keeping us informed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that so? Well, all right then. In that case, you two take care. I'll be heading back to the palais now. Isadora, thank you. Hey, look at them nodding their head. Well, no! Sounds like we should hurry over to Poisson then. They did it again! They did it again! They did it again! They did it again! Didn't inform me of the plan. Didn't tell me what was going on. Ugh. You sure caught on quickly. If we know Farina, she won't try to fix things in this situation. Instead, she'll look for a place to wait out the heat. Yup. Where would she go, though? And, as we also know, she may be loud and dramatic, but she doesn't have a heart of stone. When Nervalet was talking to her in the Palais Mermonia, and she heard about Poisson, she couldn't hide her sadness and remorse. It would be hard for her to ignore being accused by the public today. Paimon thinks Farina's probably taken the opportunity to slip away to Poisson and try to relieve the sense of guilt that she's feeling. So you're saying she went to Poisson? Huh. Well, what do you think? Paimon knows the answer, of course, but Paimon can do the analysis to back it up, too. <laughs> cool, huh? Oh my god, I see becoming a detective's done you some good. Where are your glasses at, though? Looks like those detective novels have, an, have had an effect on you. In that case, there's good not a Lord. moment to lose. Poisson? All right, back off to Passan. Farina! What is going on? Talk to me. Huh? That's Farina, right over there. She really is here all on her own. Shh, stay quiet for now. Let's see if she says anything. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Should I just give up? This is all... Meaningless. Wait a second. Wait a second. Is she thinking about jumping into the primordial seawater? No. What was meant to happen did happen after all. Everyone's dead. I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Give up, Farina. There's no point in holding out. I'm sorry, but what can I even do other than to repeat meaningless apologies over and over? Farina. Uh, who, who's that? Don't worry, Farina. It's just us. Ahem. <laughs> so it is you, blonde traveler from another land. Why, I almost thought you were summoned from that mob of my ignorant subjects. Come to kneel and beg for my forgiveness. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think I'm figuring this out. I think I'm figuring her out a bit here. It seems like she's putting on a mask for everybody when people are in front of her, but when she's by herself, she's like really tormented and sad farina you were crying just now weren't you the tear stains on your face are obvious uh what do you mean tear stains uh, oh, i remember the show at the opera house earlier this morning was so moving i'm still trying to process it see what i mean see what i mean <laughs> Who did that uncivilized rabble think they were? Disturbing my enjoyment of the arts. She like has like a wall up, you know, in front of her. Doesn't want to show her softer side. They even dare to tout their archon. I must teach them a lesson. <laughs> I can just imagine their twisted and frustrated faces once they realize that I'm nowhere to be found. Oh, and I'm sure Nouvellet and those people from the Marish Dose Phantom are freaking out right next to them, too. <laughs> Farina, chill out. Calm down. We're by ourselves, okay? Stop trying to act so tough. Uh, you're actually beyond devastated right now, aren't you? I... Uh, of course not. Hey, there she is. The Hydro Archon's over there. Let's go somewhere. Let's go somewhere. Let's go Quit somewhere. After her. Let's go somewhere. Let's go somewhere. Let's get out of here. Let's go hide somewhere. Uh, Farina, those people seem to be after you. Uh, they are? <laughs> They're just so 
become rabid fans who want to cut the line because they haven't been able to meet me in person, aren't they? No, I don't think that's it. Mm, that's against the rules. I can't let them get their way. I don't think that's the reason. <laughs> Farina just ran off. Where's she gonna go? Quick, we have to catch up with her. All right, let's go. Run, run, run. They're after. I'm surprised they don't have like pitchforks. You know, they're not like, ah, torches and pitchforks. Ah. Did we lose them? Look at this being all sneaky. Look at this being all sneaky. This <laughs> can't be the place, right? Hey, Farina. Farina, Farina, calm down. I, we, you, seriously. There's a good hiding spot over here. Quick, come to Pima before the rest of them catch up to you. Uh, wh what? What is this place? Hurry, they're almost here! Fine, fine. I suppose haste is warranted. Lead the way. Okay, come on. Hustle up, hustle up. On the double. Let's go. Dude, it almost made it seem like she was thinking about jumping into the seawater. Into the primordial water. Like, it got not bad. Pyman's <sighs> exhausted. And that would be really bad. <laughs> Tired. I totally thought they had caught me. Uh, no, I mean, I merely gave in to the sheer enthusiasm they displayed. <laughs> I, Fosalor, am just so popular that no one can deal with me. <laughs> I want more cake, please. <laughs> That's the only reason why they're chasing me down is they're trying to shove cake down my throat. <laughs> this place is not what I'd call soundproof. You might want to lower your voice to stay hidden. Uh, you're right. Yep, that's a good girl. Good girl, good girl. Uh, oh no, uh, now what? Uh, what's happening? Uh, the ground's <sighs> shaking. Is it an earthquake? Oh no, oh no, 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 no. That means the seawater. That means the primordial seawater just went somewhere else. Like it did in Poisson. No. Yeah, a quake of this kind preceded the flooding in Poisson, didn't it? Oh no, oh no, oh no, now where? It can't be. It's happening again. Well, there's no need to worry too much about that. Nevelette's made some emergency plans, so the evacuation should go a lot smoother this time. Mm. Yeah, I hope you're right. This is bad. This is bad. But the people of Poisson, they've already... Yeah, I know. I know. Do I just... Oof. Has Farina finally reached her limit? Now that she's talking about her actual feelings, she's starting to look a far less stiff. You begin to talk amongst yourself as Farina slowly calms down. Good, it's yeah, that's true. what she... I've been investigating the prophecy for hundreds of years. Okay. I once had informants all over to VAT, searching for clues and feeding information back to me. I've tried all kinds of ways, too, to hold back the sea. Anything to keep the coastline from advancing. But all my efforts proved to be futile in the end. Really, the truth has been clear to me for a very long time. Okay, so she was doing things. She just didn't want people to know that she was doing things. Like behind their, I wouldn't say behind their back, but she was doing things in secret. But why? Why would she do stuff in secret? That doesn't make any sense to me. We cannot make an enemy of the divine. <clears throat> no matter what we do, the will of the heavenly principles will have its way. And the prophecy shall be fulfilled. But even then, you still haven't given up, right? <laughs> Give up. I do love the sound of that phrase. It would mean finally coming to terms with fate, but also for me to finally be free. That would also mean that all hope would disappear. Indeed. I've thought about giving up so many times, especially after we almost lost Poisson. Fate is really unreasonable, isn't it? It has no heart and obeys no rules. The prophecy has only just started to come true, and so many people have already lost their lives. But just now, it all became clear to me. 
I still don't have the right to come to terms with fate on behalf of everyone else. As long as the final moment hasn't come, it's still not too late. Don't worry. I... I will keep hope alive for everyone until the very end. Wait, 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 wait. I just realized something. What if Farina has been putting on this, like, act... And like in front, like doing like the opera house thing, like doing the dramas, the 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 whole the whole thing with her just being like the center of attention to keep everyone in Fontaine distracted from the prophecy and like letting them like be happy. Do you know what I mean? Like I feel like she was like putting on a front so the people of Fontaine would continue to remain happy and not stress out about what was going to be happening in the future. That's why she's been acting this whole time like, like that. It's not because of her own self-conceited thing. She's just trying to keep people distracted from what is eventually going to happen so that way they would just be happy and live their best lives the whole time. Well, that's enough for now. I got the impulse to play the stricken maiden. Oh, but good Lord. honestly, considering my rank and station, that wasn't a good fit at all. <laughs> I've been wrong about Farina this whole time. Don't take any of what I just said seriously. How could I possibly let Fontaine fall to the whims of trivial prophecy? Come on! Paimon could have sworn you were actually being honest just now. We're running out of time. We can't just go back to square one like this. I have to get more information out of her. Farina, Farina, you might not have sh you might not have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know where you, what you might be keeping from everyone, your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. Share my burden. Yeah, yeah. That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. A witness? Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. True, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. We're a descender. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? True. If that's the case. There's no time left. Please, Farina, just spit it out. Uh, Tell us. I... <sighs> now what? It's another one. Where? Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes my opening performance. Lenny, you little trickster! You little trickster! You little tricky trick! This whole thing was a setup! I thought, bro! This whole thing was a setup to get Farina into the into the court, into the opera house, so that way she could talk and they the people could hear her. Bro, 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 bro! Ah! I've been wrong about Farina this whole time. Dude, that was a great trap. <laughs> Amazing trap. I would have never thought of that. I would have never thought that would... Uh, now, without further ado, we may proceed to the trial of our God. We got our own trial. Oh, no, man. Like, now, 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 we're now, oh, God. Oh, no. Ah, so this is what it is. Yes, you deserve praise for the effort you took to raise the dramatic stakes. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Do not forget, however, that I am Fosalor, the god of justice, the embodiment of justice itself. Does it not strike you as even the least bit absurd to bring the very concept of justice to trial? 
Well, it looks like that's what we're going to be doing here. May I interpret these words as your refusal to stand trial? In that case, you will have the opportunity to defend your honor through a duel. Bro, no, man. I, I don't. I. Mm, I don't. I. 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 I, I kind of don't. I. I, 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 I she looks terrifying. You. You would draw your blade against a god. Ugh. Well, it looks like it. Ahem. I see. Oh man. It seems like you have made up your mind. This is making me anxious. Wait, what's going on? Paimon can't believe it. She... She just surrendered. She just said, okay. No problem. We'll do the trial thing. Wow, I'm shocked. Hmm. What the heck is going on? Did I just see an Archon surrender to a... A human? Seems like it. Wow. How utterly humiliating. Oh no. Lady Farina, what is the meaning of this? Uh, shh. It would seem that there has been a misunderstanding. To be clear, the raising of both hands is not always an indication of surrender. Then what would you call it? Looking for excuses again, huh? I raised my hands just now to indicate my acceptance of the trial. No duel shall be necessary. I will admit that I've been running away for a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, everyone. I was unable to protect the people of Poisson. It is my duty to stand trial for my crimes. This is gonna go real bad. You are not the only ones to be disappointed in me. I too am exceedingly disappointed in myself. <sighs> But now, it is time for the Hydro Archon to show you her courage and resolve. Let's go. I, Farina, will use this trial to show the world the true meaning of justice. Dude, her voice acting is so good. Dude, she's great. Whoever voice acted Farina, you deserve a raise. This time, I will protect you. Let's go. Applaud and rejoice. One of the most outrageous and fantastical arcs known to the opera Epicles is now unfolding before your eyes. Mark my words, this shall be one of the most exhilarating and brilliant shows ever to grace the stage of Fontaine. The trial of the Hydro Archon, Fosalor, will now begin. Wow, man, she's putting on a show. Yes, I agree. Excited audience member, I agree. Oh, now we're making history. Yeah, overexcited audience member, uh huh. And <laughs> Nuvlet's like groaning. Why does it feel like Farina just took over the whole thing? Like, come on, didn't she just get forced to stand trial for her crimes? Yeah, she wants to put on a show though, but she said she will protect them this time. Also, even though she's still acting super dramatic, she is taking this seriously this time, right? I think so. All right then, who will be my opponent in this trial? Oh yeah. The court asks the prosecutor to please take the stand. Us? You want us to do this? You want us to do? You want us to prosecute an Archon? Really? Us? Thank you, Your Honor. Wow. Is that so? Very well. Then please speak, witness of Tevat, my accuser Ooh. and fated opponent. But we're not from Tevat, so we could be kind of like not biased. Uh, we could be. We could do. Uh, we could be the unbiased thing. We were so close to getting her to tell us the truth and it still turned out like this in the end. Here's the problem, that's the thing. She could have told us. We didn't have to go through the show. She was gonna confide in us anyway and now we done pissed her off. Now she's like, I can't trust you. It's okay though, as long as we can defeat Farina and Kurt in court, we'll still have a chance to figure everything out. 
Dude, I feel like we just, we manipulated her into that. We didn't have to do this. She was gonna tell also, us. please allow me to ask as a final question before the trial begins. Just how much work did you do to force me onto this stage? <sighs> well, we did do a lot of prep after the meeting that day. Yeah. I can go over the tasks assigned to the Spina di Rosula, since they were rather straightforward and easy. Okay. Navia, the president of the Spina di Rosula. Most of the people who participated in the disturbance this morning were my subordinates. They changed into plain clothes and came to the Opera House as regular audience members, waiting for the perfect opportunity to incite insurrection against you. Dude! Bro! The people's resentment against their Archon has been building as more and more of the prophecy is fulfilled. A spark was all we needed to turn smoldering anger into a flame. The plan was planning. Moreover, according to our understanding and analysis of you, when something like that occurred, you would likely flee the scene and head to Poisson by yourself. So, we arranged for a second group to lie in wait there. So, you mean... The ones who scoured the settlement for me were also from the Spina. They did her dirty. And their goal was to force you to step into the giant magic box so you may personally participate in the greatest magic performance in all of Fontanian history. Wow. That's right. That house was a magic box rather than someone's residence. As the super ultimate version of the setup that I used when I first performed at the Opera Epicles, the volume of the box was increased by a whole order of magnitude, and the distance it traversed was the entire gap between Poisson and Arrhenius. Its cargo, of course, was an Archon instead of a human. Dude! My thanks, Farina. Without your help, we could never have pulled off such an extraordinary performance. Uh, you're welcome? Of course, You're this welcome. performance was only made possible with father's support. The House of the Hearth spent a massive amount of labor in Mora to pull this off. Uh, so Arlequina was in on this too? We had to select a location, construct a giant magic box, dig a tunnel, and open up a path through the water. It was a lot of work for all of us. So, in other words... The earthquake that we felt within the giant magic box was just a normal tremor from the transportation of the whole house? Dude, come on! That's right! It wasn't a sign of another disaster to come. Yeah, sorry about that. We deceived you back there. But see, I feel so bad that we deceived her. Like I said, we had gained her trust. She was going to talk to us. She was going to tell us. She was going to tell us everything. We didn't even have to go through any of this. She was going to say everything, and then now we got to go through this. We deceived you. <laughs> then I feel bad. I can guess Nervilette and Cloran's parts. You gathered a crowd, prepared a stage, and made sure that the champion duelist would be immediately ready for a fight. Also that as soon as I appeared on the stage, the trial may commence without a hitch. Am I right? You're right. Yes, that is correct. Mm -hmm. Well, Clorand, I must commend you for your courage. Only the most outstanding champion duelist in all of Fontaine would accept a duel with an Archon without flinching. Thank you. I love her. Marry me, Clorand. Good lord. As for you, traveler. Yes. I suppose your role was to keep me distracted with conversation once you found me in Poisson. Yes. You'd make sure that I didn't notice anything amiss before revealing yourself as my prosecutor once we'd arrived onto the stage. No, you guessed wrong. Oh? My mission was to give you one last chance. We hoped that you'd share your secret with us before the magic box arrived onto the stage. Oh, so we were wanting her to tell us before the magic box thing so we could just be like, no, she told us everything's fine, everybody. But still, I still feel like we deceived her. They just did it too fast. That's all it was. <laughs> Is that so? Then I suppose I must have missed my final chance. <laughs> uh. It's fine. 
it matters not. What's done is done. The stage is already set, so there's no reason to disappoint the audience. Let's see this trial through to the very end. Let's do it. Is Paimon going to put on her glasses again? Yeah, the only thing we can do now is judge the Hydro Archon. Dude, we should not be doing this. Still, I can't help but be a little bothered by that conversation earlier. What did Farina want to say to me right before we arrived on the stage? We don't know yet. Sir Prosecutor, please allow me to pass this along. And we'll never know, I guess. This is a document that Miss Charlotte applied for and received permission to share with you during the trial. According to her, it should speed up the proceedings. Okay. Huh? Charlotte wanted to give us something? Oh, so she's here too. Hey, Charlotte. <laughs> hey, Charlotte. Oh, let Paimon see. Oh, my God. Uh, isn't this the exclusive interview that she did with us before? So she's already finished it, huh? Oh. <gasps> Wait, then that means this document is a perfect timeline of everything that's happened ever since we stepped foot in Fontaine. Okay, okay. So in other words, we can refer to this anthology of evidence every time we want to use something from our journey as evidence for an argument. I guess so. It's a super practical gift. I never would have thought of using it in this Let's way. quickly confirm the information in it. Okay. Just think of it as a refresher, all right? Yes, yes. You defeated the Hydro Archon in the very first duel you took part in at the Opera House. That's one for the history books, all right. What? What did you just say? Yeah, so it's just going she's... through everything that we've gone through. I see, I see. I can't figure it out. I see, I see. The prosecution and the defense are both in position. The trial shall now begin. Let's get it on! <laughs> oh, come on, you nervy lads. There's no need to repeat all the unimportant legal legalese. Just fast forward to the part where the prosecution lays out my offenses. As the defendant and the lead actress of this performance, I still haven't even been informed of my supposed guilt in all of this. Of course, it is only natural for humans to struggle to understand the actions of a god. However, you will need more than that to convict me of a crime. That's true. But my charge here is unrelated to your conduct as an Archon. Zack got paid. Bro, he speaks. And when Traveler speaks, we, we stop talking. Instead, I would like to charge you as a fraud who's never been the Archon in the first place. Wait, what? She's not the Archon? What? Hold on! How does that work? Wait, what was that? Lady Farina's a fraud? Is she? Hey, I came here thinking that we were going to try the Hydro Archon for forsaking her duty, but... Did I hear that right? She's not our Archon at all? If she's not the Archon, who is? Charge accepted. Oh, geez, oh, geez, okay. So, but did Nouvellet know this whole time? Lady Farina, do you plead guilty to the charge? Uh, uh, Lady Farina. I plead not guilty. How can I be guilty? So you're saying you are the Archon. Are you or are you not? There is no way that I, Fosalor, otherwise known as Farina de Fontaine, a member of the Seven and the Regina of all waters, kindreds, peoples, and laws of Fontaine, could be anything other than your true Archon. I mean, she's got that down, Pat. Yeah. Even though Lady Farina can be rather eccentric, isn't it going too far to doubt her very identity? Yeah, I've never questioned her identity either. Me neither. Sure, Lady Farina can be super irresponsible, but but what grounds does that prosecutor have to make such a huge claim? I have cause to believe that common sense will prevail in this case. Many of the members of the audience have known me as the Hydro Archon ever since they were born. There would be no fooling their memory. Oh, I have so many questions right now. I would have never even thought of her not being the Archon. See? <laughs> even the Oratrice has decided to show me its favor. Are 
you sure you want to commit to a charge that will never be upheld? If you wish to drop the case, I can promise you as the God of Justice that you will not have to face trial for making a false accusation. We will treat everything that's happened as a dramatic spectacle and move on with our lives. What do you say to that? I actually kind of like that deal. I'm not gonna lie. I would. I think I would um, maybe take it. Huh. An argument with near impossible odds, huh? We have to not only refute Farina's claims, but also overturn the long-held beliefs of the people. The people only see you as their archon because that's their long-held belief. Well, I tried to give you the chance to surrender. If you must persist, then let me ask. If you believe I'm not the Archon, then what manner of being do you think I am? I don't know. And if I was not the Archon, then how did I manage to live for over 500 years? Who is she? I've got to think carefully. What do we know to be special about Farina? Exactly. The meeting with the knave. You may be a member of another long-lived race, which would allow you to naturally possess an extended lifespan. And second of all, even if that wasn't the case, there could be other ways to extend your life. Such as such as the curse. We, I, yeah, we were told in the last act that she was cursed. So is she cursed to like be immortal? <laughs> Who gave you that idea? Was it the knave? You'd sink so low as to use a harbinger's words against me. Oh my god! It's getting juicy. It doesn't matter who gave us the information. What matters is the veracity of the claim. A curse. I once thought it possible that the aura of an Archon might naturally resemble a type of curse. But in light of this claim, perhaps what I sensed was not your divinity, but a curse after all. Never had sensed it too, huh? So Farina, instead of an Archon, could you just be a cursed human? Lady Farina is actually a human? What? What? Wait, then where is the, where's the, who, where is the actual Hydro Archon? Well, it is true that it's extremely difficult to tell humans and gods apart just by looking at them. It's not impossible. Well, don't start celebrating too early now. Even if I have been carrying a curse like you said, how does that prove that I am merely a human being? Besides, everyone knows that the main difference between a human and a god is the possession of authority. Gods can do what humans cannot. That's why they're worshipped as gods. For centuries, manifestations of my authority have served the nation of Fontaine. One need only to turn their eyes towards the Oratrice Mechanique de Annelise Cardinal in this very opera house, or consider the endemidium that is used in every aspect of life. Okay. Wait, that one trial proved the opposite. Farina actually has no control over the Oratrice at all. Yeah, right? because of child's conviction. You tried to reference the Oratrice, but weren't you as confused as all the rest of us when the Oratrice declared child to be guilty without any proof? Otherwise, you should have come up with a good explanation for that by now. Yeah, we still don't know what that whole deal was. Didn't I make myself clear at the time? The decisions of the gods are naturally difficult for humans to comprehend. There is no need to provide an explanation. Lady Farina, I believe a reminder of your current circumstances is in order. Probably a good idea. While the court is in session, the principles of justice and the law must come before all else. While you are an Archon, you are also first and foremost the defendant in this trial. She's not an Archon according to us though. You will prove yourself unable to defend against the prosecution's charges if you continue to withhold vital information against the rules of the court. So basically, we're just trying to force the information out of her. Instead of her just 
confiding in us and just telling her on her own free will. Now we're trying to force it out of her. I'd be pissed. I'd be pissed. If I was Farina, I would be pissed off. I never thought you'd use that kind of rhetoric against me. That was no trick of rhetoric, Lady Farina. I've Ugh. merely reiterated the rules of the court. Rules Ugh. that all should respect and follow. <laughs> so, you neither knew why Child was declared guilty, nor did you understand the structure and operations of the Oratrice. Instead of having been created by you, the manifestations of authority you mentioned have been made by the real Hydro Archon, haven't they? Which is who? The real Hydro Archon. Well, now you're really losing me. It is true that I did not know why the Oratrice gave out a guilty verdict that day. But the Oratrice handed out that verdict unilaterally, and it has been operating independently ever since it was first created. You can't... You can't argue that just because a divine creation is flawed, that the god behind it must also be no god at all. <sighs> she's still throwing out all kinds yeah, of she is. Seems like she's confident that we won't be able to produce proof that she has no power over the Oratrice. Yeah, sure. We can put the Oratrice aside for now, but then, Miss Farina, could you give us a brief demonstration of your power as an Archon? <gasps> yes, make her show her something. Yes, 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 yes. That's a great, that's a great idea. Make us, make her show us something that she can do, only an Archon can do. My power as an Archon. There are many ordinary citizens in the audience. Great How idea. Can I just carelessly demonstrate the formidable power of an archon? I don't know, make, a, make it like a little bubble appear in your hand. Something simple. If that poses a concern, I'm prepared to extend my protection to the audience. Ooh! Um, you don't need to go that far. She's not going to be able to do it, is she? A brief demonstration of your power over Hydro should be quite harmless. Surely an Archon can at least match the capacities of a human with a vision. I... Uh... Aren't you the Hydro Archon? Or is it that you can't even wield the power of Hydro, much less the authority of a god? Ooh! Indemnidium! Yes! It's all because of Indemnidium! All Archons derive their power from the faith of the people, and I've converted the people's faith in justice into indemnidium. Really? Really, Farina? That's what we're gonna go with? Thus did I give up all of my divine power to provide everyone with energy for their daily lives. Have you ever seen a more magnanimous god? Well, now we can't... I guess we can't say anything back to her if she's given up her powers to help the people of Fontaine. What are we going to say to her now? Isn't that a huge stretch? No, I agree with you, suspicious audience member. Yeah, no matter how generous an Archon can be, how could they give up all their power? Can a god with no power even still be called a god? Ooh, that's a good question, retorting audience member. Mm. Seems like nobody's buying Farina's excuse. Yeah, nobody is. Hey, come now, everyone. Please don't stare at me as if I was a liar. I'm still the same Farina you knew, right? The one that you loved. <laughs> Shouldn't you want to believe in me? You're like seeing through her mask right now. Please, you've got to believe me. If what the prosecutor said is true, she really has committed a grave offense. Yeah. Did she deceive all of us? And all of our parents and grandparents too? And then all of our ancestors? Ever since they were born? And for how long? And for how? She's been doing it for hundreds of years, right? Like hundreds of years. Enough. That's enough. Tell me then. If I'm not the real Hydro Archon, then who is? Great question, because I want to know too. If you have no evidence of another Hydro Archon's existence, nor can you find anyone who can back up their claim to be such, then what grounds have you to say that I'm not actually the real deal? Wow, she came up with yet another argument. Ugh, how can we refute her now? Seems like she really doesn't want to give up. 
Hang on, my, my gears are turning. My gears are my gears are turning in my head a little bit because I have an idea, but I don't want to say. But that can't be. If we can't prove that she isn't the Archon, we can try to prove that she is just a human. And if she's only human. It has been established that all Fontanians can dissolve in water from the primordial sea. Yes. And that means. Yes. Since you insist on claiming to be a god and not a human, then there's a method that you can use right here and now to eliminate all suspicions wait. of you being the latter. Wait, wait, wait! So... You're saying that Archons can't dissolve in the seawater? In the primordial water? But she was ready to jump into the primordial sea water, into the water, earlier when we were talking to her over in Passant. So she, that's kind of saying that she is human. Are we saying that Archons can't be dissolved, even if they're from Fontaine? Miss Navia, please apply to serve as a temporary attorney for the prosecution before addressing the court. Though you act in partnership with the prosecutor, you must still adhere to proper procedure. Ooh, new Vlad just put Navia in her place. Wow. Uh, super sorry, Monsieur Chief Justice. I swear this really will be the last time that I'll speak out of turn. Now. I've brought some seawater from Poisson. As no everyone knows, way. a massive flood struck the area not long ago, taking many lives. No way. Including those of some of my closest friends. So, Miss Farina, would you dare to touch some of the seawater? Well, now she says yes, she touches it. And she, this is like the Salem Witch Trials. This is like the Salem Witch Trials, you know? You drown, like, remember Salem Witch Trials? Like, they, they would take them and they would drown them. They're like, well, if they die, that means that they, they're not a witch. But if they come up out of the water and survive, they are a witch and we're going we're gonna to burn them anyway. You know what I mean? It's like a lose-lose situation. It's like a Salem Witch Trial. If we are to believe that you are indeed the real Hydro Archon, touching the seawater would have no effect on you. All it should do is strengthen your case. But if you don't dare to touch it, then we would have basically proved the reverse. Oh, and I must remind you that after the disaster at Poisson, nobody wants to see any more people dissolve. I do hope you'll act prudently and choose the simpler path of admitting guilt. Well, what if she just touches it anyway? She said she wanted to be free, right? Like, what if this is her way out? Navia from the Spina di Rasula. The Spina has governed Poisson for many years. I guess her suggestion is valid. If Lady Farina is indeed just a human, she's probably Fontanian like all the rest of us. Would she really dare to try? I don't know. Is she? <sighs> is she going to touch it? What is she going to do? Farina, what are you going to do? Uh, Farina? Lady Farina, this test has been unilaterally proposed by the prosecution. As it falls outside the realm of standard court proceedings, you possess the right to decline participation. Then don't participate. <sighs> well, of course he had to tell her that. But refusing to participate is basically the same as a confession of guilt. She's just staring at the water with her She's in a lose-lose. It really does seem like she's quite terrified of it. That could only mean... She's in a lose-lose situation. What's going on? Is she really planning to... Uh, that's not what we thought she would... <sighs> like I said, this could be her way out. Due to the inherent risk of the test, Lady Farina, you may... <clears throat> Is she gonna dissolve? What? Hey! Oh my god, she actually did it! <sighs> Oh, 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 she's gasping. Oh no, this is bad. This is bad. I, I'm fine. Look, look at me, everyone. My hand is still here. I haven't been dissolved. Well, then there you go. Either she's not from Fontaine or she's an Archon. Will you believe me now? I really am your Archon. I'm nothing like a normal human who would fall apart as soon as they touch this water. Really? Was this not the most obvious thing in the world? Miss Siegwing, if you're present, Miss Siegwing, please come forward Ooh. and attend to the defendant. C 
Siegeween. 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 Don't be nervous. It'll just take a few. What is she seconds. doing? Hmm. What is she doing? What What is she doing? That should be enough. What's she doing? Please announce the results of your evaluation to the court, Miss Siegeween. As everyone doubtlessly saw, Miss Farina was displaying symptoms of hyperventilation and flushed skin. These indicate that. She has anxiety. Wouldn't you be anxious too? She's freaking out. I'd be sweating. I'd be. I'd have swamp ass so bad from all the sweat. I'd be freaking out. Doesn't indicate nothing. She was experiencing the adverse effects of exposure to primordial seawater. The extent to which she was affected is the same as other humans when exposed to primordial seawater of a similar concentration. She's freaking out. That's why she's been sweating and flushed. Thank you, Miss Siegeween. Lady Farina, you may return to the defendant's stand. Man, okay. Oh, wait. What did she just say? I didn't get dissolved. Shouldn't that be enough to prove my innocence? Well, apparently not. Well, considering your tendency to run from your problems, we did originally prepare a direct sample of the seawater around Poisson. I feel like Farina's being bullied right now. I feel like she's being bullied really badly. However, after extensive discussion, we exchanged it for a sample that is not concentrated enough to dissolve an actual human. After all, on the off chance that something entirely unexpected might occur, we don't want anyone else to lose their life to the sea. Okay, I see what they did. So they didn't want her to actually dissolve. They just diluted it enough to where she would have some kind of effect to it, but not entirely disappear. Yeah, so out of regard for Farina's life, you secured a low concentration sample and asked the head nurse to serve as an expert witness. I got you, I see. It's a great thing that the direct sample wasn't actually used. Farina could have... I don't, I don't like, I, I just, I really, really don't like the way we're treating Farina here. I don't like it, I don't like it. I feel like we're bullying her, we tricked her, we manipulated her, deceived her, betrayed her. I, I can't believe you. But what's really going on here, Farina can't have known the consequences of touching that water as a human. True, true, because she would have thought she was gonna dissolve. Anyway, this is too unlike how she acts. No, 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 this is too unlike how she usually acts, unless it's actually more important for her to keep up her facade than to save her own life. But hadn't she given up on everything a long time ago? Listen to me, listen to me, everyone. Please don't give me such cold and disdainful looks. What happened just now didn't prove a single thing. Man, I feel horrible. Think about it. How can you conclusively prove that an Archon can't also be affected by the primordial seawater? I don't know. Let's call up, you know, Big Dong Zhang and see, see what happens when he touches it. Also, also, if I was really just a human, why would I dare to just put my hand in that kind of water? True. <laughs> that's true. But maybe she, like I said, she was looking for a way out and thought that that was her way out. Uh, I do not like this. I do not like this. I do not like this. <sighs> Dude. But she said that she was doing research on the side. Like she was trying to, but they don't know that. They don't know that. Like she said she was going behind everybody's back trying to do research for hundreds and hundreds of years or whatever. But they don't know that. All they see is this Ugh. now i feel horrible i don't think anything she says at this point will sway anyone the odds are just too stacked against her now with all the things that have been said paimon doesn't think there's any way left for farina to win do you not feel bad paimon traveler do you not feel bad i do i believe the time for arguments and presentation of evidence has come to an end if there are no objections we will move on to the final judgment. Oh no. 
I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. I refuse. I don't think anything she says at this point will sway her to just stand against her now. Oh, I feel so bad. I feel so bad. I feel so bad. Like we seriously bullied her hardcore. In my capacity as Chief Justice. I shall now render judgment on Farina's misrepresentation of herself as the Archon of Fontaine. As a human who knowingly deceived her fellow citizens, Farina is... Don't even say it, Nuvalet. Guilty. Oh, Farina. Bro, that's it's just so wrong. It's so wrong. Oh, I feel so sad. I just want to hug Farina now. We shall now turn to the oh, oratrice mechanic dude, Denali's my heart, to render bro. the final verdict on the charges. My heart, it hurts for Farina. Please say not guilty. Oh no. Oh no, oh no. According to the judgment of the Oratrice Mechanique Denalise Cardinal, Farina is guilty. <laughs> is it gonna say she's not guilty? Well, what's wrong? What's the Oratrice's verdict? I think it's gonna say that she's not guilty. It can't be. Did the Oratrice just declare Farina to be innocent? I think it did. No, the Oratrice also displays a guilty verdict. So what is she both? Isn't that correct then? However, the exact wording of the verdict is thus. The Hydro Archon. Guilty. But she's not the Archon! It doesn't say Farina! It says the Hydro Archon! Wait a second, wait, wait, wait. So it's the Archon is guilty? But not Farina? To be punished via oh. the death sentence. Who? Oh, Who? Oh. What? Uh, the, the death sentence? That's actually one of the available sentences. I've always thought that it was just a myth. Oh. <laughs> the one and only time the death sentence has been handed out at the court, and it's been given to the very person we've worshipped as the god of justice. What an unexpected twist. But it's not, it's not, it's not, it's the Hydro Archon. It didn't say Farina. It said the Hydro Archon is guilty. We don't know who the Hydro Archon is. Because if we're claiming that Farina is a fraud, she's not the real Archon. It's whoever the real Hydro Archon is, right? Farina's been sentenced to death by the Oratrice? No, that's not what it said. We just wanted to use the trial to show her the seriousness of things, so she tell us the truth. How did things escalate this quickly? That's not what it said, though. That's not what it said. It didn't say Farina. It said the Hydro Archon. And if we're telling, and if we're saying that she's not the Hydro Archon, then it's the actual Hydro Archon, not Farina. This outcome is indeed quite strange. According to Fontaine's current definitions of justice, as well as its recommendations for criminal sentences. Is this sentence really appropriate for the crimes that have been committed? Yeah, even my was not sentenced to Now look what we did. You know the real evil mastermind behind the serial disappearances case. Now look what we did because of our stupid manipulation and our stupid betrayals and our stupid trickery and all of that stuff and blah 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 and betraying Farina and all that stuff. Now she's gonna die because of us, because of us, because of our stupid quote unquote plan and all that crap. And stupid trap and blah blah blah. It's our fault. It's our fault. I blame us. It's our fault. What's more strange is instead of Farina, the Oratrice rendered the judgment on the Hydro Archon. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Indeed. Not only is Farina's sentence overly excessive, the very point of our trial today was also to prove that Farina has never been the Hydro Archon in the first place. But now. The Oratrice seems to have deliberately invoked the title of the Hydro Archon. What does this mean?
Um, excuse me. Oh, Frimine. I may interrupt. <laughs> Frimine walking in all depressed and sad with his voice. Oh my god. Frimine, what's up, bro? Is the trial still going? I don't know what's going on, Frimine. Frimine, oh, you finally made it. I assume this means you've completed your mission? What was he doing? Mm hmm. Any mission father assigns to me will always be top priority. Oh, what does she tell you to do? With some help from the other Fatui, Frimine brings a stone slate. Oh! <gasps> that the first prophecy slate? Where did you find that? Where did you find that? Where did you find that? Huh. So the Nave privately arranged for Frimine to try and find the missing slate. Where did you find that? I looked everywhere and finally found it at the bottom of the sea. It took me a long time to get around some dangerous stretches of water. What? But has the trial already concluded? Then doesn't that mean I've come too late? Oh no. Father will be disappointed in me. Wait, can I see can I see the, the slate again? Don't worry, the mystery hasn't been resolved yet. It's still not too late for you to shine. Thank you for your hard work, Mr. Fremenet. Please allow me to review the record left on the slate. I can't tell what that is. <sighs> that doesn't look like Farina. It almost looked like Zhang Li there for a second. Traveler, I believe that you have already seen the other existing slates. Uh -huh. I'd like you to come here and confirm their contents. Uh-huh. Okay. I don't know. I don't know. This looks like the previous Hydra Archon releasing her divine power, turning the Oceanids into human beings. Wait, what? I believe I've now made sense of the Hydra Archon's crime. It has to do with Fontaine's lost history. Wait, what? just guilty of deceiving her people oh wait no that's farina and we've already proven that she's not the hydro archon right uh so when you say hydro archon do you mean the real hydro archon we've been kind of talking about in truth everything that you've encountered in fontaine up until this point can be traced back to the contents of these stone slates okay i, I hope you explain this to me Nuvalat, because my brain's having a hard time trying to wrap my head around it. However, I'm uncertain as to how much sense they currently make to you. Zero. And associated between the contents of the slates and the events in real life. Okay, let's try to record yes. the contents of the other three stone slates. Paima will do her best to help you remember. I remember. I remember what the other stone slates looks like. It was Freena sitting on her throne. The whole fontaine was flooded. There was her in the middle with the uh, people around her. And then the other one, the last, the people were like praising Celestia, the floating island in the sky. I remember those. Select to check the descriptions of the stone slates. Okay. You can find scenarios related to the stone slates contents in this. All right. As the verification process continues, the fountain water level in the menu... Uh, okay. When you finally finish verifying all the stone slates, the truth behind the prophecy shall be revealed. Okay, okay, okay. The real events related to the prophecies on the prophecy slates. I remember the, the order... The stone slate describes what you just said. Yes. It seems to show the previous Hydra Archon using her divine power, and then the Oceanids turn into humans. Right. Big brain time. Oh, God. Okay, okay. Here we go. Does that mean that... Fontanians are transformed Oceanids? Oh, Paimo wasn't expecting that. But if Oceanids can turn into humans, then perhaps this process can be reversed as well. Right, that's what the one guy was trying to do when... Remember, he was he was the person that was uh, like kidnapping all the women and dissolving them because he was trying to find his lover and trying to turn her back into a human. And that's what the whole research he was doing. Show Celestia floating in the sky and the Hydra Archon and her people worshipping it together. But the heavens still brought judgment down upon them. Right. This must be the point when the Hydra Archon and the Fontanians were branded with their original sin. Does this mean that the original sin and the Hydra Archon sin are the same thing? 
The third slate shows the Hydra Archon sinking into the sea surrounded by many people. Huh. That reminds Paimon, didn't we also watch that happen to someone else? Yeah. Well, the fourth slate is the prophecy the Fontanians have been talking about. People dissolving into the sea, the Hydra Archon crying on her throne, and so on. We didn't believe that such a crazy disaster could happen at first, did we? But after that incident, it was just a question of when and not if. I'm so into this. I'm so into this right now. But the Hydro Archon we'll can dissolve into the primordial sea, but won't cease to exist. Their essence will flow in the seawater, converge, and take the form of an Oceanid. Yeah, yeah, we learned that. The Hydro Archon was sentenced to death in court, shocking everyone present. Hmm. Perhaps this means that her sin was actually Fontaine's original sin. Navia fell into the water inside those ruins, and she nearly dissolved. She was surrounded by the people of Poisson in a court within her consciousness, and was forced to take part in a trial meant to make her stay. Yeah. The eruption of the primordial sea at the fortress of Meripede was the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass no matter what. The stone slate's content can all be verified by recent events. If we combine what we know together, loads of truths should come to light. All right. I'm just, I, I'm just, I, I'm speechless. Like, I, I just don't even know what to say. Like, I'm, I'm completely speechless right now. Like, it's just, I'm so invested in this. I'm so invested in this. But the, but the real Hydro Archon can huh? turn the oceans back oh, into humans, though, right? Now. So that's how you can make sense of it. But nobody knew that. But then it feels like we're going to have to share some truly shocking revelations. Yeah, I think we need to there, Paimon. Let's hear them. The first slate reveals that Fontanians are not real humans. Incredible. Linny, did you hear that? We're... Not real humans. No, you're an Oceanid. All Fontanians were originally created by the late previous Hydro Archon, with Oceanids as their basis. I will never call it Oceanids. It'll always be Oceanids for me. The evidence for that can be found in how only Fontanians could dissolve in primordial seawater, and how all the girls Vache dissolved were also turned into Oceanids. Right. Oh, and according to Navia, when she was about to get dissolved, she also saw everyone gathered around for a trial. All of them in the shape of Oceanids. Indeed. The second slate reveals that the crime of the Hydra Archon was a creation of Fontanians from Oceanids. Yeah, and it follows from the content of the first slate that she probably angered Celestia by creating humans without prior permission. I get it. Okay. And so they had to feel the wrath of Celestia. Oh, mm. then why did the real Hydro Archon do that? Why did the original Hydro Archon do that in the first place? If they knew that Celestia was going to be pissed. That could also explain why the Oratrice judged the Hydro Archon to be guilty. It's to account for that ancient sin. The Hydro Archon's true sin? Was creating us? Yeah! But then how... But I thought... That can't be right, though. Because isn't Celestia, like, all about... Or supposed to be, right? Like, Primordial One, everybody was happy and all that stuff. Like, everybody's happy and joyful. That's why Celestia is not what I think it is. And yet, after many hundreds of years... The Hydro Archon's creations have turned around to try to judge the Archon within the Opera Epicles. <sighs> the twists of history are often the most unexpected of all. I'd say so. As for the third slate, I'm still convinced that it should come after the fourth. Yeah! Isn't the image here just like when Navia fell into the sea? So wouldn't it be trying to show the image of the Hydro Archon also falling into the sea once the prophecy has been fulfilled in the fourth slate? 
The fourth slate depicts the fulfillment of the prophecy as it's already widely known, Gideon, with her sitting on the throne. The people will right. all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Did Paimon get all that right? Yes, Paimon, perfectly. Where's your glasses at? You've made some keen deductions. I must say, given how much you still don't know, it is impressive that you've already managed to connect so many pieces of the truth. However, while you were able to decode all the information on the slates, they've also been etched with an additional layer of hidden information using a different power source. What hidden information? What power source? When we were at the ruins, I tried to decipher the hidden oh, information right. recorded in the slates. But since we only had three slates at the time, I was unable to come to a full conclusion. What hidden info? Now that the slate collection is complete, I shall make another attempt to decipher the narrative recorded within. If everything goes well, we should finally be informed of the unadulterated truth. Okay. What's, what's the truth? Hmm. Hmm. He's growling. Well, did you get it? Oh my god, Paimon! Calm down, don't yell at the man! I believe I should share this truth not only with you, but with all the people of Fontaine as well. I will try to briefly summarize it for you. Okay, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Your hypotheses regarding the origin of Fontanians and the sin of the Hydro Archon were both correct. Okay, Fontanians are Oceanids, and that was their sin. The original Hydro Archon said, got it. In the Fontaine of old, the previous Hydro Archon sensed the yearning of her Oceanid familiars for life on land. Gotcha. The Oceanids were enamored with the beauty and romanticism of human beings, and wishing to have those experiences for themselves, expressed to the Hydro Archon their desire to become of a similar kind. However, even though water as an element is intricately linked with the power of life, the Hydro Archon, as one of the seven, did not possess the authority to create a new form of human life. Not one to give in, she eventually found a way to create permanent humanoid bodies for her familiars by appropriating the power of this planet's primordial sea. She poured primordial seawater into the Oceanid's blood vessels, creating humanoid mimics in the process. No! What? Okay. But if Fontanians were to ever come into direct contact with water from the primordial sea, the power within their bodies would escape these artificial restraints and return to the sea. As a result, their forms would collapse, and they would be reverted to their original forms as Oceanids. I got gotcha. you. Okay, okay. Of course, the Hydro Archon never received permission from the Heavenly Principles to create a new human race. And so the Heavenly Principles got pissed. And thus... The Hydro Archon and all of her creations came to shoulder the original sin of appropriating the power of the Primordial Sea. Mm, 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 mm. That is the true history of how the people of Fontaine first came into being. But what was the punishment? They didn't. They obviously didn't get rid of the humans because there's humans still here. So they must have received some kind of punishment that didn't get rid of the humans. I don't, what did they do? Did before we turned into human beings? Yes, bewildered audience member. That's way too much information for me. I think I'm just going to pretend that I never heard a single thing. Wait, but if that's the truth, we can't let the Hydro Archon be sentenced to death. After all, her only sin was creating us. This really might be too much information for your regular Fontanian. Yeah. But it does answer a lot of our questions. Mind blown. Boom. Alas, your hypothesis regarding the third and fourth stone slates was inaccurate. The slate's respective positions are, in fact, correct. So they are in the right order. What is the third slate supposed to represent, then? A key point of the visual on the third slate is how all the individuals depicted in the water are humans rather than Oceanids. Right, that's what I said. They have not been dissolved, which implies that the water depicted in this slate is not water from the primordial sea. Mm. The nation of Fontaine is the nation of Hydro, as well as the nation of Trials and Justice. Instead of being the literal element, the water in the scene symbolizes judgment and justice. You may also recall Navia's experience, 
When she fell into the sea, her consciousness was surrounded by that of many others who intended to hold a trial to determine her fate. Therefore, the meaning of the third slate is that the people of Fontaine shall try the Hydro Archon at the Court of Justice. What? Wait, did I say that earlier? I feel like I said that earlier. I feel like I said, I feel like, I think I said that. Did I say that earlier? I think I said something like that earlier, didn't I? Didn't I? Didn't I? Was I onto something? I feel like I said, I think, I think I did. Like when we first saw the slates. And I was like, oh, this is her trial. I think, didn't I? I can't remember. It can't be. Yes, it refers to our present situation. Yeah. I think I'm following now. So what you're saying is, even though we decided to put on this trial to avoid fulfilling the prophecy. And we're actually fulfilling the prophecy. I said that earlier too. I said, we're actually fulfilling the prophecy. We're trying to stop the prophecy from happening, but we're actually helping the prophecy. No one wants to listen to me. No one ever listens to me. No one ever listens to PB. In truth, everything we've done has happened exactly as the prophecy foretold. That's what I said. So now it seems we're the ones making sure it comes true. It's exactly what I said. Well, what should we do? I don't know. It feels like there's no way out of this. Well, huh. no matter what, the prophecy will be fulfilled. Is this what it feels like to be a prisoner of fate? I said it earlier. I said it earlier. It feels like we're trying to stop it, but we're actually helping it along. If that's the case, does that mean the scene in the fourth slate will also be fulfilled soon? Sounds like it. Traveler, I would like to point out another small fallacy in your deductions. W what's that? Are you, why are you telling me that I'm wrong? Right to my face. Pull me off in private. private. Don't embarrass me in front of friends. About the fourth slate. You probably thought that the eruption of primordial seawater beneath the fortress of Meripede served as the surest sign that the prophecy was about to come to pass, yes? Yeah. However, I believe that rather than being a sure sign, that eruption could in fact only be a small warning of something far worse to come. Oh no. As for the root cause of the catastrophe, I believe you've already encountered it once before. I have? What? When? Where? Ow! This so was the true source of the catastrophe. This eruption was just a small warning of the things to come. We must find the root cause of the disaster. You saw a child floating in the sea as a dream, as well as an incredibly massive whale. It was both dream and reality. Where is this whale? Why is it there? Why is child there? How did he end up in there? About a true culprit, that could only be that thing inside the primordial sea, right? So we're saying this big, giant, big ass whale in the primordial sea is what's causing all this? Is it just growing big and like the the water needs to be displaced somewhere? The truth, the original sin, the trial, and the root cause of the disaster. The whale. What's child doing in there with it? Oh, cutscene. Oh, oh, everybody haul ass. Get out of here. Everybody run. Everybody run. I don't know what's going on, but get out. Move, move, move. Move it. What are you? You're, are you the whale? They're dead. Bro, oh, it's so tangly a child's back! What is going on?
Not even a see you later. Not even a goodbye. Not even like, hey guys, I gotta go take care of something else. Nothing. Zippity doodah. The opera house. <gasps> Wait, was that the huge whale you saw in your dream? He just showed up like a badass. He just shows up out of nowhere. He's like, boom, boom, boom. Does all this stuff. Looks at us. Doesn't even give us a wave. Doesn't even give us a wave. Doesn't even say a word. Doesn't say nothing. Just poof, back. Gone. Again. What was that? Who was that? Or, is that the whale that we saw in the dream? Is that the whale? I, there's so much. That's right. I'd wager that it's also the one that child saw when he was young. So we've met it at last. I understand very well why it is chosen to make an appearance here. It's like, a, it's, like a, it's like a peeing contest or something. Like, one trying to be more badass than the other. That whale does not belong to Tevat. It is a monster that has traversed the stars, weeping all the while. It has been greedily consuming the energy from the planet's primordial sea, using it to grow. That is the main cause for the rising sea levels. And once it has finished consuming all of the energy contained within the sea, its next step will be... Maybe there's one, more than one. Maybe there's more than one. Maybe that's why he went back down there. Maybe that's why he did this. Maybe that's why he did like the whole thumbs down thing. Because he's like, hey, I gotta go back down because there's a lot more going on down there, okay? You said that when the Hydro Archon first created Fontanians out of Oceanids, she filled their blood vessels with primordial seawater. Precisely. That whale finds the blood of Fontanians nigh impossible to resist. Therefore, when it left the Primordial Sea, it decided to make its next stop a packed opera house full of food. Food in the form of Fontanians. And now there's a, there's a big giant hole in the middle of the opera house. What are we going to do about this? Uh, we just barely managed to push it back, right? In that case, won't it come back to target the people again, once it's managed to recover its strength? That is correct. Indeed, it is more accurate to say that we should thank that Harbinger for buying us some time. Without him, the whale would have likely come onto land far sooner. From the way he looked, he must have been fighting the creature for quite a long time. Yeah, he looked exhausted. He looked completely exhausted. That battle maniac. We've always known that he had a special connection with that whale, but we definitely didn't expect it to help us out like this. Right? Anyway, now that Come we out of know nowhere. that this whale is the actual cause of the disaster recorded in the prophecy, all we need to do to stop the prophecy would be to find a way to beat it up, right? Sure. It is too late. What do you mean? It had already absorbed too much of the primordial sea's energy before we could notice it. At this point... It has become practically integrated with the sea itself. Okay. Even if the entirety of Tevat were to be destroyed, it could still survive and swim off towards some other world. That... that's not something I will accept. Well, what are we gonna do? What are we, what are we gonna do about this? We've already done everything we can, and we even found the true culprit. We've come so far. You can't just tell me that the last hurdle is some impossible foe. That's just not fair. Final boss. Indeed. That's not how a grand performance should end. I'll fight it to the end. No matter what. All right, let's go. So the prophecy will be fulfilled no matter what, huh? Seems like it. I mean, what else are we going to do? Period, period, period. The prophecy. Yes. What has been prophesized will be fulfilled. You may view such things as the history of the future. Right. That's what that's what Mage N said, right? After everything is still turned out like this, we couldn't fight against fate. Wait, but if all this is about fate, just as prophecies are usually only the future as seen from the perspectives of the gods, could things be happening in hidden corners where the gods' gaze does not fall? So are you saying that the primordial sea that the whale comes from is a place that the gods cannot see? Ultimately, fate shall serve as your only guide, no matter what will happen in Tevat's future. All you need to do is to play your part. Why does it have to be so stressful, though? Anxiety-inducing. 
Could it be that even if the prophecy was fulfilled, there will still be a way to save everyone? How, you tell me how. Did I miss something? What did we miss? Wait, I forgot about Farina. What was that she wanted to say to me at that last moment? The giant making, I wish we would have just waited. All we had to do is wait a couple more minutes before we did the little abracadabra thing and we would have known. But no, we had to bully her, manipulate her, betray her, treat her like garbage. I hated that so much. I loved it, but I hated it that we had to be that way. You know what I mean? What is her real secret? Another cutscene. What's happening with the oratories? I believe it is preparing to carry out the death sentence. On who? On who, though? It can't be on Farina. She's not the Archon. Farina! No, I still need answers. <laughs> just happened you ah 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 is that the original hydro archon oh wow she's gorgeous this has to be the real archon right <laughs> it looks exactly like, dude this outfit what is this sorry that shocked expression on your face is just too amusing i couldn't help myself you are not farina who are you ah the sweet sound of bewilderment marvelous a sure sign that my attempt to deceive everyone was a resounding success. It's Fossilor! But to answer your question, I am Fossilor. You know, the god. How come you don't sound like, I Fossilor? You know what I mean? What? Deceive everyone was what? Fossilor, why did you deceive us? Oh, that wasn't my goal, of course. Goodness, no. But I had to fool everyone else, too, if I was to stand any chance of deceiving the heavenly principles. What? Why? Why? Ooh. Deceiving the heavenly principles? It's all because of that pernicious prophecy. Dreadful, wasn't it? Everyone doomed to dissolve. Fontaine condemned to be flooded. One was not amused. In fact, one was positively bemused when that problem was thrust upon me by my dearest predecessor. That's the former Hydro Archon Egeria for the uninitiated. Mm -hmm. It hardly gets more disastrous than a preordained national catastrophe. Now does it? She knew full well that the prophecy would surely come to pass. And as one of the seven, she also knew full well that one defies the heavenly principles at one's peril. So yes, as you have no doubt surmised, it was a rather impossible situation that I found myself in. I spent a terribly long time mulling it over, alone on the ocean floor. And I was almost growing barnacles by the time I finally realized there was only one possible solution to this confounding conundrum. I had to outwit the heavenly principles, allow the prophecy to be fulfilled, ostensibly at least, while saving everyone at the same time. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know. I can only assume that's why Egeria chose me as her successor. 
I'm... I... 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 Oh, I oh. Although, looking back now, it was hardly the inheritance one dreams of. Between the task of saving the nation, the quotidian duties of the Hydro Archon, and not to mention the original sin of creating a new race of humans, I dare say she left me quite a colossal mess to clean up. Yeah, I'd say so. <sighs> but one can only play the hand one is dealt. I did not choose this, any more than I chose to be one of her Oceanid familiars. So you were also once one of the Oceanids, transformed into a human by Egeria's hand? Yes, I was. I always dreamed of becoming human. And I still do, even now. In my eyes, to be human is to be part of the greatest opera ever known. After becoming a god, I separated my divinity from my body and spirit, leaving behind only a self that was as naive and bewildered as my past self on her first day as a human being. The me you see before you now is that divinity. And the human counterpart I left behind, I named Farina. She could feel joy, sorrow, and everything in between. She could be as vain and conceited, or as meek and vulnerable as she wished. Her strengths were of a kind only a human could possess, as were her shortcomings. But in my eyes, Farina's humanity was what made her perfect. She was perfectly human in every way. The person I always wanted to be. Anyway, so then I cursed her. Oh. Oh, this is all your fault. I can't, I can't. All part of the plan, of course. The plan to deceive the heavenly principles. Hmm. But why would you want to deceive the heavenly principles, though? Do you still remember the final scene of the prophecy? The Hydra Archon, alone, weeping on her throne. In order that the prophecy might appear fulfilled, I invited Farina to be an actress to play the part of the Hydro Archon in the prophecy. Under the curse I placed on her, so long as I, Fosalor's divinity, continued to exist, she could not die. But nor was she free to live her life in the pursuit of happiness. Oh, I feel terrible. Instead, she was forced to take the stage in the Opera House, to embrace the role of leading lady, to forever play the part of the god from the prophecy, all to create a deceitful appearance of that prophecy coming to pass. I suppose now you probably understand why your court is called the Opera Epicles. So Farina was just being used the entire time. Oh my god, poor Farina. Ugh. Ah! But Farina is only human, isn't she? Even though she has had a long life, her mind is no stronger than that of any other ordinary human being. I cannot begin to fathom what she has had to endure. It must have been torture for her. Oh my god, and we treated her so badly. So badly. It has indeed. And although she is, in a sense, me in human form, I most definitely owe her an apology for it. It's been 500 years. And all along, she's been playing her part in the most unimaginably long, unbearably lonely, 
and agonizingly painful opera of all time. Oh my god! <sighs> Farina, I'm sorry. I came into contact with Farina's tears. If I remember correctly, tears often contain a being's strongest emotions. Dude, oh no, oh no. With sufficiently strong hydrosensitivity, I can form an emotional connection just like I did with the Oceanid at the Fountain of Lucene. Wait, could this be Farina's inner world? Farina, what is she doing on stage? Wait a moment, that's prob that probably isn't Farina. That's likely a reflection of her inner self. If I can directly speak to that self, I might be able to get easily get what I wanted to know. I came here for answers. Either way, this opportunity is not to be missed. Let me try talking to her. Let's go have a chat with Farina. Quote unquote Farina. Uh, I don't want to talk to Farina. I don't, don't want to talk to Farina. And you can't make me. You can't make me talk to Farina. I don't want to talk to Farina. You can't make me. Can I at least like apologize to her? Dude, I cannot believe that. Oh, who permitted you to come onto the stage? Now, I understand your admiration for my august self, but I must ask you to keep to the rules. Come on, it's me. Uh, Farina, do you not know who we are? All right, all right. It is not my intent to reprimand you. Don't look there at me, don't no look at me. There is no need to state your name. Just be off with you. Do not distract me from my performance. I got distracted right there. The, the thing that said, don't look at me, don't look at me. What is that? But I don't see an audience here. <laughs> oh, do not jest. Can you not feel it? Wait, is it? Oh, I think I get it. So this is her putting on a front, but this is her actual real thoughts that she's thinking. I see what it's doing. I am Fosalor. The eyes of countless Fontanians are upon me. I must, at all times, display the utmost elegance and nobility. I get it. Something's off. There's no getting through to her. Even in her heart of hearts, she's still playing the role of the Hydro Archon. What sort of resolve must she have that even her inner self and subconscious would have ha would have such an impenetrable defense? I have to find a way. How? Yeah, it's, it's like her inner thoughts. Dear like her audience. The performance is experiencing a technical difficulty. No, but what? Will you not? The guards shall resolve it. Seriously? That went down. Fine. <clears throat> One down. Hey, what gives? The audience is still watching me, you know. Chains, guards? shackles, chains. Wait, where are the guards? So we're basically guards? breaking Farina free, is what we're doing. Get out of the gate, get out of the gate, get out of the gate, get out of here. Two down, one to go. What else? Shackles, chains, what's the next one? Oh, not gonna be another one. That's all, the spotlights are turned off and Farina's heart, they must have symbolized the eyes of the people on her. Speaking of which, I think I just received some sort of signal. Was that her true voice? A ticket? When did that end up here? A ticket to what? Where are we going? Okay. Either way, it looks like the show is about to begin. In that case, show me how you truly feel, Farina. I was not kind to her. I, I thought she was crazy. I, I continually called her a psychopath. <laughs> uh, from the beginning, and now I just feel terrible. Scene one, before a mirror, Farina. Do I... No, I don't push nothing. Okay. I wasn't sure. Are we Farina? Oh, dude, this is crazy. Crazy. Farina. Farina. Huh? Who's that? Who's calling me? 
where are you? Be not nervous. Be not afraid. I am before you. Oh, Salor. Wait a moment. You're mirror me? How can this be? Hmm. <laughs> mirror you, huh? You know what? That's not bad. Let's go with that. Mirror me. What do you wish to say? The prophecy. Have you heard of it? Yes. What prophecy? Oh, wait. I know. I think. I don't know why, but it's in my head somehow. The people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only the Hydro Archon will remain, weeping on her throne. Only then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. Oh, <laughs> very good. You know it well. What's going on? I can't seem to remember anything clearly. The only thing I know for sure is this prophecy. Will it really come to pass? <laughs> yes, it will. And that is why I've come to you. Disaster will come to Fontaine sooner or later. Things will develop just as the prophecy declared. There is no escaping it. You used her! You used her! Oh, dude, for the past 500 years you've used her. Ugh. But doesn't that mean everyone will die? I'm a Fontanian just like them. Will I dissolve too? <laughs> oh, don't worry. Magical meetings exist in this world precisely to give people a chance to turn things around. It is the reason why you met me today. I will tell you how to save everyone, but you may have to suffer somewhat. Somewhat? Somewhat? Well, you gotta just suffer a little bit. <laughs> Seriously? Oh, oh, so there's still hope after all. Goodness, you frightened me. You spoke so much and with so much certainty. As for the suffering, well, I will admit that the first thing that came to mind was, why do I have to be the one to suffer? Good question. But if the prophecy will come true, I'll also die anyway, right? So if I've already met you as my magical meeting in this world, if there were scales with all the people of Fontaine on one side and my pain on the other, is it not obvious where the scales should tilt? <laughs> you truly are the perfect human. My ideal. I suppose this would also be the justice that belongs to you. Huh? Don't worry, it's nothing. Listen well. Fontaine has just lost its Hydro Archon. I need you to play a role. That of the new Archon. Play as... a god? Yeah! Yup! You got used! That's right. You must begin a never-ending masquerade. You must never let anyone suspect your identity. If you can keep it up, then I shall have my way of defying this prophecy. But should your identity be revealed, then all hope will be lost. Dude, it's all our fault. This is all our fault. This is all our fault. This is all our fault because we put Farina on trial because we tricked her, betrayed her, manipulated her. Bro. But how will I do this? A human assuming the role of a god without being exposed. Don't worry. What you must do is not to turn yourself into a real god. You simply need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Being a human yourself, 
I'm sure you already know what such an entity would be like. Remember, your true challenge will not be pursuing divinity, but contending against humanity. Oh, man. Um, I'm still not sure I understand, but I'll try. I'll try to do this. So she put on a front to be Fossilors like crazy, like insanely crazy, just to make sure the prophecy didn't get fulfilled. So she was actually protecting the people of Fontaine the entire time. But we didn't know because she couldn't tell. She couldn't reveal who she really was. So she was just hardcore acting it up, hamming it up. <sighs> oh, man. So how long am I going to have to play this role? 500 years, apparently. To accomplish this mission, you will have to stay on the stage for many, many years. You will endure and not grow old until your task ends. But I promise you, all will eventually end in a magnificent and dramatic trial, and everyone will be saved. Everybody will be saved. A trial. Huh. How exciting. I'll be looking forward to it. Dude, a session speech, a session. I can't even say that word, a session. <sighs> the Maison Cardinalise has announced my accession, but this is my first time facing the people. What should I say to most appear like a god? To be honest, I still don't know. Perhaps I should first try to act natural. Some of the courage there, Farina. Ahem. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the Opera Epicles. So is this like her first time like talking to the people of Fontaine as quote unquote the Hydro Archon? I'm assuming. I'm sure you've all heard about how I have taken on the role of Hydro Archon. <laughs> Indeed, yep. I am Farina de Fontaine, your new Archon. Appear earnest. In truth, I know little about becoming a nation's new god, but it will be my honor to guide you all. And the whole time she's not. As the god Fosalor, the god of justice, I shall do all within my power to lead you into an age of fairness and justice. Close politely. Once again, Thank you all for coming. If you should have any questions or suggestions, please send them to the Maison Cardinalise. The future of Fontaine will require us to work together after all. Dude. This should do it. Good job, you did a great job for your first go round. I thought I might stammer, but thankfully, I was able to convey my thoughts just fine. Okay, and next. That's the new Hydro Archon. Oh no. Is this some kind of joke by the Maison? I would have thought that a being that surpasses humanity would be a bit more assertive. Oh. <gasps> hey, did you hear that? She even told us to send her suggestions there at the end. Shouldn't gods be all powerful? She's being so modest. What's the difference between her and an ordinary person then? If you ask me, Perhaps the succession didn't actually happen. She might just be a maison back puppet. Wait, what's going on? Why is everyone suspecting me of being a fake? Oh, this is bad. If I get exposed here, there'll be no saving the people from the prophecy. So then she put on this persona of like, oh, I'm a slur. Oh my God, I can't believe I treated her the way that I did. Right. Uh. Mir me said that I just need to play the role of a god as humans imagine them to be. Calm down, Farina. Think. Think. What do the people want? How would they imagine a god to speak and act? Assertive, with a strong sense of presence. One who can dispel all doubt. That is the character I'm fated to play. 
So then she like puts on this persona of, oh, oh man. <laughs> ones such as you are deserving of my rule so she puts on this crazy act now i was wondering if some weak puppet were to one day come on to the stage and claim ownership of this opera house would the children of fontaine follow them <laughs> well it seems that you would all see right through them Having passed my test, you are qualified to witness wondrous trials alongside my august self here in this opera house. You may consider my previous act a door gift of sorts. I thought it was a debut that suited the atmosphere. Now then, let us be reintroduced. I, Fossilor, love cake, so make sure you bring me one every single day. Ah, uh, so that was just a performance. How could I have forgotten that we were inside an opera house? Her personality? It's quite shocking, to be honest, but I suppose it's a better look than before. Such a fascinating and bold deity. How wonderful. Our future may yet be bright after all. Do I think the fake one is real, and the real one's actually the fake one, or whatever? It seems I've turned them around. Best follow this flow and restart my accession speech. Um, resolutely with conviction. My dear people, whether you acknowledge me or not, whether you trust me or nay, I say to you, keep faith in your ardor for justice. There she goes. We have heard it said that this nation's sins can no longer be washed away. Well, I say that justice is most fragrant when it blooms amid sin. Turn up the drama there, the Marina. The scales of justice should not weigh heavy in the hands of its god. On one side, it must carry fairness and justice. <laughs> and on the other, praise and applause. <laughs> May law be the prayer on our lips. May judgment be our worship. Let us light the fires and drink to the future of Fontaine. Man, she's really going ham in the speech emphatically. Let's go. There is no trouble in this world that justice cannot solve. All that is needed is for you, my people, to believe in it, heart and soul. So long as I, the Archon Fossilor, stand within the Opera Epicles, so long as I stand before the oratrice, I shall even judge the gods of this world. Man, let's go, Farina. Dude, but that's actually not how she really feels on the inside. We gotta keep that in mind. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Dude. This is craziness. Opera House Farina, scene three. Her story's insane. Her story's insane. What are we doing here? Lady Farina, here are today's case reports, as well as a summary of the follow-up for your perusal. <sighs> Come now. Was I not just at the Opera House in person? Leave these kinds of things to Nouvellet. Besides, none of these trials were the one that I'm looking forward to the most. Um, if I may be so impertinent, what kind of trial are you truly looking forward to? Yeah, what are you looking forward to there, Farina? A magnificent, dramatic, and wondrous trial. Oh, she's talking about her own. A trial to end all things. <sighs> How could you hope to understand? So she was just at this point, she's just like fed up. Like she, it sounds like she's just like, I need this trial on me to just hurry up and get here because I am tired, exhausted of being this way. That's what it sounds like. That's true. I fear I lack the ability to grasp your divine thought, Lady Archon. Mm. No need for fright. And do not take what I said before too seriously. <laughs> Go now. Do your duties. The trial I await. It will come one day. 
she was ready for that trial. Lady Farina, uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you for agreeing to see me. No Who's this? need to thank me. Or rather, thank your own sense of perseverance instead. Long have you stood in line to meet me, have you not? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid that's just an inevitable consequence of my divine charm. <laughs> All right. Deuteria, is it? How is your son's illness? Uh, you remembered me, and you knew of my family, too. Uh, he is doing much better now. In fact, he is far more of an ardent believer than I. He was the one who forced me to seek an audience with you, and to bring your words back to him. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh good. Very good. If this should happen again in the future, please do not hesitate to come and tell me. Going down to citizens' homes every so often, while not usual practice, should serve as a fine change of pace. Oh, you're such a gentle and wise god. Thank you once again, on behalf of my son. Interesting! Uh, Lady Farina, here are the latest hydrological reports. As for the specific parameters you asked to take note of, I'm afraid things still don't look good. I see. It's as I thought then. As your god, I did already expect this, but I wanted to see how far your human wisdom would allow you to analyze it. All manner of signs indicate that the prophecy will still come to pass. Forget it. That's not something you need to worry about right now. Uh, well, as I understand it, the Fontaine Research Institute is also trying to find a way to counter the rising water levels. Really? Have they found anything? I'm afraid that they haven't found any effective solution thus far. <clears throat> oh, is that so? Well, no wonder. <clears throat> this issue has reached the realm of the gods after all. Still, their spirit is praiseworthy. Wow, man. It's just showing like her process or her thought process throughout these years of what's going on with this prophecy and all this thing. It's crazy. It's crazy. The day is finally over. I haven't had a moment to breathe this whole time, but it's good to see that everything's getting on track. Quote unquote on track. No longer any voices of suspicion. Maybe this is fine. I just need to keep going. And everyone will be saved. Dude! All right, Farina, don't think too hard about this. You need rest. Tomorrow's a new day. Okay, I want to go back. I want to go back in time and apologize to Farina. Can I do that? Am I allowed? I feel like I need to. I need to go back in time and apologize to Lady Farina. Farina. Like, we are the geez, new trial reports dude. for the latest cases, as well as a summary of the follow-up. There'll be no need for that. I've seen them already. There's no need to go back over scenes I've witnessed in person before. <laughs> Lady Farina, I I've waited so, so long for this chance to see you in this manner. Indeed, my dear loyal citizen. This joyous moment is an honor for us both. Lady Farina, we're detecting significant hydrological she's anomalies just, in your poisson. She's just doing the same thing over and over and over again. Over and over and over again. Understood. We're in scene four right now. Right? Keep me informed should anything come up at the Institute. It's just <sighs> the same thing I for her. Don't think I let anything slip today. I must show the people that there is nothing to worry about. I just don't know when these days will end. You got 500 years of this. I feel utterly exhausted. Best to rest early today, too. She got 500 years of this. Dude, that's crazy. Where are we at? Scene five, Opera House, Farina. Okay, we're in scene number five. 
It's a really sad story. It's like, yep, same thing. Having to put on the front, couldn't show anybody who she really was the entire time. She couldn't, she couldn't even talk to Nouvellat. She couldn't even tell anybody, nobody, who she really was. Lady Scene 18,235. Is that what that said? Like Jesus. Being able to speak with you up close like yeah, this. it's crazy. It's crazy. Scene, yeah, whatever it was, 182,000 some odd. Yeah, yeah. That's nuts. I've heard that the first member of our family who was honored to receive an audience with you was Madame Dioteria almost 20 generations ago. <laughs> And what a fine family yours is indeed. It brings me great joy to meet such a faithful believer. A descendant of a line most ardent. Dude, that voice right there that, that came out of her. Bro, that's heartbreaking, man. You can tell she's just over it. You can tell she's just over it. <laughs> but surely you exaggerate, Lady Farina. Um, my lady? Hmm? What is it, good citizen? Oh, are, are you crying? Oh, poor Farina. She's so, oh, man. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> oh, really now? I didn't even notice. This must be the overflow of hydro from my person. Well... Can't quite help being the god whose dominion is the waters, can I? Uh, no wonder, no wonder. A manifestation of your power, then. Oh, Archon, I am honored to have witnessed it. Honored indeed. Dude, I feel so bad. <laughs> Can we hug her? Can we hug her, please, please? So interminable. <laughs> She can't tell anybody. So lonely. Just how much longer? She can't tell anyone. That's the sad thing. She can't have actual real friends because it's not really her. It's uh, she couldn't even be her real self. That's that's the thing. She could not even be her real self or everybody in Fontaine dies. That's basically what Fosalores told her. She was like, you cannot be your real self. You have to pretend to be something else for this long. If you don't, everybody in Fontaine dies. Can you imagine the amount of pressure that is? That's crazy. This is the line from the fountain, the little whispery line. It was Farina the whole time. Hundreds of years must have passed by now. Perhaps the show must go on for hundreds more. Dude, that is a crap ton of pressure. I never imagined that it would hurt so much. <laughs> oh, you just have to go through a tiny bit of suffering. That's all. That's what Fosalures told you, right? A tiny bit of suffering. Can I, can we, can we like drop kick Fosalures in the face? For putting her through this, is that okay? Reached my limit. No. Perhaps I reached it long ago. Today I didn't even notice my own tears. I want to tell someone, anyone, about this. But would that not destroy all I've done so far? I've conducted so many investigations across the centuries, but there's not even a sliver of hope that we might break the prophecy. She just wanted all this to end. All I can do is keep heart. I must maintain this act. And it's the only way to save Fontaine. Please. Mirror me. You have to succeed. And Fosalor is taking their sweet time. Sweet, sweet time. 
Scene 182,376 of our house, Farina and us. Is this her trial? Or somebody's trial or something? Farina, you don't have to shoulder this burden alone. Although I don't know what you might be keeping from everyone. Yep. Your people are more than willing to share your burden with you. This is where we like tricked her. That's my voice. Is this the scene from when we were in that giant magic box? And she was going to tell us. She was going to tell us. This is great. I didn't think that this scene would replay in her inner world. Surely I'll find out what she wanted to tell me this time. Share my burden. That's impossible. It was fated right from the start that this would be my duty alone. But even if your burden doesn't need to be shared, you can still choose to confide in someone. Just share it with me. I'm what you'd call a witness. A witness? Huh. Yes. I've heard that you came to Tevat from beyond the stars, yes. In other words, you never belonged here. Yep, that's right. And if Tevat is, in its entirety, a show on a stage, then you're just a spectator, aren't you? <sighs> If that's the case, he's right. I could confide in him, couldn't I? You can, you can. But if things don't play out as expected, the people of Fontaine will be the ones to pay the price. Now see, that's true, that's true. We were trying to force her into telling us, uh, but we didn't know, we didn't know, we didn't know. That's why she was like so adamant not saying anything, even during a trial, because she was trying to protect the people of Fontaine. No. The whole time. You shouldn't be selfish. The whole time. But what if, what if it's really all right? Farina, you've worked so hard for so, so long. Surely it would be okay to put yourself first for once. Just this once. Is it such an outrageous thing to do anyway? To find someone in whom you can confide your frustrations and sorrows? Surely it could not hurt. If you let this opportunity slip through your fingers, it might never come by again. Think about it long and hard. But then we showed up in the opera house. Poof, abracadabra. Right in this moment, they couldn't have waited two more minutes. Yes, yes, dot, dot, dot. No, I have nothing to say. I am Farina, the Archon of Fontaine. Everything will surely get better. All you need to do, dear spectator, is to witness my performance until the curtains fall. She still wouldn't. She still wouldn't because she was afraid. She still would have been because she was afraid. But now you know. But now you know why. The entire time she was just trying to make sure the people of Fontaine were safe. That's craziness. Fine. Craziness. Is she even? She, dude. I'm surprised she didn't so crack. Farina doesn't know the truth. You've never once let her in on the full plan. <sighs> yes, it had to be done. To deceive the heavenly principles, you must first deceive yourself. She did very well. If she had let her resolve falter even once in these five centuries. Fontaine would have been doomed to the most tragic fate. It seems that trusting humanity was the right decision after all. I believe that I understand how your deception works, but that is only half the truth, is it not? How would you build on this foundation to save the people of Fontaine? That is the most important thing. Ah, good, good. Of course, the Udex of Fontaine has pinpointed the crux of the issue. I'm sure you've long sensed that the Oratrice is no simple machine, yes? Well, it's definitely not a simple machine. 
I've always suspected that it had its own consciousness. And Linny did mention that he heard a human voice within the core chamber. It now seems that that person was you, hidden within the machine all along. Am I right? And then I became one with the Oratrees, taking Fontaine's Gnosis with me. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? So Fossilors was uh, running the Oratrees the whole time. Alas, your understanding of this device still lacks sufficient depth. In truth, it is no enactor of justice. It is, in fact, a device created to kill the god of justice. And you're talking about Farina. Oh, man. I beg your pardon? Oh, you have it. And to be more precise, not only will the Oratrice take down the God of Justice, it will also take down the Divine Throne upon which she has been placed. <laughs> I mean... Did you think I would be the sort to enjoy peaceful repose while Farina suffered? My work over these last 500 years has been to constantly accumulate indemnidium within the oratories. But really, some have already discovered that only a small fraction of the energy generated by the device was ever used to provide power to Fontaine. The vast majority has been had to be accumulated to enact this death sentence. It was all a part of your plan then, both the trial and the sentence. Right, Nuvlet, yeah. Indeed. This power, accrued over five centuries, could have sustained Fontanians for millennia had it only been used for that purpose. Almost all of it has now been stored within the oratories. But only power of this magnitude could hope to destroy the Hydro Archon's divine throne, shaking the rules established by Celestia and breaking through the institution that is the Seven. Bro! So the Oratrice's call for death was for neither Farina nor Fosalor, but for the Hydro Archon. The destruction of that divine throne. If I do not misunderstand your intent, you must be. Returning what's rightfully yours to you, of course. In other words, this was all done to return the authority of the Hydro Archon to the Hydro Dragon of this planet. Seriously? Because that's where the Archons got their power from, was from the dragons, from the Sovereign Seven. But that would mean that would mean Farina wouldn't never wouldn't exist anymore. No, oh, what? Getting sad again, are we? The authority of the ancient dragons shall soon be yours once more, O oh, Hydro Dragon Sovereign. And this is the face you make. <laughs> All you've done throughout the years is just so you can sacrifice yourself at the very end. I've never quite seen it that way, you know. Even now, I'm quite pleased at how well my deception worked. Hydro Dragon, Hydro Dragon, don't cry. Dude, we can't be doing this, man. We cannot be doing this. I must say, had it been within my rights, I would have loved to judge the heavenly principles themselves. 
Were they not guilty of essentially the same crime? Egeria stole the power of the Primordial Sea, and the Heavenly Principle stole the power you ancient dragons possessed. That is true. I, for my part, am the God of Justice. And is it not just that your original powers should be returned to you? Speaking of justice, I have always believed that justice lies in the process of pursuing human existence itself. So, if the theft of the Primordial Sea's might was Fontaine's original sin, then, leaving matters of procedural right and wrong aside, the descent of the Fontanians as humans and their right to exist in this world would be Fontaine's original justice. In other words, existence was Egeria's justice, and to me, justice is the continuation of that existence. Can I just say the music in this scene is unbelievable. Oh my God, it sets it up so well. Defying the prophecy and ensuring that Fontaine's people shall live on. That should be the justice enthroned over all others. At this point, we, whether it be myself or all other Fontanians, have shouldered the burden of this sin for far too long. Eudex Nervillette, the highest judge in our land, when you regain your full power as an elemental sovereign, what verdict shall you pass upon us? Mm, man. So when I was invited to the court of Fontaine to serve as Eudex, I see now that that was your idea too. At last, I now understand the true purpose behind this position. In the beginning, I was uninterested in human existence. But these five centuries of living alongside them have gradually brought about mutual understanding between us. And I have even attempted to feel as they feel. But you're the Hydro Dragon. Humans didn't exist when you were one of the Sovereigns. What are you going to do now? If you're going to be rolling over Fontaine, are you going to destroy humans? Are you... What are you going to do? Dude. Dude. But now he's been with humans for the last 500 years. So... You are a devious one, Fusalor. Things being as they are, surely you know that I could never declare them to be guilty. <sighs> the hour of my execution is almost here. For the sinner, the curtain call has come. I know I may not sound it, but... Faced with death, I find myself a little afraid. Perhaps this is one thing both gods and humans have in common. <laughs> Farewell, Nervalette. I hope you've enjoyed the part you played these 500 years. It's so sad. Okay, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's so sad, man. Thank you, Verena, for all you've done. 
From this moment on, please live happily as a human. Just as I wish we could. Oh, man. The dragon is back. I, Udex Nuvelet, hereby declare... People of Fontaine, your sins are forgiven. Amazing cutscene, so sad. Poor Fosalors. But Farina's free! Farina's free though, so that's a good thing. Farina is free to actually be herself now. So, oh my god. Dude, that was sad, man. That got me pretty good. Oh, dude. Amazing scene. Oh my god. That was uh, fan flipping tastic. But, 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 Farina can, she said that Farina can live as a human. Farina can be a human now. She can be herself. She doesn't have to act like the Archon anymore, right? What just happened? Has the death sentence been carried out? Was that bright light some sort of misdirection? I have a feeling that something huge just happened. No more Hydra Archon! <sighs> But since we're all still alive and haven't been dissolved, I assume whatever happened was good for us. But wouldn't that piss off Celestia, right? Like, wouldn't that just enrage Celestia? Wouldn't Celestia just rain down hell for a dragon to be overseeing Fontaine now? Like, one of the Sovereign Sevens is back? That would just be, that would just piss them off. It's time to end this. We must mete out punishment to that beast. Oh yeah, I forgot about the whale. Wait, <laughs> just a moment ago that it can't be defeated? I forgot about the whale! I have gained the strength sufficient to deal with it. Through certain means, I now have the ability to separate the power of the Primordial Sea from that creature. Let's go do it. We should seize the opportunity to pursue our quarry. Let's go do it. You obtained power just now? Yep. Traveler. Now that the oratories can no longer function, I require an executor to help me mete out justice. You mean me? The root of the calamities befalling Fontaine. The beast that enacts the prophecy. Its name is the All-Devouring Narwhal. All-Devouring Narwhal? Why would I want to mess with that? Come with me, traveler. The hour of execution has come. Let's go! Let's go take on this whale, I guess. I don't know what, what in the world's going on. Child's constellation. Oh. I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. You can't make me. I don't wanna. You cannot make me. Oh, God. You're just gonna throw me right in? Where, how, yeah, where, where are you? I gotta figure you out. My best to separate you out. How are you supposed to deal with this thing? Considering the size can I hit it? Oh, I can. Okay. I just wasn't sure. Unless. All right, hold tight, everybody. Let me figure this out. I shall share the part of the ancient dragon's power with you. We shall look for an opening together. How are you supposed to deal with that? Hang on, I'll get it figured out. I'll get it figured. I can feel its sorrow turning. Oh, I can't move that fast. Stamina, stamina, stamina. All right, two seconds. Ooh, you're a big boy. There is no escape. Settle down. But I feel like this ain't gonna do nothing to it. If it's in the water, right? Destroy the eye of the maelstrom to affect what eye? Oh, this eye. Shine down. <laughs> Scatter. The all-devouring novel cannot resist its instinct to devour. 
continue to trigger Ooh, this is going to be a fight for the ages. Just keep smacking it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm just trying to figure it out. Bro, it coming out of the walls like that's crazy. Woo, what are we doing? Thanks for helping what with did the you, clean up. What'd you should have been my job, but oh well. Wait, what did you just do with child? You threw him in like a like a like a wormhole or something. What just happened? It was just supposed to be a short private training session for me. I didn't think that my disciple and my master's pet would start brawling in the meantime. Your skirk! Your skirk! Your child's. Wait, wait, wait. Your skirk, your child's master. Because you called him my disciple and my master's pet, which would be the whale. Your skirk! Well, actually, I had a feeling that it would happen at some point, but they bumped into one another earlier than I thought. What a blunder. I suppose I'll have to swing my sword three million times as penance. Three million? That's a lot. But you look so young to be like his, his master. You are hot. Like smoking. Jeez, disciple, your master's pet. That power. Who are you exactly? She's not a harbinger though, can't she wouldn't be a harp, but she's if she's if she's child's master, would she be considered a she wouldn't be a harbinger. Uh, Hyman has an idea. From what she said earlier, she must be child's master. Skirk, right? You're Skirk. It's just that like he gave us the impression that she was the less talkative person. I simply did not have anything to say to the weak. But you, on the other hand, managed to defeat the all-devouring narwhal without using power from beyond this world. Yeah, what do you think? Dude, she's gorgeous. Holy me. She looks like something that would be from, like, like, Honkai Star Rail. You know what I mean? Like, um, like future, almost like that futuristic kind of look. So you may speak to me as equals. Okay, what sort of person would take the all-devouring narwhal as a pet? I have to agree. It's a strange use of a planet's primordial waters just to raise an all-devouring narwhal. That kind of power is wasted on it. It's not cooperative. It eats too much. And I have more important things to do with my time than pet sitting. The only thing that creature has going for it is its looks. All in all, it fails as a pet. I... Uh, Miss Skirk? Uh, I think you might have missed the point. I'm just listening to her. The point being? Well, being that this pet almost 
destroyed an entire nation. Facts, true, very true. What does she think about that? So what sort of person is your master? Well, child's master's master. Wait, is that right? Where is she from? Look at these legs. Look at these shoes. Oh, right. So you don't know him. Sorry, I assumed you did. Who? Who? His name is Sertologi. Sertologi? Sertologi? That's the first time I've heard that name. Sertologi, who? Huh? I am unfamiliar with that name. Huh. So Master is insufficiently famous. Huh. How should I describe him then? Have you heard of the name The Foul? Legacy. Yes. The Foul Legacy. Uh huh. The Foul? Legacy. Still nothing? I have. Well, how about the Visionary? Vetterfulnir then? No. Or Gold Rhine Daughter? No. I, the, the Foul Legacy though. She's Albedo's mom, right? Albedo's mom. Riding daughter's part of her Albedo's mom. Oh, so you do know that name. To be honest, I also heard all of those names and titles from my master. I don't actually know them either. What? But I suppose you understand now, yes? My master is likely a similar sort to Ryan daughter. They are both pursuing some form of perfection. Wait, didn't you also mention a visionary person? Paimon didn't quite catch their name. Actually, never mind that. I believe it expedient to inform you. Okay, yes. That the all-devouring Narwhal used up nearly all its strength fighting you. Good. Such roiling hydro energies will prove difficult for the planet's deep seas to digest. As such, the Fontaine back on the surface has most likely been thrown into chaos. In other words, the prophecy that you've been fretting over should now be in full swing. What? Why? No. What? How? There's a little. There's little to be surprised about. No. There's little to be. It is natural after all. The prophecy will surely come true. We knew this and accepted it. Yeah, you can't stop fate, right? However. Not to worry. Fosalor has already managed to deceive the heavenly principles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so... That's all fixed! In the end, the people will all be dissolved into the waters, and only Farina will remain, weeping on her throne. Then will the sins of the people of Fontaine be washed away. I can't be right. I can't be right. I can't be right.
receding! But it's nobody got dissolved because the See, primordial water the doesn't exist. Because we got rid of it, right? out of 10 amazing awesome i loved it holy crap holy crap holy crap jeez the solo renewed the sweet and diva sula tax post disaster rebuilding i recently visited poisson to meet with miss navia spokesperson of the sweet and diva sula and we spoke about poisson's present and future okay so can someone explain to me what happened to the primordial water? Why didn't they dissolve? Old soil can still give birth to new bloom, Miss Navia stated. Hope is like seeing a small cookie when you're starving late at night. You just need a little of it. Dude, Skirk showing up, just throwing ch- Where did he go? Skyship Winglet, Booner Brain of the Fontaine Research Institute. Where did that boy go? The Where did he end up? The disputes that have arisen on account of Mr. Edwin have suddenly become a shield over the Institute, with Jurya turning out to be a once overlooked hidden gem. What if, what if she just came back and like was like, you need to come home now, you know, like mom? You need to come home right now and stop causing so much trouble. So she threw him into a hole and sent him back to Shnaznaya. Was like, you've caused so much trouble, get the hell out of here. People always call the first- Is that what she did? Man, I think that's what she you did. know what to call the second. And should that latter person achieve a miracle, they would find it all the harder to find a word with which to classify him and his team. Wow! Paimon barely recognizes the people in the reports. Are those really Jiria and Navia? They sound get, like real big shots. Right? They might have been real big shots from the start. We just didn't meet them in that capacity. What do you think? Pretty enthralling, huh? The Steambird's idea was pretty simple. With the disaster just having passed, we would print a free edition packed to the margins with good news to calm people down. The value for these big scoops lies in their inevitable follow-ups. We'll publish further reports and go into the stories behind those people. Edwin's assistant, Jurier, created a true flying ship, while Navia is leading people in the reconstruction of their home. I'm sure that these stories could draw even your well-traveled eye. The articles do make me curious about how things will play out. I'm curious true. Too. What's there to be curious about? And that's exactly why I'd like you to come conduct interviews with me. You're the best incubators of news, if you haven't noticed. And also, with you around, I'm sure I'll get to see that duke. I hope you get your interview with Ricely, too. Uh, Giga Chan, sure. another Giga Chan. Hasn't he turned you down several times already? Oh, this time will be different. Coming in clutch. Let's head to Poisson first, and then make a trip to the fortress. Okay. There are some things you'll only know when you get there. Let's go. Dude, that was fantastic. Now I have now I have so many more questions. Like I have so many more questions. Navia! What's up, Navia? How are you? You doing okay? You hanging in there? Oh, it's you. What brings you all here? Hey, we're just having a look around. I'm here to update myself on how things are going here. Hmm? Oh, the Fatui are here too. What's up, guys? Ah. Uh. Let me introduce you. This is Mr. Garunt Snezhevich. He represented the Knave in sending us a large amount of supplies and is helping with our work. Okay. Our residents are hard at work as well. Thanks to everyone, work is progressing nicely. We've lost a lot of people, but we're moving forward. That will have to be enough. Hello, Miss Charlotte. I'm a big fan of yours. 
I especially like that article you wrote last year about Fontaine's stray cats. Stray cats? But if you don't mind, could you not emphasize our role too much in your report? It's not charity we're doing here. We just happen to share the same interests as the Spina. I get where you're coming from. I'll keep it as simple as possible. Or would you be willing to feature as friendly neighbors? That would be fine. Thanks. Oh, you're back too. How are things? It's Corinne! We finished laying down the construction materials. It'll be another hour before the workers are able to go over there. Huh? You here too, Corinne? Well, her reputation's greatly risen after that whole duel business with Miss Farina. So she's here in Poisson to wait out the heat. Uh, all right, all right. She really came here to help me out. Dude, Farina's trial was nuts. There's too much to consider in the reconstruction of Poisson. The Spina has need of more decision makers. And, well, I do already happen to be connected to Mr. Callus. Oh, wait just a moment. Do you mind me asking a few questions? You know, about how you felt before the duel, about what it was like facing down a god. There's lots of exciting material there, I bet. Hey, you know what? Child never got to have his fight with Clorand either. Ugh, forget it. I'm sure you can find a better theme than that, Miss Charlotte. Oh, I see you're the same as always. Couldn't you do me a favor, for Navia's sake? Well, if we're talking about doing things for my sake, you might as well just take a few more photos of me. Or of the Traveler. It's better than wasting time persuading Clorand at any rate. Of course I will. I'm not gonna let him off that easy. All right, then everyone who wants to be in the photo, gather up and smile. Taking a picture with Navia. I love Navia. Every single character in Fontaine was fantastic. That did Paimon look cute in it? Not bad. Your addition really helped the composition of the picture. All right, hang on a moment. Let me snap a few more shots. Charlotte takes a few more pictures of Passanda clicking shot. All right, that should do it. I'll be back here later anyway, so uh, let's call it a day. Okay. <laughs> You're very quick. Speed is of the essence when it comes to the news, and very freshness true. is the key. Very true. Also, She's not, not wrong. To brag, but I'm pretty good at building connections. Who knows? I might eventually get that interview with you after all, Miss Clorand. Wow. You really do have that never-say-die spirit. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'll hazard a guess that this is how you got that interview at the Fortress of Maripede. You already knew she was going? Whoa, you're well informed. Let me make a guess, too. I asked Sijuin, who told Monsieur Nervillette, and he told you, right? That's a very complete information <laughs> chain. That's something. In truth, all Monsieur Nervillette That's asked something. me was... When did the fortress become so friendly towards the media? I told him that it was best not to speak too soon. There's no guarantee that Ridesley will make a personal appearance. You're right. I've got to treasure every moment I have with them. In which case, I'll be making a move first. <sighs> Stay safe now. And tell me if you hear anything interesting. I'll treat you to afternoon tea in exchange. Dude, I love every single character in this Archon Quest has been amazing. Navia, Farina, Nouvellet, Charlotte, Lenny, Lynette, Seedween, Fremine, the Fontaine characters, um, I feel is probably my favorite set of characters. Anymore. Wow, guess we're here again, huh? There's a real nostalgic feeling to this place. Yeah, here we are again. Looks like you've been missing us. This is not for 45 days this time. Duke! Did you come all the way to the entrance to greet us? Of course. I'm here to welcome you and our dear Miss Charlotte, whom our good head nurse recommended to me. See, Dream. It's an honor to finally meet the much-rumored Duke. Thank you for consenting to my visit to the fortress, sir. No need to thank me. But that said, I shouldn't be the focus of your interview. I trust you recall our agreement? Of course, of course. All right, then. This way. Where are we going? We going to your office? And we're going to see Siege Wing, too? Um, What's this guy? Uh, Jerio. Uh, and and <laughs> hmm? Hey, no need to be so nervous. I've already taken all the photos we need. Um, are they going to argue with each other? Charlotte, 
Do these pictures really need to be published on the cover of the Steambird? It would seem that Miss Lorvine doesn't want her face to appear beside that of Mr. Jurier, hmm? Sir, please don't say things like that. <laughs> but it looks like dear Mr. Jurier denies it. Might this interview be very important to you, then? No, I, I, I just... This is my first time being interviewed, and I'm very thankful to the Steambird for... <laughs> now, I might not look it, but I actually did meet Mr. Edwin once. And I'll be honest, I enjoyed chatting with you more. You've definitely got more of that genius vibe going on. The boat that brought about a miracle, the ark that saved the people. Why, you recreated a myth back there, like an emissary of legend. It was like an ark. It was like Noah's ark. Well, Riceley's ark, we should say. Or Jurio's ark. Whose ark would it be? Still, if I might ask, where's that flying ship now? Huh. Looks like Charlotte's trying to get herself another exclusive scoop. I have to apologize, but that ship is presently in the bowels of our factory. I'm afraid it won't be easy for you to get a shot of it. Really? Well, then in that case, could I have an interview with you to make up for that long? Ooh, that a way to go, Charlotte. She really does know how to squeeze opportunities for all the work. Yes, she does. You already know my answer, I'm afraid. Yes, she does. Best you interview our head nurse instead. Or perhaps you'd like to take another photo of this couple of researchers? Rice is like, no, 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 no. Did you really have to use the word couple? Well, then, two I think they're photos married. will do. Is my hair messed up? Please, someone help me have a look. Things sure are getting pretty lively here. Eh, we've seen this kind of thing before. Oh, see, Dream! Hi. Would any of you like to try this new drink I came up with? I don't know. Ah, Sijuin. Uh, uh, hey, Miss Charlotte. I don't know. Why don't you, uh, take some pretty photos of our head nurse? Hmm? Uh, sure. Come on, Miss Sijuin. Over this way. Let's find a brighter spot. Huh? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, do I have to smile? Sure, you have to smile. So, Why wouldn't you? how have things been at the fortress? Same old, same old, as you can see. Fontaine's undergone some changes, but this place is still more or less the same. Other than that flying ship, I got a tad too much attention, I think. <laughs> That's why I decided to let the interview go through. We should direct more public opinions toward the behind-the-scenes heroes. Am I right, Mr. Jurier? Miss Lurvine? You're too kind, sir. I believe that you too should have your day in the sun. Not that you would want that, which is a pity. <laughs> I'll just leave the spotlight to you two. You walk with Risley for a while and share the news from above ground with him. I see. Yeah, lots, lots of things happened. happened that yep. day, huh? Lots. Anyway, regarding that harbinger, I'm not sure you remember, but his three young followers are still waiting for his return. Okay. He sure did win them over, huh? I'll tell them that there's good news and bad news. The good being that their boss seems fine. And the bad being that they must face extended sentences for abetting his escape. Well, that's not good. Oh, actually, what about you? Are things going to change for you too? What change can there be? The fortress will keep chugging along and so will my duties. As to what Miss Farina's departure will mean for the nation and if our laws and governance will be transformed, we'll leave those to the folks in the overworld. Wait, I have a question. Who has the Gnosis? Who has the Gnosis? I completely forgot about that. Like, who has it? Hey, everyone. The photo shoot's done. Good. In that case, let's call it a day here. Thanks for your cooperation. Come on, Traveler, let's go. Till next time, everyone. We still haven't figured that out. There'll be a next time? Maybe. Who knows? I might write a story about the underwater factory next time. Until then. All right. Last stop, the docks. All right, let's go to the docks. Head to the Maritime docks. Who has, who has the Gnosis? We don't know. Well, who's here? Lenny, Lynette, Fremenet. Hey, Lynn, see them. They really are here. How did you know? Navia mentioned that she stayed in touch with Lenny and the others after working together. Apparently, they've been at the docks distributing these strange pockets the whole time since. Nice. Traveler, Paimon. Giving out the pockets. Huh. And Miss Charlotte, too. 
She was giving out the pocket. They're giving out the pockets from the, the first act. More of like the bottomless like pockets. Pocket? Yes, I want all the, the the magic pockets. What sort of gadget is it? Oh it's dear God! It's a wondrous bag that can be used to carry many things. The water level has returned to normal, but if you see any of your things floating around, you can use this to carry them. Or you could trick a friend into doing it for you. Trick a friend? Mm -hmm. Hmm. I wonder which of my friends would fall for that. Paimon. Paimon would. You could just <laughs> make a friend like Fremenet here. Isn't that right, Fremenet? Right, Fremenet? <sighs> Is this what you meant by, I'll help you make some more friends? To be honest, that sounds pretty sweet. Could I have your contact, please? Uh, oh, uh, sure. Uh, please, write down my address. Maybe they want to go on a date. I don't know how old Fremenet and and Charlotte are, but hey. Lynette sure is working hard to help Fremenet socialize. He was the one who proposed doing this. He even wants to assist in our magic shows. Hey, sounds like that would suit him. Yes, I was planning to first introduce Pear as an assistant, and later Fremenet himself. In the future, I think we can leave underwater escape magic to him too. That said, would anyone want Look to see a diver escape underwater? They're back there talking to each other. Oh, they walked away. Oh, it'll work out. Every journey begins with the first step. He'll become a part of our show eventually. Uh, Lynette, could you come over? Miss Charlotte says she wants to take a picture of us. Got it. Well, I figure. I think that Charlotte would wear the pants in that family, My, or that that, that relationship. I should say. Perceptive. She got rid of everyone the moment she realized I had something to say to you. So, how have things been, Traveler? I'm doing all right. How are you? Father says that you did a great deal during the latest events. She's very grateful for your contributions to Fontaine. And I'm grateful to Father. Ah, uh, that's all right. We were more than happy to help. So, what's she doing now? Oh, I guess you haven't heard. Nope. Well, after Lady Farina left, Father and Monsieur Nervilet opened negotiations, during which he gave Fontaine's gnosis to her as a diplomatic gift. She got it anyway. She got it anyway. Well, there goes another one. There goes another one. There's only one left now. It was that was an easy one. That was an easy one. On the like, hey, can I, can I, can I have your gnosis? And Nervilet's like, yeah, here you go. Consider it a diplomatic gift. I don't care. She can have it. She deserves it. I liked her. She didn't have to do anything. She didn't have to hurt nobody. Nothing. A diplomatic gift? A gnosis? Yum. Yes, I was quite surprised at first myself. But when I thought it over, there were actually a number of things going for it. It could have been done as an apology for the incident with Lord Child, or as thanks for his help in tying the all devouring narwhal down. Furthermore, Father did also lend significant aid to Fontaine and Poisson. Well, uh, that's true, but this is a gnosis we're talking about. Doesn't this seem a bit uh, irresponsible? Well, for me, I'm just like, now it's like, whatever. <laughs> because they have them all anyway. So for me, it's like, eh, okay, whatever. <laughs> At this point, I don't even, like, I, for me, it's like, I don't even care about the gnosis anymore. Because they have them all, there's no sense. I would agree. <sighs> But I've also heard you know, that it seems that Monsieur Nervilet has had a significant change of heart regarding the matter. Uh, so there's some reason for this that only Nervilet knows about? I suspect you'll have to ask him about that yourself. Okay, good. Ah, uh, yes, speaking of which, I did see him strolling around the entrance to the Fortress of Meripede a while back. Oh! Uh, isn't he real busy and stuff? I didn't think he'd have the time for that. The Gnosis was given to the Knave, right? What about Child? Yeah, what happened to that boy? They say that he's returned to Snezhnaya to recover from his wounds. I hear that the recent disaster really did a number on his health. So Skurg shows up and just yoinks him out of there and says, Go home, boy. Well, I guess I can now call him one of my war buddies. <laughs> when you think about it, we've had loads of run-ins with the Fratui. To think we'd be allied with them this time. Right? 
so shocked by such a simple switching of sides. Is that the mage? In? Who? Uh, yeah. No, it's our father. It's our Rikino. Hey, can we see the gnosis? Well, well, what do you know? Come to the docks to see how my children are doing and meet the traveler by chance. Please do not pay my accomplishments in Fontaine too much mind. I would have done them regardless. I love Arlequino. I love her so much. Are you going to take the Gnosis back to Snezhnaya? We need an Arlequino banner, like legitimately, like soon. That is our duty as harbingers, yes. Don't be too preoccupied with sides. The goal of the Fatui concerns not a single place or person, but the entire world. With such a grand goal in mind, it is inevitable that we must wear many masks. Switching my masks is something I've always done. Will you, will you keep to your position? Well, that depends on many things. No one truly knows what the future holds. What good is honesty if you can't rely on it forever? As for you, I very much look forward to our next collaboration. Good things cannot be achieved alone, and you've proved yourselves to be great partners. Dude, I can't wait till we meet up with her again. I bet you she shows up in Natlin. She has to, right? Actually, I just remember something. Please help us deliver this. Oh yeah, oh, that's right. I forgot we even, we had that. I forgot we even had Child's vision. A vision? <laughs> All right. I'll remember to return it. Thank you for keeping it safe for him this entire time. I'm telling you, down the road, I think Traveler is going to become a harbinger. I think he's gonna be a harbinger. He, I think he's gonna become a harbinger. And that's a wrap for me. It, huh? You. Greetings, Miss Journalist. Hi. Uh, You're gonna um, have an interview hello. with. Are if I'm not mistaken, there are diplomatic channels I'll need to report to to take a photo of you. That is correct. So forgive me, but I will not be able to serve as a subject in your article. However, feel free to write as much as you'd like about our dear magicians and our upcoming rookie talent. I... I will. The sea breeze is quite pleasant. Oh, I shall continue my walk while the weather remains so agreeable. Farewell, father. Sorry, I didn't mean to hit that. My bad. She said goodbye. I didn't get to say goodbye. Bye, Arlequino. I love oh, you. Marry me. Such an intimidating presence. Oh, I, I love didn't her. Dare to take a picture. Thankfully, I've already wrapped up all my pre-scheduled interviews. Thank you all. This will be more than enough for me to write about, I'm sure. I love her. Don't be too nervous. Why don't you take a magic pocket before you go? Here, traveler, Paimon, you take one too. Oh, thank. Thank you. Two move things about? Thanks, you two. That's right. <laughs> Funny. I was giving out magic pockets when we first met, too. And what do you know? I'm doing the exact same thing right now. So many things have happened, but the pockets are still the pockets. I guess this must be life. We will all follow our own paths, and serendipity will lead you to your fated friends. Fontaine is so pretty. All right, then. We'll be handing out pockets in some other districts later, so we'll get going now. Have a good day, you two. Bye. All right, Nuvi. How are you doing? How are you feeling? So you really are here, Nuvelet. I didn't think you were going to have free time this hour of the day. Really? Oh, I suppose you must have met Mr. Linney. He took the time to greet me earlier when he passed this way. Okay. In any case, you came at a good time. I was just considering reaching out to you to set up a meeting, so I may explain some things that I haven't had the time to before. Yes, please! Aw, Pinehead's glad that you remembered. Thank you for keeping us on your mind, what with you being busy and all. All right, let's have it then. How was Fontaine actually saved? The whole business is still quite the mystery to us. Yes! Why wasn't the, the primordial water there? <laughs> it is strange how words can often leave a bitter taste in the mouth when it finally comes time to say them out loud. 
Nuvalent sighed softly before telling you the truth concerning what he saw that day. Okay. Postlords deceived the heavenly prestige for Rena's endless performance to save Fontaine. Whoa. Yep. So that's what happened? Yeah, I only saw the Farina part myself. Postlord destroyed the divine throne of the Hydro Archon and restored your power to you, mm -hmm. transforming you into a fully fledged elemental dragon sovereign. Right. But the heavenly principles still think Farina is the Archon. But I get what you did to save the Fontanians from dissolving. Oh yeah, what'd you do? For me, the authority of the ancient dragons refers to absolute control over the hydro element. Fontanians were incomplete humans born of Egeria's use of the power of the primordial sea, with constitutions similar to that of mimics. But so long as those primordial energies remain within them, I could use the ancient dragon's authority to grant them true blood after the fashion in which life was first brought into being on this planet. Ooh, okay, okay, I see. In other words, when I gave my verdict, Fontanians became true humans, and thus would naturally no longer be dissolved by water from the primordial sea. Look at Nuvalet, big brain move. Postalar must have counted on you to make that decision as well. Your verdict was the key to making the prophecy appear to have come true while saving everyone. You can say that, uh, Lula, you could say that it was at that moment the Fontanians were finally truly born. Yeah, and in a manner of speaking, Fosalor finally managed to fulfill the original Hydro Archon's wish to turn Oceanids into real people too. Right. It seems from your expressions that you still have more things you wish to ask. I got a lot. I got a lot. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Okay, about the initial verdict that was passed on Child, why did it say he was guilty? I have investigated his case along many avenues, and I have learned that he once fell into an unknown chasm when he was young. There, by chance, he awakened the all-devouring narwhal. Okay. But whether it be by sentiment or reason, that should not have been enough to consider him the root cause of the disaster. At most, he would have had tangential liability. As for the judgment passed by the Oratrice during the trial, whether it was due to that liability by association or Fosalor deliberately using him to buy time for us on the assumption that he would be able to hold the creature off, I cannot say. Huh. Guess Fosalor had Fontanians in mind the whole time. In the end, it was thanks to her that they finally became real humans. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, okay, that's interesting. Paimon suddenly got another question. Back when Fontanians hadn't yet become real humans, were the children they had also transformed Oceanids? Life has always flowed like water. Do you recall how Fontanians would often come to the Fountain of Lucene to pray for children? Right. Yeah, Lynette said the fountain is where all the waters in Fontaine converge. In truth, even those couples did not know that such prayers were no mere custom, but instead a form of ritual. Those Oceanids who were blessed within the spring water would later descend as new humans in the coming months. Uh, Paimon sort of gets it now. Either way, it seems like this ritual won't be of any further use, but it'll probably live on as a local custom. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Alright, awesome. About Fontaine's future. Yeah, about that. Risley said Farina has already left. Ah, oh, Lady Farina. Where'd she go? The people are only aware that her death sentence has not been carried out. She abdicated the post of Hydro Archon and left affairs related to that title to me, before leaving the Opera House. Where'd she go? I related Fosalor's words to her faithfully and completely. After hearing them, she seemed neither saddened nor comforted. She simply said that she was tired needed to rest. I don't blame her. She's, she should be allowed to sleep all she wants. Having said that, she then packed her things and moved out of the opera house. Not unlike how an ordinary person might. Okay, where'd she go though? She's probably living it up on the beach somewhere. That's what I'd do. Um, but she's still got a place to stay, right? Yeah, where'd she go? You need not worry. I will make arrangements to ensure that she will not want for food, clothing, board, or travel. Good, good. In truth, I am somewhat happy for her. The wear and tear on her spirit will, of course, take time to heal. But now that she no longer has to play the role of Fosalor the Hydro Archon, she can finally lay down her burdens and lead a normal life. Good, good! She deserves it! What about you, then? What are your plans now that you've 
you've regained your full powers as the Hydro Dragon. After Fossilor passed on, the Oratrice also ceased to function. This matter will directly affect our trials. Oh. After much careful consideration, That's I decided right. to take over its role in our courts. Oh. From now on, I shall hear cases and pass verdicts by myself. Let's go, Nuvolant! Looks like you're still considering stuff from the perspective of the Udex, huh? As an elemental dragon, there are indeed many things that I must do. But this power, and this duty, in a manner of speaking, you could say that both were granted to me. What's crazy is that there is no Hydro Archon. Like, we know that there's no Hydro Archon anymore. There's a Sovereign that is ruling over Fontaine now, not an Archon, which is really interesting to me. As such, before I attend to my other responsibilities, I must first and foremost continue to serve Fontaine as its highest judge. The duty of the Hydro Sovereign and the duty of the Udex shall coexist within my person. Additionally, the Hydro Archon's departure has brought about another problem, which is that the Opera House shall no longer produce Indemnidium. Oh, good! That's true. That power was derived from the people's faith in the Hydro Archon, wasn't it? Wait, but the various mechs and machines in the city are all still okay. Where are they getting their energy from? As I am now, I have full command over New Musia, and it can serve as a complete substitute. Another reason why I cannot quite leave Fontaine immediately. Okay. Wow. This ancient dragon's authority stuff is really quite useful, huh? Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. I feel like at some point in time, Celestia's going to find out that there is no Archon in Fontaine. I feel like they're going to they're gonna find out. They will find out. At some point in time, and be like, oh, there's a sovereign in Fontaine? Well, we gotta deal with that. About the Fontaine's Gnosis. Oh, that's right. They say you've given it to the knave as a diplomatic gift or something. Yeah, here you go. Leaving aside their intentionality, the two Fatui Harbingers have indeed done much for us during this crisis. Their sole remaining goal in Fontaine, at least at this point, would seem to be the Gnosis. Yeah, they did a lot. Arlequino, I will give her credit. The Oratrice has ceased to function. The Hydro Archon's Divine Throne is now no more, and I do not need the Gnosis's power. As such, it has lost all meaning for Fontaine. Fair enough. Fair enough. If the Fatui have impure designs, then we might as well accede to their request now, and avoid unnecessary conflict. But we don't know. We don't know what their motivations are yet. Yeah. What complicated considerations. Paima thought you were just giving it to them out of gratitude to the knave and as an apology to child. Ask away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Yeah, we don't know what their motivations are yet. Um, I have a feeling we're going to be finding out soon. But maybe not. Who knows? About the next stop of my journey. You will soon be heading to Natlan, I presume. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we are. Well, not for like another, like, you know, six months or something. Whatever it is. Um, <laughs> um, yeah. I'm afraid that I have little talent as a travel guide. So all I can do is tell you what I know about that land. Tell us. As far as I'm aware, Natlon can be said to be a nation of dragons. Bro, let's go. It's got to be like volcanoes, lavas, all kinds of stuff. A nation of dragons? Because it's the Pyro Maybe Archon. Like you? No, I suspect that I would not find myself welcome there. Unlike ancient dragons such as myself, the dragons of Natlon have undergone long years of development and evolution. Large numbers of them have entered a form of coexistence with humanity. Uh, I think Natlan's gonna be crazy. Natlan is also the nation of war. War ravages those lands like an undying flame. There is one other piece of information I got incidentally from my negotiations with the Knave that I believe may be useful to you. Okay. The harbinger known as the Captain has thrown his hat into the endless ring of war. The Captain? The Captain. Sounds like a real tough customer. Seriously, everywhere you look, there's a Fatui Harbinger doing their thing. Yep, that's true. The captain. I suggest that you fully prepare yourself before going to Natlon. In the meantime, Fontaine's doors will always be open to you. Thank you, Nuvalan. I appreciate Ask that. Away. I will tell you the truth as I know it. Dude, Natlon, war, dragons. I think it's going to be epic AF, and I can't wait. I have no more questions for you, bro. Uh, 
What, Paimon? When we spoke to Lenny earlier, he mentioned that your attitude towards giving away the Gnosis had clearly changed. We guessed that there might be some reason for it that only you were aware of. Hmm. No wonder the House of the Hearth is the Fatui's intelligence division. They are certainly sharp. So regarding this specific issue, I was just getting ready to share something with you. Okay. Uh, what is it? Let's hear it. In truth, I exchanged some further words with that lady named Skirk after sending you two back to the surface. It went something like this. And we don't get to hear? We don't get to hear? I don't get to hear what she said? Do I not get to hear what she said? Do we get to see? We better get to see what she said. Well, we're going to head topside to see what's going okay. on. You hurry Whew. over soon as well, all right, Nervous? I thought it was, I thought it was gonna pull the old Nahida Tatore trick, and I was about to freak out. Ah! Bye bye. What next? Hmm. The all devouring narwhal isn't here, so I'm no longer getting any interference. I can finally catch the scent of your power, what it's made of. It is the authority of the planet's primordial dragons, but with something very similar to a god's curse mixed in. It's quite a novel blend. God's curse me. Oh. I'm sure I've encountered something like this before. What was it again? I do not know what you speak of. Ah, oh, of course. How could I forget? You should have the remains of the Third Descender on your person, yes? What? 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 Remains? I've never heard of any such thing. What? Huh. According to your parlance, I believe it may be called a gnosis. Oh, 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 wait. So the previous descenders before us were turned into gnosis? Am I hearing this right? Well, that much is true. After Fosalor's divinity faded, she handed her gnosis to me. But I fear I have never heard of it described in the manner that you just did. Yeah! I've been training with my master, the Fowl, ever since I was young. And I have never returned to the surface since. So most of the information I possess, I got from him. But she never, I'm gonna assume she never says who the third descender is. It is only natural for those who are greater than humanity to possess a different sort of common sense. Which is why there are so many problems in our attempts to communicate with humans. Regardless, you should probably get rid of objects of misfortune to prevent any disasters from befalling you. To live in itself is a blessing. But once a person dies, the bonds he once had with this world shall all turn to curses. Ooh. What do you mean by that? <sighs> no need to fret. These are just my... Personal thoughts, and my reason for no longer wishing to return to the surface. This third descender you refer to, who are they, and when did they die? Good question, good question, good question! <laughs> Master never mentioned them to me. Oh, Perhaps it just wasn't that important for me to know. Oh, come on! If you're interested, though, I could ask him. I'll be sure to pass the answer on to you next time. Yes, go and ask him for us, please! Next time, you believe we will meet again? Well, she, it seems like she's thinking that we might. I do. Wait, I have a disciple of my own, don't I? You do? He can be the messenger then. But you're not a, you're not a harbinger. That's a, like, are you part of an organization too? But not, you're obviously not a harbinger. But you'd have to be from Shnaznaya. Oh, would you consider yourself a Fatui? Like, I have so many questions about her. I have so many questions about Skirk. Like, what is her origin? That's what she told me. Whether it would prove useful or not, 
I wanted to pass that information on to you. Thank you, New Lat. Even though I wanted to know the name of the third descender, but she didn't tell you, so you can't tell me. The remains of the third descender? So that's what the Gnosis actually are. Paimon just thought they looked like chess pieces. How could they be a person's remains? Wait, and if we're the fourth, we're number four. That means we're gonna have to, I feel like that uh, that's kind of like telling us that we're gonna have to die. I feel like uh, that is kind of saying, um, Traveler, you're gonna have to die at the end. Because all the other descenders are dead, right? All the same, assuming that there was no misunderstanding or special metaphor at play, that is what she meant to say. And she said that it would bring misfortune and that you should check it, which is why you gave it to the Fatui. Yeah, yeah. If she speaks the truth, then I would simply be putting Fontaine at unnecessary risk by keeping it here. True. A descender, she mentioned one of them. I'm the fourth descender. For me, this information means two things. One, that the Gnosis are related to descenders, right? And two, that the one who came before me has already died. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I had guessed that you might already be familiar with this concept, but I did not expect you to be one of them. Hey, yeah, we are. That means that the Gnosis, which are exceedingly element compatible and can even enhance elemental abilities, do indeed come from the third descender. Oh, well, then maybe not then. So uh, uh, is it just the remain? So every single Gnosis is just the remains of the third descender. So it's not like remains of the second one or the first one or whatever, too. It's just all of them are the third. Hmm. I wonder. Does your body also possess similar properties? I'd say so. No, no, let's not think about this stuff right now. It just feels creepy. Comparing the traveler to the dead third descender and all. Don't worry, I won't die so easily. Oh. That's what you say, but this topic still feels like bad luck. How did the third descender die? That's a good question I would love to have answered. What happened to the third descender? How did the third descender die? Who was it? <sighs> Once child recovers, let's get some more answers out of him. Or go look for his master and get the answers that way. Yeah, I think Skirk's gonna know more. I too believe it unwise to make too many blind guesses when information is lacking. The same is true of being at court. All right. Whatever the case, it seems like the crisis here in Fontaine's over for now. Yes. All of Fosalor's efforts were for <sighs> this moment as well. That was so good. But she sacrificed herself in the end as a god. And she suffered through all those years as a human. Was that really what she wanted? And when Celestia finds out, they're gonna be pissed? I suppose that would be the mystery of a god's will. Can you understand the will of the gods? I suspect not. But once in a while, I too would guess that if wishes were like the clouds in the sky, they will one day return to the earth as raindrops. Life flows like water, and rain is the final answer. The water levels may sometimes tilt one way or another, but the rain falls fairly upon all. And what, ultimately, is the difference between the rains that fall upon all of us? Dude, Fontaine's Archon Quest was... was just top tier. That was amazing. From act one to act five, I felt like it was just go, go, go from beginning to end. The pacing was fantastic. The emotions was fantastic. Uh, Fontaine characters, my, I'm, I'm gonna say it, are probably my favorite characters in the game. They were so well written. They were voice acted in such a great way. Every, uh, the personalities were just crazy. I, it breaks my heart the way I like kind of treated Farina throughout the first four acts because I was like I thought she was crazy but then come to find out be sure to be she she was doing it for a purpose and for a reason and it's just ah oh, it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking it's heartbreaking but now I'm all caught up oh that was so good that was amazing fantastic fan freaking tastic I love this game I love this game I love this game I love this game. I love this game.